U.S. PPI just coming through on a year-over-year -year basis, much higher than expected, 6% versus 5.4 expected there on the producer price index. Mm. Uh, again, that's a year-over-year -year, uh, number. We also got initial jobless claims numbers coming through, 194, 194,000 versus 200,000. Remember last week we had an uptick in that number that actually helped the market move to the upside. But uh, that's much higher than expected on PPI on the month over month number as well. 0.7 versus 0.4. Core PPI 5.4 versus 4.9. Uh, so back to back this week, we get some inflation data here that comes in higher than expected, not helping uh, uh, the overall story anyways, as far as the market is concerned, trying to bounce right now our futures. But uh, we'll see how this plays out again, 6% versus 5.4 on that year-over-year -year number. Uh, market downside on that. A ton to get to this morning. Huge move, obviously, for Roku. Back to the upside on a beat right across the board. Forecast looking good for uh, the streaming company as well. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about... I saw Netflix doing a little bit of volume here uh, just in the past few minutes. Back to the upside. Tesla with more uh, positive catalysts coming through after a couple of days in positive territory. Uh, after a bit of a sell-off to start the week. It's Thursday, February 16th, 2023. TraderTV.Live starts now. Yeah, more downside movement right now. 0.73 for the S&P, 0.87 for the NASDAQ in negative territory are both of these. Uh, if you're just joining, uh, miss that. 6% versus 5.4 expected there for uh, PPI on the year-over-year -year number. Again, that's producer prices. So the amount essentially manufacturers have to pay to produce the goods and services that uh, you and I spend, Sharif here has uh, spent money on, obviously. Uh, Sharif here, as always, uh, just looking at this month over month number, I heard in my ear that it was in line, but hmm. I see 0.5 on the core number month over month, 0.5 versus 0.3 there. So uh, we'll see how that uh, plays out for the overall market. But here we go, as I said, back to back now, inflation numbers coming in higher than expected. Yeah, and it's a bigger miss that you want to, that, than what you want to see. But what I'm surprised is with the market's reaction, we've heard the Fed talk a lot about service inflation and how inflation in goods uh, has eased. It's actually been quite disinflationary. This, to me, uh, seems more goods related than service related. So I'm surprised the market's not taking it in stride, but we'll see what 930 brings. All right, some of the big uh, tech names just popping up here. I see Google on a down tick as well. Apple on a down tick uh, with volume coming back in also. I mean, Google, all of these, to be honest, made uh, pretty Ooh. decent sized moves to the downside early on this morning. Uh, we weren't really sure on uh, what as far as a catalyst for that. But uh, interesting look here, guys, back to back on inflation to the upside. Yeah, and uh, this time, obviously, the market, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Because remember, we did go down initially on CPI, too, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you caught a bit of a bid, if you remember that day. It was a pretty spectacular bid uh, after all. So let's see how the reaction comes to this PPI. Like, I'm not completely convinced uh, that you, you make that full move. Last time on CPI, I was like, okay, well, let's look for the shorts right away. Can be a little bit more cautious. There's some weaker names out there. I think, you know, Softy showed you a little bit of that. Meta showed you that uh, yesterday as well. We got some huge moves, obviously, in some of the um, squeezier type earnings names out there. Roku will be one of them. Shopify is making soon as well. QuantumScape uh, had a big run uh, in the afternoon, now coming back in. But Tesla's interesting. I mean, Tesla was looking strong this morning. Above that 215, that was a breakout we are looking for yesterday. You sold out of the Model Y, everything was looking good, and then now we're to the downside. So we think we're going to get a test when we come back up to this 215. I still think NVIDIA can be relatively weak until it breaks that 30 level. So there's a lot to get to, and we got a jam-packed guest-filled day, Sean. We do? We do? We don't? Do we? We have O'Leary. Who else? We got Raheem coming in today. Oh, Raheem. We got Mr. Nas coming in today. <laughs> yeah, so, where, where, I mean, are, where are these guys? Well, I don't know why. I don't know. Raheem, sometimes he's here by now. Yeah, but that's what I was saying. Well, Raheem. He's yeah, supposed I know, to be I know here. Michael was flying in, so yeah. hopefully uh, that should be exciting. Yeah, look, we're ready to rock and roll, man. I'm always excited to be here every single day. We had a monster day yesterday, and we're going to try to do it again today. Uh, Microsoft Week, I want to get short that name. We have a couple of good ideas here. One more time on this. You know what? I want to short Palantir. I think this market is, is overdone to the upside. I mean, we're like... In this like big like 
I don't know, rally mode. And I'm not really even sure why uh, that we're in this mode, but we are right now. And um, I don't know, earnings are fine. They're, they haven't been fantastic. You know, today you get some nice moves up with Roku, of course, but then the opposite move for Shopify. You mentioned Quantum Scape there. And then Tesla has been on a huge run, which has been fantastic. And a lot of these names are helping lift uh, the NASDAQ up here. But I still think we're, I mean, rates are still high. I don't know. Um, we, I mean, we're getting these employment numbers and PPI numbers and CPI. And I, I mean, they're, they're not really under control as of yet, right? I mean, I, I still feel like we're in the same spot we were a couple months ago, but yet we look back and our accounts have a little more cash in them. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is time to get a little bit out uh, right now. So I'm, I'm looking at it. This is the NASDAQ, of course. Nice run from 12,300. My real worry is when we get back down into this area, I'm not sure it's going to hold. That's 300 points away right now. I don't think we're going to be testing, you know, too many of the lows, especially, I mean, 11.6 is, is a far way down. That's the January lows right there. Um, so, yeah, I think the NASDAQ is right now testing its 50 period, then testing its 200 period. So, yeah, I mean, we're going one way here, and it looks like it's going down over the next couple of days, I'd say, back to at least, I mean, remember that day on CPI when we were talking about 12.4 right there? So that was something that I was looking at. And uh, yeah, a little embarrassed that we didn't go long off that number. This time, I'm not sure we hold it. So let's wait to see if 12.4 comes into play. But that's where I think we're going anyways. Test it, and then we'll be able to uh, regroup from there. But for me, yeah, 12.4 on the NASDAQ is what we're looking at. And we're at 12.6 now. So 200 points one way, and I think it's straight to the downside. So I'd say now that we're at 12.6, we see 12.4 before 12.8. So. That's, that's my guess. I don't know if you guys feel the same way or not on the chat, but today I do have predominantly shorts uh, on here, except for Roku. I like Roku breaking 72 long. So I think there's some good trade ideas here today. Yeah, we'll see how the, uh, there's a few Fed speakers I saw coming up today as well. We'll see how this language or if this language changes coming from the Fed uh, might be more fuel for the uh, continued hikes uh, message that we've been hearing over the past week or so coming from the Fed also. More fuel for the possible recession uh, talk as well that's been lingering in the background. Uh, we're going to have Raheem Alani from OCI Groups jump in here in a couple minutes to talk a little bit about how we might prepare ourselves for a bit of a softening coming through in the economy, possibly in the second half of the year. Uh, before we do that, GNS just uh, popped up on a scanner here. Big move to the downside initially, but it's holding these levels from yesterday. Uh, they approved a share buyback and something to the note of a consolidation, <laughs> which I guess is the same thing if you think about it. If you're buying back shares, you're consolidating the yeah. overall float. But uh, GNS, a very popular name in retail. Land. That's one of the trigger words, like AI, like investigations. Yeah. These share buybacks really get uh, really get people going. But come to my chart because we've this is a former runner, guys. It's been going since about the uh, middle of January. We've had nice big wicking days. We came back from the dead there below $1, obviously try to get there. Um, compliance with the NASDAQ. We're around seven bucks. 750 here really is the level. If we can break through the 750, this would be an interesting continuation. All right, a couple other notable movers here so far this morning. Uh, we talked about this right at the end of the day yesterday. Uh, Paramount uh, in the streaming group, possibly why I said uh, Netflix, uh, net, net Flix, I'll be okay. Thoroughly. Popped up on uh, volume there. I need another coffee. Uh, Paramount, downside in a big way. Q4 revenue missed, so earnings for Para, not good. Croc as well, up on an upbeat uh, annual profit forecast. But uh, some of the streaming names could be under a little bit of pressure today, guys. Like 90% up. But we were just talking with Raheem's a special in the guest. Building. Raheem, is in, Raheem the building. is in the building. He's here. We knew he'd be here. Yeah, but I, I, I have some like <laughs> negative thoughts towards Raheem because I told him like this guy's just dressing like Dapper Dawn over there. Where do you guys see the outfit we're in this guy's sweaters rocking. and jackets and all this kind I'm, of stuff. We're casual. To, well, I'm more casual than usual today. I got the tea, I got the the golf tee kind of look going on, but it's kind of cold in here, so I have to keep the sweater on. Crocs is interesting actually. Well, we'll see. We'll see because it's not usually a day trade, but Crocs, Crocs actually yeah. yeah, I mean Look, like every every now and then you see stocks that just behave technically like exactly like you would want to. Ride 50, bounce 50, consolidate, break over 130. I mean, if we get if this market dip continues, suddenly maybe you're dipping right into that support level or that previous resistance into a 130 and then just continuing the trend. Chasing up 135, maybe you don't need to, but I'd like to see that 130 level um, back after the open and it might have a chance to do so if this market continues to uh, hold the lows, so to speak. I feel like at this time, 
uh, this time on, on the CPI number, we were already getting a bit of a reversal. It felt that way at least. Maybe it wasn't as fast as, uh, as all this. But in the moment, it felt like we were already moving back to the upside. So this feels weak. I like some dip buys in there. Maybe we see 130 by the open on cross. If that happens, I think it's, it's worthy of pulling the trigger. But not a name that would be at the top of the list. Not when Roku's moving. You know, not, even you still have like upstarts and Robloxes from yesterday, which I think would be on the list as a day trader for the higher on the list. Uh, but yeah, Crocs 130 deserves our attention at least when you look at that daily chart. Yeah, look, thanks for the uh, respect there on the chat. D. Westminster, uh, Westermeyer, Westminster, Westminster Dog Show. Westminster uh, Abbey. Westermeyer, yeah, we talked about Crocs before. I, I you know, Look, this is a name that has just broken above. We called the 130 level and it made it there. Now you're here at 130 and breaking above. It's, to me, it feels like Airbnb all over again. Like you, you're breaking through a pretty key level here um, and, and now you're a lot higher. So for me, I think you continue to work. I mean, where, where we stop now is, is up to the market. Like I said, I am a little bit negative right now on just how far we've come, not negative on the market, but just we've come a little too far. I think we could pull back like we just talked about it there. Um, but next, you know, I think we can get to 142, 143 today, which is right into here. Um, you've already taken this out. This 130 level is pretty key. That's why we called about it last time. Um, bounced off 115 just a few days ago. It's five straight days to the upside. And it's up pretty big, man, up 15, 16% and now breaking above that key level. So Crocs continues to work. People want to be more casual, especially heading into the spring and the summer. You know, people throwing on shoes, heading out the back, heading to pool parties, so on and so forth. Crocs works, man. They, they signed that deal. They have Justin Bieber. They signed a deal with the NFL, NHL, NBA, all this kind of stuff. I, I, I mean, I have a pair of Crocs. They're a psychedelic. I, so I have one pair from, like, I think it's from, like, 1992 or something. They're, it's a Team Canada pair. And then my brother got me, uh, like, a psychedelic kind of crazy pair um, back a couple years ago, and I still wear those ones uh, out the back and stuff. So, I mean, I like this 130 level. I think we've broken it out, and I think you just go higher. I think you buy Crocs until you break back down below, like, maybe where the 50 period lies. So the 50 period will adjust today, probably go up to, like, 120 by the time we're all said and done. I think you go long now, and you get out if you break that. Look at us ride this all the way from November. You want to talk about technical analysis and things like that. You've basically held the 50 period ever since you broke $60. So if you if you took the trade that I I talk about all the time, breaking, yep, breaking the 50 period right here to the upside, then you don't really have any worries. Sure, it comes back in about three or four dollars, five dollars there. But other than that, man, you've wrote it up now a hundred percent on Crocs. So look what happens when we broke it to the downside. It's 160 all the way down to 60. Then now it's 60 all the way round trip back to 130. I like Crocs. It follows technicals. And I think it has some uh, nice tailwinds in front of it. So let's go Crocs seasonality. Hey, that's more. Uh, okay, as promised, uh, Raheem Milani, Managing Director of OCI Groups, back in the building to uh, have a bit of a recession discussion today. Good to see you. You too. Uh, it's uh, been a wild week as far as inflation, as we just saw again, two prints in a row here to the upside. So, we, you know, we, we went through a period, I guess, a couple of weeks anyways, where that R word kind of got pushed to the side a little bit, but it started to creep back in, right. uh, not only off the non-farm print that came a couple of weeks back in the U.S., but the CPI as well. So... Uh, here we go. Let's let's give some ideas or talk a little bit first on how we can prepare ourselves if we get into the second half of the year and the economy starts to soften a little bit. You like gold? Yeah, no, I think gold is an interesting play uh, at all times, and it's just it's catalyst for uh, a way to put money away. Uh, gold stocks, obviously, you know that's what we talk about because buying a gold bar really doesn't do anything for any of us. But uh, gold equities we think are interesting again, just as a hedge against inflation. Uh, and we were just talking off camera about the hedge between, or sorry, the, the, the gold being the hedge against inflation, but the correlation hasn't been as tight as it was in previous years. So there still is, when interest rates move up to the upside, yeah. gold typically will start to see a fallback, uh, but that, that hasn't been as tight as it's been in previous years, because I think, I think people still see the upside value in gold, yeah. given China's coming back, given India's you know, constant buyer of, of uh, personal gold. And um, yeah, inflation, the hedge against inflation. Yeah, so you're, seeing, you're seeing different movements. And regardless of, you know, people have different opinions on how much they should have uh, mm -hmm. in this area of the overall market, regardless of what your opinion is. I mean, this is just, there's obviously a ton of different ways you can look at gold as far as instruments are concerned. This is just D, uh, GLD, uh, the ETF in the US. I mean, from, this is November 
uh, going back to last year, I mean, 150 up to 182, nice pullback right now, you yeah. know, the overall market. Obviously, everyone's well aware of what's happening with that. So we're getting into a spot where on a pullback, some individual names even look attractive. Yeah, and then just, uh, just like you were saying, overall, gold had gotten up to 1950, which is the highest it's been in uh, just over a year and a half, or just about a year, excuse me. And um, it's up 1.3% this year, year to date. So you're going to see that gold move up again on the inflation data and then how will people react to interest rate data will gold pull back and then the equities that play into that all right uh let's jump into a few individual names here a few of these i noticed this morning will have uh dual listings so mm -hmm. both us and uh canada but now yeah. uh, the first one we're going to talk about here is barrick abx uh, we're obviously in earnings season or getting to the end of earnings season, but a few of these have yeah. recently reported as well. Yeah, so Barrick put out uh, news yesterday and the stock took a massive, just a movement uh, because they had their adjusted versus their unadjusted earnings that they put out. So on an unadjusted basis, they put up 726 million of profit last year versus a loss of 735 million this year. On an adjusted basis, so on an unadjusted basis, that was a 42 cent per share loss versus a 41 cent gain the previous year. On an adjusted basis, it was 13 cents versus what analysts expected at 11 cents. A lot of gibberish to say, depending on which side of the analyst report you read, the adjusted versus the unadjusted. So I was reading one story where people were like, Barrick smashed the numbers, they got 13 cents versus 11. And I was watching the other channel, that not you guys, I'm sorry, <laughs> the other channel, and they said that Barrick's put out their numbers, and it's, it's horrible. I, I know, I was, I was getting dressing tips on, on <laughs> what's around those other channels, but this one's better. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, my, my point being is that just depending on which side of that lens you want to look at, and again, Barrick is just, it's, it's a monster. Um, and interestingly enough, a company that they recently bid on uh, that got rebuffed out of Australia called Newcrest just received another takeout offer from Newmont, which is one of the biggest mining companies in the U.S. So it'll be interesting to see if, if Barrick hops back in to make another bid as well. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I had a bit more of a macro question. I know we're talking about the specifics, but I've been hearing a lot about central banks buying gold, uh, hoarding gold. Yep. So you've got a lot of uh, demand from that side. I also want to ask your opinion about, you know, the competition with gold that is with crypto at the moment. You know, they're, they're both trying to be that inflation hedge. Obviously, yep. crypto hasn't done that well. Yep. But now we're seeing a surge back into crypto lately. I mean, the last few days. Yep. How do you feel about those two competing forces where there is demand and maybe some outflows as well? Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. specifically, um, I think it's probably the about six weeks ago when I was here, uh, we did talk about central banks in Q3 bought more gold than they had bought in previous years. Uh, and so I said, you know, central bankers are probably smarter than we all are. And if they're going to go out and buy, my, buy gold for their, pers their, their uh, country inventory, then there must be something to that. And again, whether it's a hedge against inflation or what they want to do. So if central banks are going in and take a look, I mean, they have to announce how much gold they're buying. Right. Um, take a look at the countries that are buying. And if you see those reports and you start to see that they are buying gold in, in large quantities like they did in Q3. That may be an indicator to uh, continue to look at gold as an as a aggregate overall. Now, uh, interestingly, on the crypto side of things, you know, I've, we've talked about this in the past. I'm not a big believer in the crypto as, a, as a, any of the tokens because uh, I just don't know the macro fundamentals on a crypto coin versus gold. I know when gold, when inflation moves, interest rates move, right. gold will move. Crypto, I just can't, I don't have that same, same passion or feeling about it. Uh, and interesting, the door guy at my building, I said, I'm in a mining deal. And he's like, crypto mining? I was like, it's the <laughs> first time I've heard that. No, different mining. <laughs> I mean, so, it's, it's a more popular one, I think, these, it is. these days. It is. Uh, let's get through a few uh, more sure. of these. Uh, Kinross, earnings yesterday, uh, K yep. on the TSX here. I, I, all these charts, guys, are going to look very similar to that GLD chart that we started off with. Uh, obviously in the mining group, but uh, nice pullback here for uh, Ken Ross as yeah, well. Yeah, three and a half million of revenue versus two and a half million the year before. All in sustaining costs is a number you guys are going to want to look at uh, as prices move, as things change, as the price of labor goes up. Uh, where does that all in sustaining cost uh, come in at? So you're going to see com companies with, with assets uh, in North America typically, typically have higher all in sustaining costs against, say, something in, in Africa. So that's just a number to keep an eye on because you want to make sure there's enough delta to, to be able to make money. So uh, they had an all in sustaining of uh, 1271 versus 1244, so not too much of a, a jump, which was, which was good for them, and able to then turn around uh, um, uh, profit. And just going back to Barrick as, a, as a, one more thing, sure. they announced a billion dollar buyback that they're throwing in. So 
Share buybacks that we have talked about in the past. If yeah. companies are doing that, they believe in themselves. You may yeah. want to look at that as well. The popular move these mm -hmm. days, uh, <laughs> it would appear. Uh, B2 Gold is uh, another one, a little bit lower price. BTO on the TSX. Uh, nice looking chart here as well. Yeah, again, that was just something that I brought up um, with, uh, they, they operate in countries like Mali, Namibia, uh, Philippines. Uh, they trade about 3 million shares a day, just put out their numbers. A million ounces for the year. Uh, they're looking at another 1.1 million ounces coming up. And into that uh, M&A uh, talk that we just did, uh, they announced a acquisition of a company called Sabina for 1.1 billion. That gets them access into the Canadian market as well. Uh, they're all in sustaining because they are in those countries that I'm talking about are at 1050 versus a Kinross who's at 1240. All right, uh, a few smaller ones. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on this uh, snow line. Um, yeah. For those, anybody who's into small cap land and, and likes things that are you know a little bit lower priced. This is one of the best looking charts I've seen probably this year as far as sustaining an overall uptrend in yeah. an environment that's very much not. Yeah, so Snowline's an interesting play. Uh, they're up 300% um, from, you know, from last year to, to the end of the year. So if you got it at the beginning, that's awesome. And uh, you know, one would imagine as these companies go and grow, they, they're up 300%. They put $25 million away in an equity financing. That's going to allow them to go and drill and do some more work. So if you're a firm believer in gold, again, these are the juniors that we're talking about. So lower price points, a little bit easier to get in and out of potentially um, on the smaller cap side for, for a smaller budget. But it, that is one that's got enough cash in the bank and um, is, has, is gonna, has just recently excuse me, put out results as well. Uh, so that's SGD on the uh, CSE, which is the yep. Canadian Securities Exchange here in Toronto. Uh, Element 79, I, I think we've talked about this in the past before, another one kind of in that same category. Yeah, so Element, uh, they've got assets in North America as well as Peru. They just put out their Peruvian results uh, yesterday, seven and a half grams a ton. Uh, of gold, uh, 916 grams per ton of silver. Uh, they are at their 52-week lows. They were up at about 10. They're down to 10 cents right now. Uh, volume has picked up significantly in the last couple of months, potentially because it's at a lower price point. But they are starting to get news going back out again. Uh, they have completed their financial statements. So that'll be an interesting one to watch because of the fact that they got to two different locations. Gold is continuing to move. Let's see where they start allocating resources. We haven't had, uh, from a bigger scale here, we haven't had obviously the same impact on inflation in this side of the border in Canada as the U.S. How much exposure do these types of ideas have to that market versus being in Canada where it hasn't been that big of an issue? In terms of um, inflation and the impact on the individual companies. Oh, got it. Sure. Um, again, because it's you're looking at gold as an aggregate. So if you're looking at the top three that we talked about, Barrick and, and Kinross, they might be more predominantly affected by the fact that you've got inflation, by the fact they're dual listed, by the fact they can see both sides of the lens. The Canadian smaller cap ones are going to be probably a little less affected. Um, and simply just because it's you know, the Peter down effect, less so than the inflation effect. Yeah. Uh, more so, like unless gold goes to like four thousand bucks, then all golds I think will will go up no matter what. Yeah. But on the junior side, it's more of do you believe in the in the story of they are they going to be the next one that either gets acquired, like a Sabina just got acquired the other day. Are they going to be in line to be acquired? Are they going to uh, be able to raise capital to go out and do the projects that they need to do? So it's not as big as a uh, inflation move on the smaller cap side. It's more so will the bigger ones go and then will the smaller ones be able to catch up? So what's your base case on gold this year? Like what should we expect in 2023? If I knew the answer to that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. you know what? I honestly, I think again, just with the way the world is going, gold hasn't been as as much of a talking point as it's been. So, sort of like maybe a couple of years ago during COVID, you know, we didn't really talk as much about yeah. gold. We probably talked more about oil. It, it's just it depends on, in my opinion, it depends on your view on the inflation story. If you believe that gold and inflation are married at the hip, then you know, then take that take that stance and go right. into the producers. And if you want to take the, the leap on the juniors, uh, I was talking to a guy yesterday. He said mining deals are flying off the shelves, and you can, you can get cashed up. You know, a mining deal on an equity side, small cap company is going to do a deal with a small discount. They'll pick up a warrant as well on it. And you're going to believe that, you know, when these gold runs happen, this is when these companies cash up. They go out and get enough resources to be able to develop the asset to a point where it gets into production or not. So it just depends on your lens on where you want to be small cap versus large cap, and then gold against inflation, gold against uh, interest rates. That actually, that says a lot uh, as far as the overall landscape. They, they were words, so hopefully they were all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Anyways, and again, we're just uh, looking ahead, trying to prepare ourselves for uh, what is uh, possible to come in the second half of the year if we do continue to see a little bit of softening in the overall economy. Raheem Alani is Managing Director of OCI Groups here in Toronto. Good to see you. Likewise. Thanks, guys.
And uh, look, one of the things that you said there, which is which I love, because I remember when you were talking about the central banks, if they're buying gold, they're smart, they might know something. And speaking of central banks, the market did make another leg to the downside. It was Mester speaking, saying things like, uh, saw a compelling case for a 50 basis point hike last meeting. Uh, also, how far the Fed goes above 5% depends on the data. Market didn't like any of that. I think we have a couple more. I, I'll have to check the schedule to see who we have talking midday, but there's a couple more um, you know, sort of Fed members going to be talking, and you know they can move the markets. We had PPI uh, take us to the downside. We just made another leg down. Just watching the SPY here, I want to go to the 15. The watching the SPY, like we've basically gone from the high yesterday all the way into yesterday's bottoms in the last, in the last half an hour or so. So definitely you've gone top to bottom. A few of the shorts I liked have kind of gotten away which that's an understatement at this point because NVIDIA is at 222 and that's a long way from 225 last I checked. Coinbase is down $4 from 70 bucks. I, if the market pops here, I'm likely to take a shot at some of these shorts, but, although I want to acknowledge, you know, when we had the CPI number, you had the flush and you had the move back to the upside, you did want to be a little bit patient at where you got into things at the top, but I was looking at that 70 from yesterday. But the break happens on the number and then you're just kind of chasing it. Let's see what happens at the open if we can get back to some of these levels uh, that we previous liked for the, previously liked for those shorts because Mester uh, definitely put a damper on some of those opportunities. Yeah, look, um you know, 30 minutes ago when we were on the air, I was talking about being negative for today and the futures were down like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Now you're down 1% lower than that. So, I mean, a lot of the shorts, I was talking about Palantir at 10, now it's at 960. Like to have gone short in the pre-market obviously is the right idea. But yeah, that's, probably. I mean, I was just talking about that. Like I was just talking about how, you know, we're watching this market and that I like the short much better than the long. And I thought we'd see 12.4 before 12.8. So now you're even closer than that. I like that Barrett Gold talk and it's a good time to have Raheem on because Barrick Gold right now in the last two weeks is down like, I don't know, 15% in two weeks down for Barrick Gold. So, you know, you're going to be able to pick it up right now around this $16 mark. I think that looks pretty good. We're talking about the U.S. symbol here. Uh, down to 16 sixteen fifty, where you have some support. Goes all the way back to mid-December. So I like this call. If you're looking to pick something up, it, it has a lot of room to run and a lot of our portfolios aren't well diversified. So, you know, if you don't have any gold names in there, oil, gold, you know, match that with some of these growth names and then you can get a little bit of a hedge. But obviously, Raheem talking there about inflation, you have to understand how, um, you know, they react with each other and, and how, you know, if, if you're offside on one name, maybe you do put something in your in your pocket like a gold name. Um, you know, it's one of those things. Plus, you're going to get a little bit of a dividend What's coming through here. So, back. yeah, I like Barrick Gold. I like to play with the bigger ones. So that's a name that uh, I'm, I'm going with here, Barrick Gold. I think I actually will uh, dip my toes into some of this stock. All right, let's get some analyst moves for you this morning. Upgrades and downgrades for a Thursday. Uh, a lot of notable names on here. This one from yesterday, uh, very positive, obviously. Roku here, we'll get into that. Uh, ATVI from Deutsche Bank. There's Coinbase downside off of a monster move uh, with Bitcoin that we uh, will discuss, I'm sure, here. Uh, up almost 12% on the 24-hour period. EA NVIDIA, guys, downgrade today as well on Planet Fitness. Uh, Roblox like, upgrade. Roblox with the upgrade makes makes some sense, and then Roku. Uh, look, Coinbase when you look at when you look at Coinbase on the downgrade side, along with Nvidia, sometimes it's about where these puppies have gone. It's, well, suckers have gone uh, a little bit here. And uh, look, I'm not going to say anything bad about Nvidia for the long term, but the reason the last couple of days I've kind of felt like the short was going to be in play. Monster level at 2:30 on the daily. You've made several several tests at it now, and you kind of pull away. And yesterday. There wasn't much of a chance to trade off that level. The lower high at the open in the afternoon was 228. You know, I like that level. I'm going to like the 225. That was afternoon support. Maybe we get a push back in. But those things, it's like 830 hits, and either you were in the short taking the break at 830, and maybe it's the experience of the CPI that made us not do it, but either way, it is what it is. Like CPI, when you took that break, it was a short move, and then it came right back and blew you away. But I, I'm going to like NVIDIA again. I'm going to go for the short again in this one. It was really at the open that you cracked it. Uh, and then late in the afternoon, you got that chance at 228. So I want to be in something on the first pop uh, at said open. Coinbase, $4 away. Now, like, in, NVIDIA pops two and a half, three dollars, two and a half to three dollars on a $200 stock, and it gets back in the pocket. Coinbase has to go up 5% for it to go to the price that I want to short it. So 
Maybe we get it, maybe we don't. If it trends, then I want to find a way to join that trend, though. All right, I want to thank uh, Justin Everest here. Thank you so much for the $5 Super Chat. Happy Thursday and good morning to everybody as well. And best of luck uh, trading in this what is going to be a very, very volatile day. And, of course, I, I, I'm just going to... I've been I mean, pretty good on pretty turning safe. this over. I'm not Randy or Neil. Uh, you're the jinx. Randy is, Randy is the official jinx. You're not, you're not as much as Randy, <laughs> It's I only find. one way I'm the jinx. Um, and I'm not jinxing it. I think right now you're down 1.5%, so I think we're going to go for a bearish day here today. Um, and that's just what I'm looking at. I do have some bids, though. I like Tesla a lot lower than where we are right now. Um, and then AMD, possibly. I know we're just talking about NVIDIA on that, but AMD could get down... I don't know how far. So the thing is, is like right now, it's it's going to be a little difficult. I just think the markets run so far here that you know a lot of these names could easily pull back. Like for me, I'm, I I don't want to say it, but like AMD could see 81 today. Maybe I don't want to say 80, but 80s 80s really where I want to buy it. So if if this can come back in a couple bucks, we could easily see it. What am I talking about? It's already 83. It's funny because like you don't realize we were just, I was looking at this earlier and it was 85. Um, and then I was like, ah, it's not going to get to 80, you know, like when it's at 85 and maybe mo moving down. But now it's at 83. And that's only been a half hour of the market. So once the market opens up, we can check out the imbalance locator really quick here. Remember, this only has uh, New York names on it right here. So... You know, you have Twilio off earnings yesterday. I'm sure we'll talk about that uh, coming up soon as they're up huge today as well, another 9%. Roku's pulled back. They're only up 6 or 7 but again, that's a uh, New York name. Roblox right there on the sell uh, side of things as well, down 3% on an upgrade today. I really like Roblox, but again, on this dip down, yesterday we really did well on this 42 number here uh, of Roblox. We, we busted this long and had this whole move to the upside. So we're going to look to do that again. 42 long Roblox. 207 long Tesla. I still think there's some strength in here. Things over in Europe are shaping up as we head towards uh, 9 o'clock. We'll get a rune in here as well. Uh, for a look at the future, it's a bit of a mixed story throughout the European landscape right now. 0 0.02 uh, for England, just actually right now going back into negative territory. Same story for Germany. Back and forth, though, for the most part across the board. As mentioned, let's uh, get a rune in here. Uh, understand a little bit more what we need to know here, Arun. I mean, obviously, uh, to the downside we go here, but if you zoom out a bit, uh, Sharif and I were just talking about this, if you zoom out a bit, you know, the the trend, the structure is still very much intact here. Yeah, and it's been sideways. I mean, yesterday was like watching paint dry as a trading day, right? But here's the thing. Thursday going into a long weekend tends to be the exciting day because everyone tries to get their volume done. And then Friday is usually a very, very quiet day. So the fact that we're getting some numbers moving this market, we've got what, Philly Fed and the PPI coming uh, that, that came out that moved uh, the market. And they were quite off too. I mean, minus 24.3 on the Philly Fed. And then uh, PPI was 5.4, 4.9. So, I mean, they're, they're, they've got a big difference there. So this market's going to have to digest all of that, which brings volatility. And this is great. If we're going to get some expansion on this range that we've been kind of sitting in, okay. today's probably the best bet going into a long weekend. So the way they're trading right now, I mean, we I started this market at, when I sat down was at about 45. And now here we are at 10. So clearly we've already moved quite a, a bit. Now if we can just go another 20, 30 points to the downside. That should open up the bottom end. Let's just see if we can. I am starting to see some buying coming in at, at these tens and fives. We've seen that the last few times we've been here around 4,100, all the way up to 4,110 has been a buy side volume area. Back and forth, we've gone through it before, but on the way back up, we have also had resistance there. So there's going to be a decent amount of volume coming through here. I want to see 4090 break for the downside to open up. Flip side of this is this market catches the bid right here. If we're going to do any sort of buying, this is probably the area to do it, bottom end of the range. Why not pick up some action? But the, for me, in terms of trades, it's not set up for that. Clearly, we're moving aggressive to, aggressively to the downside. But if we do catch a bid off the open and we get back above 4130, we're going to have to go right back into the idea of a potential range bottom buy and see if we can't take it back towards a high of 4170. Flip side of that is this market opens up, continues its move down through 4, uh, 4090, and then makes a small bounce back up. Now you can use that previous support as resistance. So the play then would be a potential short near 4100 against 4130 as a stop and see if we can expand down towards the 4050s as the next target. So that's the, we're in the right place to make a move. It's just a matter of what the market wants to do at the open. Is it gonna to be to the upside for the long or is it gonna to be to the downside to break the bottom and then open up the short? We're gonna to have to wait and see. 
But if we're going to do it, it should be today because the volume probably will die out tomorrow. So Ren will uh, check back in again tomorrow morning heading into the long weekend. Uh, use that QR code, guys, if you haven't done so already, uh, and you can enter your email address and get the watch list for free from us every single day. We uh, send it out before we come on at 8.30, a ton uh, to get through on that watch list this morning. Let's kick it off with this one. Roku, big time move, not only aftermarket uh, yesterday, but uh, this morning initially, obviously erasing some of that now, but uh, it was the uh, cost cutting promise in the forecast that uh, investors seem to like initially. I mean, decent numbers right across the board for uh, Roku, but an interesting story here as you know, it seems like this thing died initially last year and then now all of a sudden everybody wants a Roku. Yeah, bizarre for me. I mean, they, they hit 70 million users, Brendo. They, they touted a, a total of 10 million users added in 2022, a time when we heard uh, people chose experiences over goods. So a little bit uh, bizarre for me, but good for them. Uh, here's the look on uh, Roku, though. Holds the 50 period here on the retracement. Now we're looking 80 in the face. That's where the 200 is. Let's see if this one can get some continuation and hold above the 200 if you're looking for a swing. I wanted to uh, just make this quote uh, known to everyone from Pivotal Research. Uh, there was a ton of analyst moves on this today, but uh, the best thing that can be said about this result is that the Q4 guidance was so horrific, <laughs> it implied that there was something specifically wrong with Roku's business model. Uh -oh. So, um, I mean, all over the place as far as analysts are concerned as well. So I, I've kind of been in the camp that I've never really been uh, a huge understander of the, the long term for their model. All that being said, we've, we saw it with, uh, with Upstart. Where you, you can say it was mixed. You can say it was good. You can say it bad. I would have said it was bad. But you know, Roku today, it's, it's broken out a, a big level on the 15. Shreve just did, showed you guys uh, the 200 period and then the daily chart. So I'm not going to go over that again. But you know, kind of I was looking at this level, like 68 to 68 and a half in front of the previous high, 67, where you can get a dip by. Now, we've had the number. We bounced a little bit. So now that you've sort of calmed down, after that 8.30, uh, I don't want to say surprise, and Mester talking, you've kind of reestablished some of those levels. You bounced off 67, you're above 68 now. So with the open, we can be set up to go for a little bit of a, I don't know, relief rally on something like Roku. Now it's only 9% short float. So that's actually not as big as some might have expected, but that doesn't mean it can't go a little bit higher. And you know, I, at the end of the day, this is more about momentum than anything else. Uh, I think there is a dip that's probably coming for this stock, but after seeing what happened to Upstart yesterday, I'm more than willing to have a look at this one uh, off the open in front of that 67 and a half initially, give it to the bottom, and just give it an idea on Upstart. Like I thought everything about Upstart was weak in terms of the, in terms of the trade, no, sorry, in terms of the earnings, but it still decided after gapping to the downside to completely break out. And that 17 carried you to 19. I started shorting it because I thought it was too far. If it comes in today and holds, let me zoom back in. If Upstart actually holds 19 and a half, the morning support, then I might go for a dip buy in that. But Roku is the flavor of today. Uh, Upstart has to get down there and show me some support before I would go along again in that one. Uh, it just goes to show it's not necessarily about the fundamentals or how good the report was. It's all about momentum and sometimes shorts covering, and that can win out the day. Yeah, I was looking at a 72 break before all this stuff happened here, and I just tweeted out a few things here. You know, revenue's still up 13%, and accounts are up 16%. So if we're going to sit here, also Roku, the number one smart-selling TV OS uh, in the United States. So, I mean, all right, so number one OS, up accounts, up revenues. I think they're doing fine. Obviously, moving forward is going to be a completely different di different story. So, I, I mean, to say that you're going to buy Roku here at these levels and hold it, I mean, you can. It's just, this is just a huge move up. And I always like to say that if, if it's near the 50 period, it's sort of something you want to watch out for. I mean, look, I know there's a lot of traders around here that have added the 50 period uh, to their daily charts. But look, look at this. It's really respected this 50 period the whole way down. And then right here, you've bounced off of it. So, like, you broke it there and since you've broken it you you haven't 
tested back down. So, and it just broke it back down here in January uh, 18th, where you could have been long at $50. So $50, $55, I think that's a decent base down here, somewhere near 60. You're only at 68 right now. You are starting to break up. Look at the upside that there is in this name. I think you can get to 94, 95 here on Roku. Does it happen today? No. Uh, if the market, if that PPI, look, it's just so funny how we react to stocks based on factors external to the stock themselves, right? Like if that PPI, and that's the way it's supposed to be, that's the way it's always been. There's indicators out there for a reason. We're talking macro economy stuff. And if that PPI number comes out the other way, right, then Roku might be have a seven in front of this number, not an eight. Like, 68, 78, you know? Like there's a possibility that that would have happened. It's already been to $76 today. So, uh, well, that was last night on earnings, but it was up there. And this morning, I don't know where it went. I stopped my chart at seven o'clock, started at seven o'clock, but you're already up to 72 bucks. You pulled back four. Could we get back upside? I think yes. That little dip down there is perfect because now we have an area of you know, consolidation where we can get out if we're going to be wrong. So I'm going to probably, I will be buying Roku on a move down and watching out for this 66.50. It's pretty simple for me. I want to buy it at 67 here or so, 67.50 into here. See if it holds 66.50. If it doesn't, we're gone. Well worth the $1.50 worth of risk here. I think it can get blown out to the upside today. Let's just see what happens with Roku, man. It was 76 last night. It's 68 right now. PPI be damned. I think Roku goes up. DocuSign here. Um, losing 10% of their sales force, uh, not losing, cutting 10% uh, of its sales force right here. And it's not really doing anything. So that's a little bit of a surprise. I saw that note come in and I thought there was a possibility that we'd be flying right there. So uh, DocuSign right now just hovering around 64 bucks. Reading through that as well, there's uh, a few cost cutting measures just uh, being announced here for uh, DocuSign, including that 10% uh, reduction in staff. But yeah, no volume whatsoever. Uh, let's go on. Shopify tumbling as Q1 revenue outlook missing expectations. Uh, the holiday quarter, however, was kind of in line with expectations, but a uh, bit of a surprise for uh, Shop downside today. Yeah, they miss on guidance. Uh, the, I think the street was looking for 20% year over year, and they, they guided in the high teens, so that's a miss. Otherwise, they beat. I mean, I, I really don't have an opinion much about this uh, company. I feel like that they they kind of, like Amazon, they, they overexpanded during the pandemic, and then they paid the price for it later, and we're still kind of feeling the repercussions of that. Yeah, a ton of relative weakness here so far this morning as far as the, uh, I mean, market's obviously very weak as well. But uh, here comes Day Lowe's right now, guys, for shop. Uh, look at the at the end of the day, Shop still trades at double digits versus their sales. Like the valuation is still just very expensive, and that's why if the guide misses, they kind of get punished for it a little bit more than some of the other names that are out there, and they're really taking it taking it on the chin right now. Um, but there is there was a flat bottom break, which you could say already happened at 47.30, although I'd say 46, maybe the bigger level, which it's catching a bit off of right now. Like you're seeing uh, some consolidation off the bottom at that 46. That's where it gets really ugly. I don't necessarily want to wait for 46 uh, for a break. I want to get something on the way back to the upside. If it kind of gets back to this level, like 47.30, I want to be short in front of that 47.30 area, playing it up to the pre-market highs, 46 breaks, you know, that's a big one, but you can get trapped at the bottom there. So if I take that on a breakdown at the open, I always want to have an itchy trigger finger if it doesn't go right away. Like, that's the kind of thing where if it breaks this, it should work right away. And if it's not working right away, you can certainly get trapped because a retracement could easily be a dollar to a dollar fifty on a retracement off the 46 break to the downside. So I'd rather be getting that retracement short on shop. Yeah, not a great uh, move forward there. High teens uh, expected growth versus mid-20s or so, nearly 20% is what was uh, sort of expected there. So it, it's not great there. Seven cents per share versus uh, one cent loss. So that's nice uh, for Shopify holders, but still down 13%. And again, another name that's just been ripped up here uh, in the last month or less than a month. A uh, huge move uh, back to 55. We talked about that yesterday. And this was a name that yesterday I said we'll probably miss. We talked about Shopify there just on on it was primed to beat uh, up here at 55 um it that doesn't happen so you get that huge move down here uh 53 54 i guess uh but yeah it, it's a tough environment 
I think Shopify was a COVID name, and rightfully so. If, if there's many other alternatives now to, to building websites and, and using different pay, payment systems and whatnot, I just don't see Shopify as being, I mean, I still hold shares. I just don't see it as being a huge move forward now uh, in this name. But hey, you know what? We've seen uh, worse companies do better things uh, in the market. So I'm, I'm still shorting this name back to 48 bucks. So I want to be short here around 48. If we're wrong, we'll use 48.50, kind of like the pre-market highs. If you looked at yesterday, obviously there's that 55 uh, move on earnings. We got, kind of got up there like 53, 54. But you know, if you can come back into sort of this where we started to settle down here before the drop for PPI, this is kind of where I don't mind the short. And this is one where you got to watch out for that 200 period. So I think by the time the market opens up, this will probably come into like 48, 50, 49. So that, that's where we'll get out if we're wrong and then probably reverse to the long side. Shopify does have an opportunity to go back up 13% seems like it's too far down but you know this market's not uh, paying anybody out today so i i want to be short so i want to be short this name around like neil was talking 47 48 too so i think in this area is where i want to go short i already have an order waiting there the only buys i have right now and i'm just going to double check them with you guys is um roku down here well we already talked about roku that's not going to be that's not going to hit anywhere uh, i was roblox sorry was the name that i'm waiting for a buy uh, on right now so roblox down here i'm bidding 42 so it's not there yet 42 is where we had that big move yesterday and the other buy that i'm looking at right now is tsl to the A, Tesla, 210 might be a pretty sweet buy as well, but not, not today, not early. So I'm going to go with 207.50, which uh, is going to be down here. Uh, this drop spot yesterday, when we had that move down, uh, was this yesterday? Yeah, you had that move down to 207. We were caught in this. Remember we made money yesterday by buying 208 and getting out 211 there? Um, and then, well, we started buying 210s, got 208s, got them out 211, held one piece, tried 208, got stopped, and then it was disastrous because it just kept moving up to the upside before closing at 215. A lot of great stories for Tesla. As Ford fails, as GM fails, as all these other companies fail in the EV space, Tesla continues to produce a shoot ton of cars, and uh, I like this name, but it's got to get back down here to 207, 208 uh, for me to buy. So I have buys on Roku, Roblox, and Tesla right now. Shorts waiting on Microsoft, Palantir, and Shopify. Board, we'll get to that in a sec. Let's uh, talk about crypto here for a second. A lot of people mentioning this move when I came in this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice look here for BTC taking out that 24,200, which was that high. You got to go back to last summer, uh, which is basically 25,000 is the next stop. Here's a note from uh, Coindesk this morning saying if essentially if that high gets taken out, clear sailing, guys, get ready for 56,000. That's a bold statement, wow. Brendo, given where we've come from. But yeah, to be fair to crypto, we're now moving above the 200, moving at, uh, EMA on the daily chart. We've heard a lot about what's happening lately with regulation. That's kind of the trigger word for big money to flow in. It sounds like it's counter uh, counterintuitive. You know, you don't want regulation, but in this case, you do because it's the Wild West. Yeah, it's a great point. We've seen uh, two different moves over the past couple of weeks with uh, SEC coming in. Uh, so maybe that is the catalyst here as we get back to significant levels once again for both crypto or both uh, BTC and Ethereum today. Well, my barber was really excited last night because he always wants to talk crypto. Uh, and he's like, yeah, so how's it going? It's a big day. Okay, well, you know, if we break that level, it's, it's a weekly chart. I have a weekly up for, right now for BTC. And look, if you break that level, I don't know about 56,000, but obviously it's pretty big, that 25 on Bitcoin. But if we reject it, like why, are, like, why don't you think we're going back into the teens? That's kind of what I told him, too. It's like, well, if you reject that level, it kind of gets just as bearish. Um, so we're going to see today it's, it's Coinbase that I'm looking at. And, you know, it's, we'll see what happens if Coinbase pops up. I, just, I don't like the notion of shorting it here. I thought Coinbase at 70 was going to be the play. And then it just it, it made the move late yesterday, kind of too late to, for me to want to put that trade on. Uh, and then I think you're just on the way, like start stepping down. The last time it did a move like this off the same area, it got to almost 90 bucks in pullback. Now you're making a lower high in Coinbase. A little bit too far. If Bitcoin pulls back a little bit, Coinbase pulls back a lot. And I like that 70 level. I want to be short in front of it today. It's just a matter of it popping a little bit at the open. Uh, yeah, I guess our, both our barbers are, are pretty easy money uh, when we walk in the door. Uh, but uh, yeah, look, 
There's a whole bunch of talking cool. heads out there, and quite frankly, I'm tired of all of this because I've already made the call on Bitcoin, and I'm already in the money 20, 30, 40%. Like, not 40%, I wish it was 40%. Um, you know, 20% here. What? I, I, we, I called this move. I said, once you break 20, you simply go long 20, and you don't get out. This is if you want to YOLO it. You don't get out until it breaks back 20 again. Like, it's been just that simple of a trade. Like, I'm, this is just so ridiculous that everybody, and I mean, I heard people talking about Arun, like saying like, oh, because Arun always says, if we get there. Well, that's the point. Like, you, we, we don't know where we're going on these things. You just have to trade sort of what is in front of you and what you see. So, like, right here, if you're, bear, if you're bullish on Bitcoin, just buy the damn thing and then get out when it breaks back down below levels. It's not a hard trade. Like, it's, I don't, we, it doesn't have to go to $56,000. It doesn't, it doesn't have to go to 100. It doesn't have to go anywhere. It, this is a stock. Look at it like a stock, right? It's not a stock. Look at it like a stock. Trade it like that here's the daily chart here's the break of 20 i called this when we were down here at 16 17 it's like i'm not doing anything down here once we break 20 we're going long and that's what we did it's 24 and change i'm staying away from coinbase i'm staying away from si i'm buying these coins if you dip back down you get out i mean it's just it's that simple we did that with cardano we did that with everything like we called cardano at, at 14 cents went to three dollars it's not like some of it is hopium. Pretty much all of it is. We don't know what Bitcoin's going to be. We don't know what anything in crypto is going to be yet. You know, it, there, there's base cases for it to be bearish. There's base cases for it to be bullish. We're going to have Kevin O'Leary on. You guys can roast him about whatever you want. He's going to come on here, talk about crypto probably as well. You know, there are upside moves. Um, uh, Sharif was talking about uh, regulation and things like that. Hey, look, all we have to do is watch and see what happens. The best part about crypto, it's a 24-hour market. So what? If, if it breaks 20,000, get out. If your exchange doesn't have stop orders, get on another exchange. Like, this is very, very simple stuff. If you're holding crypto for a long time, get the hell off exchange. Put it in cold storage. A question I asked Sam Bankman fried two damn years ago, live on this show, I spoke to him about cold storage. So, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people that lost a lot of money in all this, but just be smart with your crypto holdings, and uh, you can make money. There's a lot of haters out there, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, fanboys and girls for crypto so it's gonna go both ways and I love everybody just to answer a question in the chat there Kevin is coming on at 245 today so uh, I know we've said it a couple times but he is coming on at 245 it'll be in the afternoon show it's kind of our regular uh, guest spot uh, when we try to have guests in the afternoon show so gear up and if you have questions for him you know throw them in the chat maybe we'll be able to get to them so um, that's where we're here just here to have everyone voice their opinion and we can learn from anybody I watch that too uh, let's talk Tesla. Uh, a couple new additional things to uh, be aware of this morning as far as uh, Tesla is concerned. This was yesterday, if you remember, we were talking about that uh, charging network story. So Musk finally agreeing to open at least uh, part of that up to be able to capture some of that funding coming from the Biden administration. Uh, this was after the close yesterday, Electrek reporting that uh, Sharif, sorry, but if you're in the U.S., you can't buy a Model Y until Q2. Oh, Again, we're having this problem again. I feel like deja vu. Didn't we just have this problem? Um, I think the, uh, the inventory in Canada is a little bit better. I was looking at it like uh, over the weekend. There seems to be some excess inventory, but there's also new headwinds coming in. We talked about the tailwinds. There's new headwinds. Um, looks like uh, they terminated 30 workers in their Buffalo plant here, the autopilot department uh, for potential unionization. That's the accusation being made. So, you know, you never really want to tussle with the administration on this union thing. The administration has made their position very clear yeah. how they feel about unions. Yeah, but you're making the point that, you know, there's cause behind this. It's not, yeah. it's not just that no, they're no. doing it on a whim or anything like that. So people should uh, be aware of that. Not having enough inventory, guys, never a bad thing. It's not. You run it like I mean that just means demands all over the da the damn place and uh, and and a good thing. So Tesla you know, round trip. We can talk about two fifteen because I I was I was excited about the two fifteen break yesterday and you know what what are you gonna do? Like obviously it was above two fifteen pre market eight thirty happened and now it's gonna be beneath it. So you're still lined up that that could be a significant breakout of yesterday's highs. But for now it's just back to being resistance because I see that it failed above that price pre market and has yet to really test it in the open market. Uh, if it gets beneath 205, that's the danger zone today. You can kind of see I like 05s 
and I like 15s, I really don't want to diddle with 10. So I want to keep it relatively simple with Tesla. The other EV name, and right about this time, we were talking about a gigantic imbalance on Rivian to the downside that caused it to do this before it absolutely jammed up. And this was sick. Like, it was a big million or over a million sell and balance, I do believe. Caused it to go to the downside. Then it ripped like everything else. 21, it held. And then now you're seeing it kind of reject that 21 level with the rest of the market. This is what it looks like on the daily chart. I mean, Rivian is kind of poised that it could always make a secondary move. 20 bucks even is the 50 period on the daily. If it holds that, I think at the open, I want to see a test of that 20 on Rivian because after that explosion, after the early sell-off, going for a dip buy in Rivian is going to make some sense to me. And it's that $20 level I'm looking at. Just given what it did yesterday after the dip was insane. So if it can go part two, 20 would be the level. Man, I, got, I got a pretty crazy headache uh, right now. I've been pounding back the waters. I'm drinking the teas right here. I don't know. I hope I'm not... Uh, Starting to feel ways. Oh, Arun is in uh, for all of you guys that are excited for Arun. He's going to be in tomorrow as I, uh, our, me and my family go to Ottawa for the weekend as my eight-year-old is playing hockey in a hockey tournament. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun, except for the fact that Ottawa is a five-hour drive. So we're going to be waking up tomorrow uh, at the same time waking time up. Leaving? But for the kids, oh, okay. like around 6 a.m., okay, uh, nice. we'll be hitting the road there tomorrow uh, to get to Ottawa. Our first game is at 1. So we're excited uh, for that. Um, all right, so, you know, I just talked about driving around. I wish I did have an EV so I could, uh, you know, not worry about gas tomorrow all the way there on a five-hour drive. But it, again, I don't know if a Tesla would go that far unless I had the uh, big engine there, the battery. All right, Ford, yesterday. Look, Ford's been a great trade. Actually, let's use a three-minute chart. Ford's been a great trade for me over the last two days, man. We really crushed uh, this whole fire issue, right? So we hit it right here, and it was a very, very dramatic move down. It happened really quickly. We were short at 13.08. I remember um, we talked about this. I was in the kitchen. I looked on my... That was a good thing about the Apple Watch. I actually looked down at the watch. There. Uh-oh. There, I lifted it to my mouth, and it starts recording what I'm saying. Uh, but um, so anyways... 13, uh, 15, 13, 20 right there, uh, downside. And, and I just ran over here, shorted it when I saw that. We, are, we got 10s and 8s and then covered it in the 80s. That was a great trade. Yesterday, you saw me in the afternoon. We shorted forward. It was good, but it didn't get down below 1285 right here. So we shorted in here. We were flat on the trade. We wound up getting out at 90 when it broke at the end of the day right there. But now you're starting to head down. It's not much more than the market, but I don't think Ford's going anywhere upside right now. So until they get this battery fire, issue and all that stuff figured out just came out right now that it was a fire uh, issue in the battery they're halting the f-150 until at least mid next week so i don't know how many f-150s they put out every day but you know it's definitely a number there uh to be a little concerned about and especially moving forward so for me on ford i'm short until we break 13. This one, just like I said before, someone said I'm sounding like Michael Burry, I'll take it. Um, you know, Ford, I think, is in another easy trade until it breaks 13. I'm going short this name until it breaks 13. I just hope I don't miss it. 13.20 is not bad. Yeah, I'm just, if it breaks 13, then I'll get out, and then we'll, yeah. If it gets up, to, I don't think it gets up there today. So Neil just said 1320, but I love 1320. It just has to get there. Um, so that's, it goes back to that thing I was saying about Arun. Anyone can look at a chart right here and say, this is a key level. But as a trade through there, it's how you act once it gets to that level. Right? And that's the thing. Like when, and, and I'm saying, I'm talking about good things here about Arun. Giving you guys key levels. It's, it's how we trade when it gets to those key levels. That's, that's where the money's made. You know, it's, it's, that's where the money's made. So anyways, uh, breaking through 1260 right here to the downside, that's a good level there for Ford. So, you know, whether or not, and, and, and this is what I'm saying, because and the reason why I say this is when Arun was on, people were saying like, oh, is he going long? Is he going short? Why are we only talking about key levels? And the thing is, is like, that's not, like where do you think the market's going? So if, it's, if, if the market rips to the upside, then those levels might be areas where you want to look for resistance, where you might take the short through that level, right? Or up to that level level. Then on the downside, when Arun's giving some levels like that, that, those are key areas maybe where you might find some support. So if you are short, watch it get to those levels 
you know, base out. And the same thing if you're long, right? How you trade it in the middle, maybe you don't. And that's what I'm trying to get out with Ford here. We're at 1270, 1280. I'm going to start to short. I have my, see, I'm telling you where my bids are or offers are. 1284, we're going to start our short right here, that pre market high. If it gets to 13, we're going to take more. And then we're out if it breaks strongly through 13. So Ford for me should be a relatively easy trade. Um, all right, and let's look here to see if there's anything been coming through right now. Uh, New Bank. Whatever, Palantir's there it. as a sell, Shopify's there as a sell. I don't see, we didn't talk about Cisco much today. They had a good report yesterday. That's coming out as a sell as well. And I don't see too many big NASDAQ names here. I'm loaded with orders, man. I have like 15 pending orders right now. So um, despite you know, what uh, my headache is trying to do to me. Oh, here comes Palantir back upside as well. All right, let's go over there to Brendo. We only have one minute. Yeah, let's wrap things up here with uh, Alphabet. Any orders, Sean, on uh, GOGL today? I just saw this pop up on volume. Now, uh, again, back to the upside, 95, trying to hold here as support. Nothing new as far as news uh, worthy stories, anyways, for Alphabet today. CNBC uh, reporting right at the end of the day yesterday that uh, they've asked, or the CEO asked, employees to test out barred more that was about it but uh, this showed its hand early this morning a little bit of relative weakness on that break of 96. Yeah, but it's also been showing its hand when it gets down to 94 too so it had one day breaking that level ended up holding and then got right back to uh, holding it and breaking out yesterday so i just i'm still gonna like the 94. you also have the fact that it's a 50 period moving average on the daily just beneath that at 93.80 so if we get down there i think that's a long and then on the on juxtapose that that's my word for the day uh with tw 270 on microsoft which i'm not even sure we get again like some of these levels to the upside that i liked when i sat down it's like 12 30 sorry 9 30 changed all and that we're gonna get oh my goodness in two open. and one we're already open right, that's let's crazy go. let's go uh, let's microsoft go. right now i'm i'm here on a short for microsoft thank you vod thanks uh, who was that vod yeah what's up um, all right, so here goes the market to the downside. We don't have anything filled yet. Uh, we're still waiting for some new moves to come through here. Let's check out what is Ford doing. Okay, so not even open yet. Palantir not, is open, and it's at 70 right now. So watching out for some of these levels right now. We just went up to 980 on PLTR. I'm waiting for 10 bucks. Roku's starting to come one. back down a little bit here. Roku's starting to come back down. So okay, Roku's pulling good. back. Yep. So watch Roku. It's got to 68. I'm looking at 67 and a half. I don't want to be too impatient with it. NVIDIA's trying to charge up but that's not in the pocket yet oh rivian was the other one uh had that crazy move off the open dip and then rip well it it kind of ripped and now is dipping back down i like that 20 dollars level not sure we're going to see it but it's about to test these lows do not want to get caught trading away from the price entries that we like however it feels like roku is going to get there and i am offering bed bath and beyond it just has to make its first pop before i get that one uh to the to the short side i'm only really shorting that stock tesla Nah, kind of not doing anything right now. Neither is NVIDIA. So going to be a little bit patient here. Got a lot of orders out. Let's see if we can actually catch some fills. Coinbase, that's nah, not even going up. I want 70s. Maybe the trade is just going to be shorting it where it lies. Yeah, I was, I mean, now it doesn't look like we're going anywhere mm. here except we're for down on uh, Microsoft. Yeah, there's going to be lots of names moving around here. I'm, 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 I'm looking at this level right here for 266 or so. I don't know if Microsoft's going to get back up there. I keep wanting to look over at Ford uh, to see if they are okay. So now they're open. Uh, touch 255 there on Ford. So, um, yeah, I, I want to find, was that a call for Brendan? No. Uh, okay, I want to find no, a level pissed. here for Ford, uh, 75. You're starting to break down lower now. I think maybe a break of 60 might be something there uh, for Ford, guys. Uh, I don't know. I, I want to be short this name. Shoot, Roku's it's just, already going. It's one of those things. Roku's going to the downside? No, no. It just, Upside. It, yeah, well, I've been, it already I want to go long Roku, so watch out for 72 long Roku. I'll be in that one uh, very, very soon. Look, what, when you guys, when we were, t when I was... You guys were talking about Roku. I was talking about buying this thing down here. Can't believe it's already at 72. Let's go, Roku. Let's go, Brendan. Uh, just be aware, guys. Bloomberg reporting that uh, China is seeking extra scrutiny over the Ford and CATL deal on the battery uh, swapping agreement. So, uh, again, China seeking extra scrutiny over that. Wow, wow. So I got one trade One trade on. Shopify came in there. But, look, if you're going to break to the upside consolidation, let's forget the dip buy for a second because the next trade in Roku is going to be, I think, off this 70 break. And uh, Shop did just come in. I'm trying to get this on the way back on Roku. I think we might get it. Uh, Shop just came in and picked this up off the opening range high. So I want to give this to about 60... 
46 75 to 46 80 area like short this consolidation and then see where we can go but i am now long roku off 70 short shopify off that 47 area is that brennan again uh, there's also this just coming through guys magna apparently looking to build a battery plant for ford's f-150 lightning so uh heads up going both ways here on ford all right, so there's just too much happening. That's uh, not confusing just, at all. There's just too much happening for Ford right now, so I'm going to stay away from that one. Uh, DraftKings looking to break right now. I kind of like this trade, maybe to the sell side right here. Um, if this market is going to be a red day, then DraftKings right now uh, is a sell through 1760, I think. Uh, we just bounced off of it and went upside a little bit there. I'm going to start the short here uh, on DraftKings and just see what we'll punch some 64s there. Now we're short 64. I want to be sort of, I mean, Let's give this up to 18 now, and if we have to, then we'll average in into it up to that 18 mark. But that's uh, sort of what I'm looking at right now with four, with DraftKings. Take the short right here. We do have a decent position now into that short up to 18, but we'll take some more shares uh, if it gets back up there. I'm going to offer some 1790s. Let's just be very, very specific in what we're doing here uh, today with this name. Yeah, and uh, one good, one bad. We'll get to the – so Roku, I did take some out in front of 71. It bounced a second time off 70, just reloaded it. But while that's trying to get to the upside, something else is trying to go up. Shopify heading to the upside. It looks like it's going to clear out this – well, maybe not. We'll see. It looks like it's going to clear out this 47, and we'll have to take the L. I knew I wanted to take multiple swings at this one, but it's catching a bid. Just try to remember, it is – it's not huge short interest, but it ain't zero either on Shopify. If it does not hold this 47, then i got to get out of Dodge. Uh, NVIDIA is about a dollar away from entry to the short side as well. So looking for the short there. Roku now holding pretty decently, but I'm always concerned with the one going against, not the one that's easy in the money. Yeah, we're, we're still, you guys know my Roku plan. I'm going to be waiting down here at 67 and change on Roku. Uh, right, that little oh, dip by area down there for Roku is where we want to get it. So wow, let's wait to see if it happens for us. Roku downside right now. That's where we're going to wait. Or we're waiting for 72. We did not want to really trade this one in the middle too much. So that was sort of the call here for me on Roku. Waiting for that top break. I know it's a little risky to do that for sure. Uh, here we go, man. One trade already, and it's a siren alert. It's DraftKings. We're going to the downside right now on DKNG. Wake up because here's the winning trade for you right now. There's DraftKings. One trade. Boom to the downside. You know, a headache be damned. Hopefully we can make a little bit of money here uh, today on this market. So let's go. Let's go here. Roku. We're going to go one for, or sorry, Roku. DraftKings are going to go one for one. I don't have any fills on anything else yet, man. Ford, Microsoft, Palantir, all this. We're still watching them all though. So over under, not the one I thought was going to go. We got Roku up to 71. Then it comes back and goes one to one the other direction. So the 70 break doesn't work out. Now I'm going to go back to the old dip buy idea. But we got our stop where we wanted it to make sure that we're not losing too much. That does mean Shopify is coming in for us uh, to the downside. But I'm going to hold on to that one. I got to get over to Rivian quickly here because uh, Rivian just broke the low. It looks like it could be headed down to that 20 level. Rivian giving it up. What's Tesla doing? Tesla is... Uh, Tesla's now breaking down that 210 level, so it looks like we might get a challenge of that 205 uh, pretty quickly here on Tesla. And Softy, ooh, Softy just took the low as well. It's getting a bit dicey for the big tech names. Google's nowhere near support, so my bid feels like it's pretty safe down at 94 as the market seems to be flushing here. Uh, yeah, Google's still looking not too bad, but I want that 94. You guys might want to fix those speakers up in here because that's, that's going to be popping a lot a today. Um, look, look, look what's happening right now to DraftKings. Oh, man. Like, uh, this, this is all that it takes, man. I, I, I say it all the time, and it's just one trade. You don't need more than that. And there it is right there. So, you know, you guys can go to the beach or whatever you want to do right now because that is all done. You won't be doing that around here. But there it is right now. I mean, for me... I don't need much more than this uh, here today, but hey, uh, we'll still be trading for nothing else is hitting. So there it is right there. We found DraftKings breaking that low there. We talked about wanting to get short today. That's exactly what we did um, on this name, and it's the only trade that's been fulfilling in for me. Microsoft, we don't have a trade on that one yet. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, yeah, still falling down. You know what? I'm just shifting, escaping. I'm canceling all my Microsoft orders. I'll deal with this when I need to. Uh, Palantir as well. Um, you know, again, another name. Ooh, wow, that's surprising. Okay, see, so this is what I mean. I got to be on these names a little bit better so I can see these plays. Um, that went up to 990. We were waiting at 999 uh, to get that trade. So I'll still, I'll still keep those in. Um, and then I know Neil's been talking about Roku, but I'm going to check back on it myself. We're not touching this one, like I said, until uh, it gets to 
to that 67. Well, here, here's my bids. 67.25. Uh, let's just wait for that one, yeah. And then 67.50, I just canceled that. We're going to wait a little lower here on Roku. Um, and then the other one, Shopify and Tesla. So Tesla is still waiting for a 280. To TLSA. See, this is the problem uh, with this I new having, software I, uh, right there. So uh, 209 is that where we're at right now. I'm waiting for 207 on this name, guys. Lower day Shopify just bounced a little bit here. So 45.50, it just bounced. It ends up holding that 47 level. So let's lock and load that one uh, as a good level for Shopify. That's going to mean rinse and repeat if it gets back there, but it's got to go uh, first. Wow, Microsoft, it's, Microsoft just falling. I don't know if we're going to catch that one. NVIDIA at least has a chance. I mean, it got up to 224, so sorry, 223 and a half. I like that 25 area, so maybe I can start working off of that if it comes back in. I do want to be kind of net short that name. The longs, really not seeing any of them come anywhere. And coin, short at where it lies, maybe. I know I like the short in Coinbase. I was trying to be patient with it. Sometimes, pa sometimes you're a little bit too patient, I find. Brendo? AMAM, -AM. small cap action for you. Uh, prostate cancer treatment data coming back positive for AMAM -AM in New York, guys. Straight upside so far. Oh, you know what else? Is Roblox straight. is moving. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say That's Roblox sick. straight moving right now. I'm just going to punch long into this name because, yeah, we wanted Roblox early, so we'll take it right now as some of these names are starting to come back up to the upside. So let's not get railroaded here um, on, on any of these names. But we're long Roblox right now, and, I mean, there it is again. Awesome. I mean, what else are we supposed to do? Roblox right now. We just punched into this 60-cent winner, like, just like that. Like, I don't know. I, I said I was going to get that... Um, Lottery ticket, but I did not. Uh, so there it is. Let's just clear this all out, man. DraftKings, great trade today. We don't have to talk about that too much anymore. But the new position right now in money, the money, money, right money, now for money, Roblox, money, man. Money, we're long money. at 44.80. We just cleared some out on the top side of the day right there. 45 and change. We did want to take Roblox today. So there it is, man. Now we have it. So pretty happy times right now for Roblox. Let's see how far it wants to go up, man. We're just wow right there again for you. For you, and for you. Couple bangs right there, right there. A dollar now in the money on Roblox? All right, we're just gonna go two for two and close this show down. Now we're not gonna close the show down. Uh, we're not here tomorrow. Now I feel bad taking the day off, but hey, you gotta take some time off anyways. Let's keep going to the upside. Roblox working, and we are out of two thirds of our DraftKings trade. Whoa, Airbnb just took out the high? I didn't think that one was gonna come. Uh, Air remember Airbnb yesterday? They were the other runner. Uh, so they just took out the high from yesterday's trade. Did have a stop order in there. Just didn't think it would have any chance of hitting. I like this one clearing out. If it gets to 40, I think that's the next level. You do have 137 for a bit of support down there. So I'm going to give this one a bit of a wide berth. Shop's not getting me in uh, to the short side. But I'll tell you this much. I'm done waiting too, too long for Coinbase. I'm going to take whatever the next pop is. It looks like it's making a bit of a pop now. And I think that 66 area is going to be it. Like, if VWAP doesn't matter this early in the day, but there was a consolidation around there. And I know I want to be looking for shorts. If I lose on a crypto name, it should be short Coinbase today. And if I lose somewhere else, well, maybe Silvergate does something. But uh, it should be Coinbase today in my estimation. We're going to take something in here, ah. 65 and a half, see what we can get uh, on Coinbase. Just got to catch that fill. That's, the, that, that's part of the problem, yeah. uh, trying to get some of these fills. So I actually it's just, spready. It's spready, yeah. It's spready. I just canceled some of my stuff here. So um, I don't know. Let's just wait to see where we're going to go in all this. Like, I just canceled pretty much all of my trades. Um, I'm going to wait for 47 on Shopify. I was waiting for 48. So we're going to see if 47 can come into play right now uh, for that name as it's going. Um, DraftKings has come back. Like we said, we just, I mean, we were getting it out on the way back up. So now we have a much lighter position uh, here. But we still will watch out for this. 1790 and a possible move uh, to the upside right now for this name. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sit here and watch it, see if DraftKings uh, gets up to 1790. We still have that stop out at 18 if that comes in. So we'll get that fill and then we'll have to get ourselves stopped out uh, of that if we have to get it stopped out. I don't know uh, if we are going to get stopped out on that or not, but that's what I'm looking at right now. It's uh, Roku. There's, I, I mean, I know I'm not in Roku. Are you still in that name? What is Roku even doing? It's still in that middle. Yeah, so that's probably why. It's still just hovering around. You're not doing a whole heck of a lot. All right, DraftKings, I need to get ready to get some more short here. You're back up to the 50 period. Yeah, I just I might have missed a reload there on uh, Shopify going for that entry into Coinbase. But Coinbase making another curl here. So let's try to focus on that one here. I want to add to it on the way down. That's generally speaking the, like, the way I like to get shorts. Yeah, but Shop just popped up to 46. 46 and a half. 
Oh, goodness, I should have caught that one. Uh, yeah, we're busy with Coinbase and obviously missed out on Shopify for that reload. But it's going to happen to you at the open. These are the ones I want to focus on. If Microsoft, Microsoft, NVIDIA, some of those other names have so far to go before they hit the prices I like that there's almost no need to be too fixated on them. Yeah, I maybe had a chance to get something on that rollover in Shopify. Do want to reload this one for the short trade. Now it's headed back into the low of the day, so yeah. it is what it is. Uh, I still have some on board, but I just missed an opportunity to get more in there, which that sucks because if the market goes down from here, this breaks the low, it's SSR. It's going to be tricky to catch trades. And even Coinbase is headed all, all, immediately down to the low of the day here. It's going to be tricky to add to some of these names when they're that depressed. But Coinbase is not short sell restricted. So we can catch this on the way down if we need to. Yeah, we actually missed adding to DraftKings, and we'll just take it out again, though. But awesome. it's still a good trade for me uh, right there on Coinbase, on uh, DraftKings. We just got some more out at 55 right there. So, you know, that's a pretty, pretty good level for us uh, right there, getting some, getting, getting, getting some out and then sort of regrouping from that spot, right? So that's what we're going to continue to watch out there for DraftKings. There's a nice little pop-up. So now let's take advantage of that and see. There we go. We'll get some 73s. Yeah, we'll get some 73s right now, short side uh, for that. So let's just wait to see here uh, what we're going to do but brendan has some what's up bud uh, earning strength guys big mover beginning of the week on a bank of america upgrade if you remember fastly starting to go again they actually reported this time so bank of america double upgrades to a buy into the earnings report and now we get a nice move uh, six percent so there you go fsly F -f -f fast that just remind me upstart for a quick second so i did get coinbase at the bottom and then it goes right back. it didn't go all the way back to the top this is the same three minute candle so trust me it didn't go uh, it didn't go all the way back up in a single retrace but it is coming back in and i want to get a reload we're going to rinse and repeat this if we get the chance just to check back in on microsoft like this market's trying to bounce and softy's not doing much man Ah, just come on. Go a little higher so we can test some real levels and get an idea. Yeah, that's, what, what, that's what I'm saying. I just want to know what this stock is going to do today. It's still in the bottom of the channel, and I, I don't want to give up on the notion that this can be a good short, but at some point it's either break the low and show me a trend or do something, man. Okay, so Airbnb starting to continue its move. I just want to zoom out so you guys can see on the daily. Double top break on the daily chart. There's nothing up here. So 140. I don't know, 150. Like, I don't really have any obvious levels that are sitting out there on the daily because it's filling in a pretty big gap. But I just took some out when it went the first, like, 70, 80 cents in the money. And Brendan. Uh, these AI tweets certainly don't have the impact they once did, guys. So Vuzi, the latest, V-U-Z-I, coming out with uh, something called Vuzix Ultralight, which is a platform to better facilitate visual chat GPT. Big volume spike, but nothing happening. Okay. V -v 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 uh, so this is rinsing and repeating right here. As Coinbase just continues to look weak, it's get in at the same 65 half, get out at 64 half, and maybe it'll just happen again. We Throws offer at 65 half, maybe he gets filled again, and it goes right back down. I have no idea. Shopify, on the other hand, um, this is the one that's SSR, so it's adding to this one's about to get tricky because I don't know where we're going to be able to add. Being down 15%, it's already testing 45 even. It's got a gigantic sort of uh, flat bottom break. Um, uh, term I coined. Uh, flat bottom break at 46. 45 is kind of the next level. And then you have monster gap to the downside. So we'll see what happens here with Shop. I want to hold on for Dodge. I'm looking for places to add. It doesn't seem to want to let me. Um, yeah, good, good, good call. Now, yeah, I really like that you coined that term. That was a really It's a great, great term, you know, and every now and then you got to come up with something new that you yourself came up with. Yeah. And a yeah. flat bottom break is maybe the most brilliant thing I ever have. Uh, what happened to taking 1260 long on Ford? No, no, I don't want long on long. Ford. Love Momo. No, 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 not this Whoa, guy. Well, huge level on Airbnb at 140. I think it takes I'm going long on Google here You've through 96. That. I think Google's been holding it out pretty good. So there we go. We are long now. Oops, we're not long. We did not get filled there. Uh, it just blasted up too far. Oh, we wanted that. There he goes. Okay, we just got it in. So, okay, good. Finally. Uh, it just blasted up there. Google just took out 96 and ran to 96.10. So, let's go. We're now long into Google here. Um, it's been, been holding up pretty good today. So, you know, this is a level that we're going to watch to see here on Google. We do have this trade. Let's see if we can uh, capitalize one more time on a long year uh, for the day. So, here we go. We're long Google at 05. Um, where's the out? 
I, I mean, it, it just dipped down on that rejection to 75. So I'm thinking like, that's probably a decent out there for Google. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in right now, uh, back down below 75 is gonna, I mean, now we'll probably get run because we're saying that, but that's okay. Uh, down here, 275, let's see where Google goes uh, right now. But a break higher, I just wanna see, this is a name that's been weak. So we, you know, this name probably should be short, but it's only down 1%, the market's, you know, was getting crushed, still down 1.2%. But let's see if Google wants to work to the high side. This is the stuff that I do, um, and let's just see if it continues to work. We did reshort, of course, um, DraftKings and got it out right there. So we reshorted 72, got it out at 62, and then 60 as you're starting to head a little bit higher here for uh, DraftKings. So my out's still 18 for that name. So I'm going to respect the fact that the more times I take this fill on Coinbase, the less likely each time I think it is to work exactly as I'm expecting it. So think of it this way, like the more times you bounce off a key level, the more people think there's an opportunity there, the less likely it is to work. So get more aggressive getting out and then have a tighter stop, which I'm having a tighter stop on this one. And before we go to Brendan, I'm being tongue in cheek. Sharif 100% came up with that flat bottom break term. You guys know that if you watch the show. I just like to make fun as if I did it because I know I didn't, Brendo. A ton of strength once again today, guys, in Airbnb. Two additional uh, positive moves for analysts on this one. Just took out that high uh, from late in the day yesterday. Airbnb already two and a half. Yeah, Airbnb did get through that massive order that was there at 140. So now it's just kind of cruising the ups. And now remember, the mistake I made on Airbnb was only looking for breakouts early, and then it did this nice little sort of trend thing. So now that it's made the double top break, what I'm looking for is that general trend to get made. When it makes its pullback, if it makes its pull, well, it's gonna make a pullback at some point. I just wanna look for that bounce and then start having it confirm a trend. The second it shows me um, a set of higher lows, I'm gonna jump on the first bid that I can and then ride the trend of the upside. I'm still gonna hold a core position. Hold core position long till wherever, maybe 150, I don't think so, probably 145, and then look for a dip by uh, trend to continue. Coinbase, uh, yeah. Last time, every time you get this fill, it was instantly right back at the low. Now it's having some trouble doing that. So I'm not saying it's dead yet, but I've been squoze on this stock before. So my tight stop here, we'll see if it works another time. And shop doesn't want to let you in uh, to the short. It just doesn't. Like it just made another break of the bottom. Let's see where this can bounce. If it's off 44 even, then I'll look for an entry off of uh, that 44 even bounce. 43, Pratt just said 43. All right, um, so yeah, that's good. We'll see, we'll see, maybe, maybe that, yeah. Oh, I, I know mean, why. All I these why. levels, all I these levels, it. guys. Um, could, could come into play here today, I see so. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, we're just going to continue to uh, watch out for DraftKings here is, is a name that I'm on, uh, obviously, as we talked about it a couple times here on what we were thinking for DraftKings. So let's just continue to sort of think that way, right? Um, where, where, where is it gonna go? I don't know, but we are now short again uh, here in DraftKings. We just took a 90 short, so hey, we got to get it out, right? I mean, that was a good trade, good short trade there for us on DraftKings. As there it is, yes, yeah, sir. Just give me a fill uh, somewhere. All right, we'll take a fill right here at 77, um, and then wait for a 75, and maybe we get that. Still watching out. The reason why I was a little bit there, I, I have to. I missed my uh, stop order because I told you I canceled everything. So uh, we'll wait. I'm just putting it in right now. 18 breaks. I'm just adding up the amount of shares that we have. Um, and then we will get out of DraftKings if 18 breaks. But that's, that's sort of the play right now on that name. So um, Google... I don't, honestly, man, I don't really know what's happening right now with Google. Um, I'm hoping that it goes back to the upside right here. It's starting to go. We can take, some, let's take something out maybe here at 10. I don't know. Um, I was waiting for a little bit higher than this. We're, there it goes. We've got a 12 right there on Google. And now we're starting to really fly, hopefully, uh, back up to the upside. So, yeah, all is well. Just DraftKings right now uh, starting to go back up to the upside a little bit. So, yeah, man, the market's pumping, Sharif, and your boy is all over that one. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, there we go, man. We have... Great trades today. I hope you guys have them in your pocket as well. Yes, sir. And we do get it this time. Again, my Coinbase just wants to give you this trade over and over. So it does get back to the bottom. However, this will be the, this will be the fourth time taking it. So I will not reload this trade unless it doesn't up down. It has to break 66, come back in and say, nope, we're not going higher. Reaffirm the level, maybe trap some people along. It's just getting a little bit too tight down there uh, to want to go for a fourth shot at it. We'll just hold on to what we have. Airbnb is now absolutely gonzo. And uh, Tesla, did you talk about Tesla just now? No. So Tesla 
There it is. It didn't get to 05, but it's now breaking back out well above that 210 level. Looks like it's starting to form a bit of a trend to the upside once again. That 215, remember 215 from the afternoon? It didn't actually break this unless you're talking aftermarket and pre-market. So for real, that level still exists as far as I'm concerned. If we dip to 210, I'll take a shot or we just look at that 215 break. Maybe not as good as if it had happened, had not happened pre-market, but I'll still take a shot. Would rather the dip buy though. All right. Um... I mean, I hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. I know we're enjoying putting it on for you. Uh, you can see right here, Roblox, a dollar now in the money. So uh, that's not a problem, as that was probably the best trade here for me today. Well, we, I mean, DraftKings, I think, is really good because we've had the reload on that. But this has been a nice move to the upside, right? So there it is. We took that on that break. We had Roblox today. It's the number one name here on the sticky note. So that was a good one to go long. Google now really starting to pump up. Uh, well, not really. It's just back up to 20. My best out on Google is 20s, is 19s. OK, Google. Yes, sir. Holy, money, there money, we go, money, man. Money, That's the explosion money, money, that we're money, talking money. about. Not only giving you the level there for Google, but taking it ourselves. Nice move to the upside. We just got a piece out at 30 there uh, on that, 25, sorry, as it makes its move up to 30. I'm offering 30. Hopefully we can get that right now. We are in this name looking for more here on Google, man. Good trade so far on that one. Uh, let's go over to Brett. Wow, now we're 30, uh, wow. 40 cents now, guys, money, in the money, money right money, now for money, Google. What's money, good, Brandon? Money, money, Twilio, money, another money. one, guys, showing all kinds of strength here. 15% on the day. Huge volume there as we went back through. 76 to the upside after Twilio with a decent quarter and strong guidance as well. Look, there were a few names, that obviously, that made some moves there. I'm putting a trailing stop on Shopify because even this looks like it wants to go back to the upside. So if I can take the buck 50 on it, 3% will have to do. There's always a place to re-enter. But Tesla just... You know what? It broke 215. I would have preferred the dip buy. I really would have preferred the dip buy. But I'm going to take a shot at the break. We'll see what happens here. If it pulls back too heavy, then I got to be able to get out and then look for the better trade, which I think is going to be at that 12. I still think 12 is going to be a little bit better. And then that 10 level. Consolidations, play those. Airbnb, if it pulls back, I'm definitely Ooh. going to love that one as well. And I did get out of Coinbase. So I said I'm not reloading Coinbase a fourth time. I didn't do it, I stopped out, said it looked a little bit too strong, so I'm gonna wait for the next level up. That might be 67 and a half, it might be 70. I'm not willing to say exactly where it's gonna be. I wanna look for the next curl off a resistance level already established. Oh man, um, we are, you know, again, like DraftKings, Tricky, tricky. Uh, almost stopped us out there, breaking through 18. So I gotta, now that I have some more shares out here as we go downside, hey, I'm gonna cancel that. Almost broke. Uh, we came back in and we got some more out there. So that was, that was a tough one right there uh, for me on Coinbase, on a DraftKings. Had to hold that one upside there. Tried to break. Our last fill's 98. Thanks, so bro. we're short at 96 right now on DraftKings. It looks like it wants to take out some highs uh, right now. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, I filled, finished the T there. Oh, thanks. Uh, right now. Thank you, Rob, uh, for the reload right there. Um, all right. So, yeah, if this breaks too much higher, I mean, we are, we are just waiting here just a little north of uh, 18. So, yeah, we can hold this one. We're doing pretty good. Look at Google, oh, though, man. Good. Still upside move. Look at Roblox, a dollar in the money. Um, yeah, we're just, I'm just trying to do what I'm doing, man. Just, like, chill out. Trade as much as we can, make the right plays, um, and uh, you know, hopefully watch some of this money uh, come come pouring in here. I got a couple expenses to cover this weekend. Uh, here we go, man. 88s downside. Let's just keep covering it. Again, I, I know we were 10 for 10 yesterday, but five, four, three for three here today. I'll take it, and uh, we'll just move on, man. And they've all been pretty easy trades for you guys. Shorting DraftKings has been pretty good. The Google trades never uh, has gone against us, but you know we're still 20 cents in the money. And then the Roblox trade, of course, never against us so hey man what a great day my headache is still raging right now hopefully it gets better soon so i'm going to take i'm going to take the l on tesla because i never like to hold things too far against me if the thesis is i didn't get the a plus setup so if it comes back into vwap no, that's some. the a plus setup or it shows me a consolidation level so i don't want to be back into that one too soon but coinbase did show me a little bit of what i was looking for here so we stopped out 66 you can still always get back in like you don't have to lose an extra dollar on the stock you can just find a re-entry point that makes some sense get a better price if the trend continues and i can continue to work the same trade as a day trader you have that opportunity to be able to do so now if you're if you only have 
a minimal number of trades in the day, then you're probably not reloading over and over again that level. Maybe just want to hold on to a piece. But I'm back into Coinbase once it's set up again. And I am looking at Shopify. I just want to get my orders out on Coinbase. That was easily the next name I was going to go to. Probably obvious that I was going to go to Shopify next because that was the one that we liked the best for the short. And I did get trailed out. I thought we'd get to VWAP for re-entry. Okay, so maybe we're not going to get to VWAP for the re-entry. I might have to look for it off of this consolidation, but I think there's going to be places to stair-step to the downside if that's what it wants to do. All right. Um, oh, so we did get some more out, obviously. Here we go. DraftKings going, is breaking the high. Excuse me, is breaking the high right now. So we're going to be out of this name very, very soon. Uh, but that's fine. Um, it sucks because we talked about it being at 18. But look at all these shorts and all these covers. So now we do hold a piece, of course. Uh, still or else I wouldn't be talking about it. Uh, but here it goes. It is going to break a little bit higher right now. We're going to get out of this one pretty soon uh, on a couple more pennies higher uh, than this on a breakout. Uh, Google, man, we got Google just went for a jog. Um, by the way, there it is. We are now. Ooh, I re. I got to get out of the DraftKings. I took too many shares long there uh, right now because it did just break. Our Maya was 05. So you're going to see. There we go. We're now at a DraftKings. But look at Google, man. We did, okay, I was just like, wow, I can't believe we got a 43. But yeah, we did uh, right there. 43 just came in uh, to Google. You just saw it hit 44 uh, right there. So Google, so far, huge trade to the upside, man. We're still positive on DraftKings, um, even though we're out. And there it is, man. Was that sort of the move down? We missed that play yesterday on something. Can't remember what it was where we had that. Was, was it Uber? We had a Wick top there, and I didn't get back short. It was like, ugh, ah, darn it. Uh, this might, this might be the one. No, we just got ticked out. See, that's me ticking me out here on. Whoa, yeah, see, there's my bid just filled. All right, so let's get out. That was where I was bidding 94s there uh, to get out of some of my trades. But, oh, man, DraftKings, it looks like we just got taken out on the high side on that one. So, oh, that sucks for DraftKings. Hopefully you didn't get stopped out, but I did. Uh, so there it is. But we're still up on the name. Still good, man. But, uh, yeah, that's a stop out right there on DraftKings. Ah, oh, that sucks. We got stopped out by literally no pennies. Like, our penny was the stop out there. Taking out 03. I mean, that's, that, that, that was our stop, and uh, it took us out. So we got out at 03, and that's that. Now it just tanks in. Oh, that sucks, guys. Sorry about that if you got out, but uh, that, that was a good call on the short. Just, um, you know, playing the game, didn't give it enough room. Next time we will. Yeah, that's sort of, it, but it happens, though. You have to have an out. Always have an out when you're trading. Um, 175 might be something on meta. I did like this for relative weakness. We'll see what happens here. Um, but I want to get something uh, to the short side that's a big tech name if the market on this rally starts to give it up. I know I'm in Airbnb, but I don't know if that – I mean, in Coinbase, I'm sorry. But I, don't, I don't count that as like a, a big tech market mover. I just took VWAP here because it might be establishing a higher low, and I didn't really get any more shares tight to 67. This is 67.25, the opening range high. I'm going off the opening range high here because pre-market levels – like, I like them if they big-time consolidations that coincide with something else. But if, it's, if they just stand there on their own, I don't know if I like them. This level was at the open dump off and some consolidations. So 67 a quarter I like better. I just rinsed and repeated on it. Well, not a rinse and repeat because this was not my original entry on, on Airbnb. But I am reloaded on Airbnb. Start to check up at 140. It looks like this one's starting to come back in with the market. But it's still above that breakout oh God, price. Guys. And as long as we're holding above the breakout, we're going to go for it on Airbnb. Yeah, this market's starting to come back in. And Tesla is now showing you. This is why I don't hold on to Tesla. Even if I like the long, not holding the breakout, $3 against me. I'm going to look for a re-entry at a better price. Take the paper cut and then get the price that you like better. Brendo? Hey guys, 10 o'clock uh, happening now brought to you by TD Direct Investing. Personalize your investing experience with advanced features like heat mapping, customizable charts and watch lists across a range of investment products and accounts. Open a TD Direct Investing account. Get up to 12 months commission-free trades. Offer ends March 1st, 2023. Conditions apply. Check out the QR code. Link also in the description. Shout out to TD. Still red here, right across the entire board this morning, although the market trying to find a bottom here, 1.2 for the S&P, currently 1.1 for the Dow, uh, the Russell, all of them. A full percent to the downside, one and a quarter for both the NASDAQ Composite and the 100. If you're with us pre-market, we talked about Roku, uh, we talked about Shopify, we talked about Tesla as well. Yeah, Electric reporting Model Y sold out for Q1 in uh, the U.S., so a nice look uh, on sales anyways for Tesla. Shopify, though, day lows just testing here right now, 44.75 off of that report uh, Tesla is still kind of chopping around within the range today, guys. Back over to you. 
Right. Yeah, Shopify is. A, I mean, like, I have I to can't get back into DraftKings, guys. Oh that stock God. is nonsense, man. Oh. Shopify is, t is. You can't get the short unless you just hold on to it. So I did grab it. Whoops, that's Shopify. I'm going to show you guys there. But I want to go to Airbnb. When you're talking about a name and you're typing, it's like the. I'm always just typing the name I'm talking about instead of what I wanted to go to. But we're starting to go right back into that support level. Not support, but that top on Airbnb. You can see if it doesn't really hold this, there's too much of a gap to be filled. Looking for that bounce and then trying to play the trend. It has to be here. If it can't hold 138, there's no chance it's any good. Well, I shouldn't say there's no chance it's any good. I'm not going to like it to be any good. Now Tesla's starting to come into that 212 level. This is where I want to see it find some support and bounce. Coinbase short's okay, but I'm more mad that I didn't get more shares of Shopify back into that short. Now I want to see a Tesla uh, for that initial bounce. It's starting to go up that 212 level. Let's see if I can pick it up. I just want somewhere where I know I'm wrong and then you can get a decent retracement. So it's a whipsaw action down here at the lows. You want to see if a strong stock relatively can hold some support. Uh, otherwise, it's a place for me to try working into some shorts. Shopify, I know, is the one. It's just a matter of finding my way back into this one. This is now, it's a total dog. We definitely liked it at the open adding multiple times, but I let myself get trailed out for, it seems like buck 50 should be good, but on this stock, it's not good enough. Oh, man. Uh... I'm still a little bit beside myself about DraftKings, but that's okay. Uh, we talked about getting Roku through 71, uh, sorry, sorry, through 72. Uh, so here it is, it's through 72 right now. Uh, let's just see. So we, we, we took the long there, breaking through 72. I'm only gonna give this one back to 71.50. We've kind of bounced off there a couple times. Um, so that's gonna be something that we're gonna look at there uh, for Roku. We're getting something out if we come back up here. Those highs are 30s, so it's not gonna be a monster trade, but let's just see if Roku wants to work here. The market's still flat since basically since open. Uh, we opened up, went down, nice move to the downside, but this is where we opened um, right now, down 1.4%. So hopefully we can hold some of these levels right now and some of the longs that I have will start to work out a little bit better uh, for us. Google, we got out when it broke back down below, right? So Google was about as easy, like I said, their nice move to the upside. Uh, Google is gonna be my number one, so well, Roblox is, but Roblox coming back in as well as a lot of these names right now starting to fade, right? So that's something that you have to watch out for here in this market. I feel like we're fading a lot here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was talking about a bearish day. So the fact that I'm long here, Roku, um, it's working out. We're Now we're in the money, but it keeps on stopping up here at 30. So let's go, Roku. See if we can get, I, maybe I just have to take a piece out right now. I know it sucks to take a 23 or something, but we're going to take that out um, and then see if we can can't keep on going back up to the upside. We do have a 33 there. Um, and then that's where that high was. And then our stop spot is 71.50. So we'll lose about 70 cents if we're 80 cents probably with slippage if we're wrong. So we need to get this name going. It just doesn't look like it wants to get past 72.30. So I feel like that's the right play for me to sit here and sort of wait for something to happen here on Roku. Yeah, I'm just looking at Upstart trying to get back to that 20 level. And this one uh, sold off pretty heavily. Not a great quarter. The earnings weren't good, but it's schools anyways. It, it did bounce off 19, well, close enough to 19 that I should like it. Uh, but this is 19.30. It bounced off 19.30. It's trying to hold that low. If it gets through this little consolidation, like breaking out above 20, that looks solid. I much prefer the dip, but maybe it's just a consolidation break. I just picked up Tesla. So, you know, get that little bounce off of, uh, like, VWAP action. And what am I doing not... You get the bounce, pay yourself out. Last I checked, the market was down today. So, and Tesla's actually red. So, I'm gonna pay myself out once it gets that kind of like one to one notion, and then we'll see how far it can go. I still think 15 might be a bit of an issue. Um, and a level, obviously the breakout didn't work there, so I'm gonna respect it. But that's one of the reasons why I got out of that original long saying, okay, well, I like this price better. I know it can run. Like, it can do two parabolic candles Very in a row, but if it doesn't work right away, it's not that great. So I'm going to take that, that win for now and then go back over to, you know what, Coinbase. Because Coinbase, every time it pops, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm not taking this one a second time. Because if it breaks trend here, coin could just turn into a long. You've got a bottom break on Coinbase. A uh, highly squeezable name, finding support off to yesterday in the afternoon's levels, and then suddenly 67.20 can become a jailbreak. So yes, I'm up because it was, it was just free money shorting it, and then a decent one here, but this is more setting up that it could be a jailbreak long, and the minimum I can do when I see that is to not reload the trade and get out if it breaks this level here, which it's about to do, 67 and a quarter. So accept that the shorts were good, but they might be done. Brendo? 
Uh, nice bounce for uh, Datadog here. D Dog back to the upside. It was a bit of a mess of a report for them. The uh, forecast as well, not good. Downside initially on that, but uh, here we go. Just took out 88 and that initial high for Datadog back to positive. Okay, I got to pull that stock up at some point. I mean, let's just. Money, 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 money. Finally, money, Roku, money. again, man, if you're not part of Sticky Note Nation, cool. Here it is right now, Roblox long, Roku long through 70 deuce. So there it is right there, man. Nice little win for us on Roku. Um, and uh, yeah, we just took some out. So we're not out of it all, so let's not uh, think about that too much. But there we go, let's take another piece out. And I said we got to let Roku cook. So there it is, it's cooking now uh, to the upside. So hopefully we can get another, another pull here uh, on Roku. And we're waiting at 72.90 uh, for our next out. So hey, man, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully you guys are long this name if you're short it. I still think you're fine. It's not like it's breaking out like crazy or anything like that uh, but it is a nice move back up to the upside so now we cannot lose on Roku and that's always nice it's nice when you're playing with house money so there it is right there a nice move uh, back up to the upside for Roku off of again a play that we had listed down here at 8 a.m. that 72 break we did try to buy dips in Roku we did uh, my orders are still there actually downside uh, but that those didn't fill out right so uh, no worries now for Roku but yeah it isn't looking uh, like it wants to retest some of those lows so so far, so good here for me with Roku, guys. Yeah, and uh, we did make a reversal play on Coin. I said I'd get out. It doesn't go right away, but I'm not willing to completely give up on it. I will take some out when it doesn't go right away, but I don't want to give up on completely on it. I see higher lows. I still see, I still see that kind of wick bottom notion, so there's more room to the upside. You know, I don't want to add if it breaks 67.50. I was just about to do that. I'll allow it to get to the next level before I add. I want confirmation of the trend working. Uh, Airbnb did just get up to the upside, and Tesla... Uh, Tesla still looking pretty solid. You know what? Let's back off this here. I'm going to look for places to add Tesla on the way to 215. If VWAP ends up being the bottom, I don't think there's a need to get out of 214 and a half. Let's see if this can't carry through all the way to 15 and see how far it goes. I don't own a Roku, so I'm answering no in that poll. 26% of the people in the, that have answered that poll own a Roku. That seems like a lot. That seems like a lot. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> That's not a reason to go. Dude, I'm already long, bro. Uh, I, I answered the last one because I have multiple products similar to Oroku. Um, here we go. Nice move to the upside. Let's go, guys. Um, hopefully, it just continues to go, man. Roku again. Let's go. There it is. Like, like I said, all the trades that I've put on today have been very, very structured and hopefully explained uh, to everybody why we like them, uh, so on and so forth. So, you know, let's just continue, um, you know, to, to, to watch Roku. We just got some out at 72.90. That's 80 cents in the money now, and it's just continuing to climb. So now Roku's my number one stock on the day. We don't have any red names, man. DraftKings did just retrace back up. So that was a little note there uh, that I saw someone point out to me. Uh, they're like, oh, DraftKings may be possible. Reload again for DraftKings. Yeah, I mean, it's possible uh, if you wanted to get that. Oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong stock. Uh, there it is, rates. Is that DraftKings? Yeah, 1809. I, I don't know, man. That seems, honestly, it's, it's a little bit high up here for Roku right now. Or for, sorry, for um, DraftKings. And, you know, it's, it's, maybe we're just wrong. They do report tonight. So that could be something that we have to watch out for as well uh, with DraftKings. So let's just be very, very careful with all those plays. But uh, it's starting to break up higher. So I'm going to leave it alone now uh, on DraftKings. But, you know, I'm just sort of over the moon here because I'm watching this trade just go crazy for me right now. And that is Roku. Like, we're now $1.30 in the money on this name. And it is just continuing to go. So I'm just going to stay here um, with this name and just continue to watch it because it's been a real banger here today for me. Uh, and there it goes. Again, another name that's off the Sticky Note. If you're wondering what that is, it's Sticky Note Nation. It's completely free to become a member. You just have to follow me on Twitter um, as I post these trade ideas every single day. I mean, today we had... Palantir, we haven't even looked at Palantir, short at 10. I mean, it's, let's go check out what Palantir is doing. I haven't even looked at it. So uh, we had written down there that short. There it is right there, 1007 the high. You took that, it went back down to 980. Maybe this is something right here. I feel like I want to take some out on Roku though, now that we're above 73. Yeah, I mean, like you d definitely. We, you got to have risk reward in the trade, right? That's why you, you take profit out on the way to the upside. I'm out of Airbnb. I'm obviously going to look for places to join back in the trade. It was no trouble doing so yesterday, but it's got a double top with the market starting to slow down. That does set up a bit of a dip buy for me. Uh, coin, I was saying I wasn't going to add if it broke the high. 
No, I, I am gonna I am gonna add if it breaks this high. This is 67, uh, about 30 or so, just a little bit above that. So if it reclaims that high, I think it's an add. There's just too much room to that 70 level to not take a shot at it. And Tesla, that's the other one we have to the long side. That's working, but I want to go to Shopify. And Tesla seems fine till it gets to 215 to make a decision. But Shopify is the last thing I think that's still setting up for a potential short. The trend is still pretty solid. If it turns here, 45 and a half, that gives me an obvious out. At this point, it was about the easiest short, so let's see if we can't continue to make this one work. But I have not re-entered since the open. All right, I'm honestly, you know, I'll, I'll be here for everybody, but I'm just sitting here watching Roku. Like, it's just, it's going to the upside. We still are looking at 75 here for that level uh, on that. We had a monster trade yesterday on Roblox. We're doing it again here today on Roku um, as it's just continuing to go long in a market that is now finally starting to bust out as well so we got to find some more trades man microsoft i've been looking i don't need to but microsoft is looking uh again for a nice little upside move here this has been one of the weaker names so you know maybe this, there's something here that we can look at uh for microsoft bouncing off 266 so i'll try i'll try that one uh there for msft wow what's what's google doing here um we got out of google when it broke and now it's back up to its high so again another name that i feel like we we're right on uh but we just you know, we didn't hold it long enough. So there we go again, another name that's, you know, that, that we didn't hold. So what we're gonna do is just, if you like the short, I'm just gonna continue to watch Roku. I have enough money on this already. That's been fantastic. I'm thinking about a 266 short on Microsoft. What do you guys think in the chat uh, about that one? Possibly a 266 short right here on Microsoft. Uh, but the market's trying to get upside, so I don't know. Uh, but wow, Roku now $1.50 in the money here uh, on Roku. Let's take another piece out, guys. Oh, you caught me sipping my water there for a second. Uh, no, sorry, I just got. Uh, I just took. I just took out um, Shopify very quickly there because if it's gonna make a move to the high, then I like that 47 level. So I'm not gonna be stubborn. I always have chances to get back in here. I like to take paper cuts when we get a chance to go out. I never want to give away. When you get that big move off the open, you get like three, four, five percent type move. You might not get it again. And fighting to make sure, make sure you recreate the magic from before is not the way to go because the big trades will set up at the big levels. Tesla did this at 215 just now. Market, this is what the market's doing. Still climbing pretty steadily to the upside. And Tesla just did a crazy wick here when it got to 215. Slammed back into 213.5. So what I want to do is I might even just bank it here at the 214 level and see if the next, if the next move is down, then I want reload. You know, take the buck and a half. That's a scalp trade in there. We already took the buck, then the buck and a half. Now we'll scalp trade this off of that 215 and VWAP. Otherwise, you're holding a higher low and then setting up the breakout trade again, which I don't mind going back to that well. So I'm going to go back over to Tesla when it does set up a little bit better. And yeah, shop fives are going to the upside. It was Upstart that I was just also talking about there. Uh, Upstart did make that kind of a break. Didn't quite get through resistance. Now holding up again. This one feels like it's doing that similar thing, like higher lows, wants to go above. That at 20 levels where I want to catch the dip by uh, on upstart. So I haven't traded this one yet. It was good yesterday. Let's see if we can recreate some of that magic. It was a long despite a bad report. It's a squeeze name, 40% short interest. So I want to go long in front of that 20 level. And let's see if coin can now hold VWAP. So I want to get the fill here. But coin, I think it's now making this move where reestablish that support and then suddenly it's a move into 70. I'm still shorting 70 if it gets there, but I think if it holds 66, it's long into that 70 level. That's what I want to start working with on Coinbase. The shorts were good early. It feels more like a long till 70. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, Coinbase, I mean, we, we, we saw Bitcoin going a little bit there too. Um, all right. So we only now have probably about 15% left of, of this trade. You guys heard me say, oh, we're at 73.50. Better get some out. So there it is there. We got one out at 43, another out there at 35-ish. Um, we'll still hold it. We'll still hold it. But we are getting lighter, obviously, on this position as it uh, continues uh, to move. So, yeah, you know what? Maybe it's just time to put on. I mean, we should have. A new version. Okay, uh, I just keep on uh, like missing trades here. And uh, I asked everybody what you guys thought of Microsoft short. I should just put it on myself. Uh, look where this short is right now. Uh, we just talked about it up here at 265.60. It's now at 264.50. That's a dollar right there. We should have been spinning that money thing again and again on that, and we did it. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's my bad on that. I should have just taken it. It's not my bad. I'm glad I mentioned it to you guys. I hope that someone out there took it because I didn't. But, but that's a great move to the downside right there for Microsoft. 
Oh, we miss it, guys. But uh, should, should have been in that one, and we weren't. So uh, that, that kind of sucks for me. But uh, hopefully you guys have it. Robux falls back in. There goes Roku again, back up to the upside. Let's just still hold on to it. I'm going to look at that Microsoft next time we get back up there. So that 175 on Meta is still a bit of a thing here. I'm going to go for it. If we get a shot, I'm going to go both ways in this direction. Uh, if we get a fade, I like the fact that it did an over-under. I kind of went for the Tesla dip buy instead of the Meta dip buy off, uh, off VWAP there, but I don't mind going back over to Meta as well. If it's going to hold this range, that's a good dollar to dollar half that you can play with uh, on Meta. So I'm going to get my offer. I like it in both directions, but remember, if it takes out this high, I'm not holding through it. Have it out, always have a stop. Like I said, Coinbase, it has to hold VWAP in 66. That's what it's about. Like, what's the thought process? What are we looking for here? And then hopefully you guys enjoy it. And take a second to... Take this opportunity to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You won't be disappointed. There's lots of bangs. <laughs> there's been a few bangs in here today. A I feel few. like there's been a few bangs. And I think that's, been, that's all right. That's what you look for. Sometimes the market gives you doubles and singles, singles and doubles. It's the wrong way around. And other times it just gives you home run opportunities. When these low flow, not low flow, when these high shortable names have their earnings, you get the home run opportunities. And that's what we're looking for today. Because when you get things like Shop and Upstart and Roblox and Roku's moving, you get the bigger opportunity there. This is why I got out. Because if this comes back, Shopify, I mean, if this comes back to the upside, that bigger level, I think, is that opening range of 47. So I'm not going to hold it all the way against me. I'm going to wait till it gets to my price. Then I'm going to re-enter that trade. The market's going up. Where's my meta, Phil? Really? No matter for you. No, but seriously, like I offered 88 and it just went to like 86 or 85 yeah. and then turned. I'm probably going to get, this market's strong. I'm probably going to get this fill anyway. It's just kind of weird. I put it in, it went like two cents away and then I didn't get it. All right, we, um, what, we just missed a fill sure. there at, four, uh, at 50, 46. Oh Let's man, see. damn. Um, okay, uh, damn, Daniel. Is that right, Prad? It is Daniel. Okay, thanks, Brad, for that one. Damn, Daniel. Uh, okay, so uh, we just shorted Google, but it keeps on bouncing off of our outs here. Uh, so hopefully we can come back down in a little bit here. Google with a monster run, for sure, uh, back up to the upside. I'm going to get out if it takes 60, guys. Uh, but it just keeps on bouncing. Like, I'm sitting here 47s just to take a little bit out because I feel like we're weak on this name uh, there. We've got a little bit at 47 there. Uh, that's all I wanted to get out anyways with 5%. I don't know why I'm doing – like, why am I getting out of 5%? I, 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 sometimes I don't understand that. Uh, but we're going to wait to see about this 30 level that's really what i'm concerned with here uh, on google back down and if we flush back that's sort of the key for me a downside there on a flush we just got a 46 fill there uh, again it's just it's strong today so i'm going counter trend uh on this name so we want to take profits when profits are in and uh right now they're in so um we're going to take it a little bit here we just took some out at 46 look we're short at 51 like taking some out at 46 not great but we're just scalping here all we're sort of doing is putting that icing right now on the cake of what's been a very very successful day uh, for me here again so um, you know we had a rough day on what was it Monday Tuesday one of those days and we just came back with crazy fury and vengeance yesterday uh, making it all back and then now today we're going to be close to the high spot we've been at all day here Google pending uh, but here hopefully we can come back down we just got some more out there at 45 um, so I, the next bit is for me is it was 30, but I'm going to put a bit at 40 because it seems like uh, it is holding out a little bit good here uh, on this, up, a little well on this upside. So, so far so good here, but I'm going to make sure I'm lowering my default now uh, in case this does rip back up. We're going to get out at 60 if it breaks. Seems like it's a good idea that we took a little bit of profit. Roku still dancing around the highs, man, uh, dancing, on the day. So let's hold dancing. this one. If the market goes, we will get stopped out on Google, but Roku will continue to run higher. So there it is. We are now stopped on, whoop, there it is. I'll show you back to Google. We are now stopped out on Google right there, a break of 60. Google super strong. Can't believe we had that right really? there at 96. But okay, uh, anything you want to talk about? So I did get to add to Coinbase when it finally broke the range. If it gets to 68, I'll take my first out in front of 68. Uh, but when you got stopped out of Google, the first thing on my mind was, ooh, Meta could be in some trouble. Uh, so we'll see. I have a stop to reverse on Meta here. We'll see if it happens. Uh, but Google going up is probably going to lift some things as the market's strong. Brendo, small cap recap. I almost said happening now. <laughs> Hey guys, you got 1020 already. A busy morning. A number of little ones moving around as well. Let's jump right into AMAM. A uh, few people mentioning this one up 55% uh, on the day so far on this note this morning. Uh, prostate cancer drug trial coming back 
with uh, positive uh, efficacy, specifically, uh, data that uh, seemed to uh, move that thing back to the upside. But we are fading off a little bit. Uh, this one as well, INZY, up on this one, mid-stage generic disorder drug trial that came back better than expected. Uh, nice looking daily chart trending to the upside, but this thing's trying to hold three bucks right now. For INZY, this one, a uh, little one CYH reporting earnings, uh, just gapped right through six bucks, was uh, community health better than expected earnings. A few positive analyst moves on this as well. Again, another daily chart that looks uh, better than expected. Not a lot of volume behind this move yet, but one to maybe have a look at later in the day. Uh, real, real. Just announcing uh, 230 job cuts, guys, for Real Real. Pack over to you. It got to fill anyway. Are you for Real Real or okay. the really, really real, yo? The real, real. There's I don't know if the stuff they're selling is real, real. Aren't, aren't copy, they? Copy, uh... copy, 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 copy. Uh, you don't know that song? What goes nah, around comes really. back around again. Uh, I probably do know. Now it, but... I'm being really old school because you guys have no idea who Grand Pooba is. That's sorry, dudes. Anyways, Congratulations. Uh, I hit that key whenever. I always hit that key for like other things, but at least this time I'm actually in a crypto name when we hit that one. Because it's little Bitcoins in there. We should have something else for that as well. Like, yeah, where's my mic? So I, look, I said when that break didn't go right away on Coinbase, I was like, no, you got to get out of the bulk of it because it needs to show me that it's holding 66 and then we can add if it retakes the high. So it did get to 68 there. First time I must have accidentally canceled because the first time I went up there, it got there. And then I didn't get out, didn't get anything out. Now I did take some out. I'm looking for a move into the 70 level. This can play out a lot of ways. Like you can stair step to the upside. It could squeeze through one of these and just do one candle. But I'm out in front of 70 because I'm still shorting 70 when Coinbase gets there. Um, I kind of missed the bid on Tesla. It's, it's weird. Like it gets down to VWAP and there's not a lot of chance to get filled. Sometimes you get picked up. Other times it just finds liquidity like a dollar away from your support level, which I don't love. But now it's right back into that 15. I am still looking to join this trend to the downside. I just think you have to be more aggressive in terms of where you price it off of VWAP here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, see if we can't get back in. Meta, you know what? I said I was a little bit concerned when Sean got stopped out of, uh, of Alphabet there, and the market is strong. And of course, the second you bid, it does that. So this time I'm just going to cross the spread. See? Cancel. So you bid, it goes up five cents. Cancel it, it comes down five cents, then you punch some out. That's how it works. And then this one's trending to the upside. So I still like the reversal on a breakout of this level here, but I want to take something out because the market's looking stronger than I anticipated and no need to be stubborn. It could still get to VWAP where I'm getting all out of this scalp trade. I just like Meta's relative weakness. This is the reason I like Meta only short because it's been rejecting 181 and then it had a lower high yesterday. It was relatively weak to at least 178. So I want to give it a chance to hold 175. So if the market rolls over, I got something that I know I like short because I can't seem to get back into Shopify. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's kind of good, the good logic there. Um, look, 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 you want to look for the, the, the trades that you want, right? You don't need to make trades. If, if they're there, make yeah. them. If they're not, don't. I mean, it's, it's really that simple uh, as far as trading is concerned. We just took, I mean, I'm going to do the exa example right here for you guys on Roblox. Like, we're doing the same thing here, right, where we took some trades uh, on Roblox, and then if it breaks back below, so we just got out at 71. We just averaged back in here. So that was a 58 take. So if it breaks 40, we're out, right? So that's kind of just like what I'm talking about with some of these trades and how you want to, like, look at them as you know risk to reward you do have high flyers right now that are in this market and like does roblox have a chance to get right back up here yeah it does so to me it's well worth now the risk and reward on this name just for where it is right and so let's wait to see if it breaks back down below you have the 200 period right here could break back down below and if it does then we can get out if not we'll celebrate uh some victories back upside so there it is right now like there's 10 cents that ah, keeps on stopping though hopefully we can break I i'm offering 75 to see if we can get a piece because that's basically been the high right now the high is 70 on this move so i'm actually if i'm going to sit here and see 70 then i'm just going to offer 70 um get rid of my 75 hopefully it comes up ticks there again and we'll be able to do a little something on roblox uh it needs to, i mean oh let's get out get out get out get out there it is okay yes so we got some out at 70 there we're only long at 58 but we've sat here watched it reject off 70 now like 
I don't know, six times. Like in the last six minutes, the high has been 70 every time. So now we don't have too many shares left, but see, now it's coming pulling back in again. So I don't, man, maybe this thing doesn't break 70. Um, and then we just have to get out at 69 if we, if we have to. So I'm going to put an offer there at 69 again, uh, see if we can get it. But yeah, it looks like this Roblox trade possibly is going to be a loser as it doesn't, this last trade, as it doesn't want to break higher. So part of the 15? trade is not just your ability to read the level two, I'm sorry, to read charting, but also the, there it is, the ability, see, the ability to read the level two. And that one right there, the fact that it wasn't breaking 70, at least, so this is the thing, still a positive trade on Roblox, and the reason why, so we're out right now, I should have been in the money now for 50 cents, right? Because we saw that reject at 70 there over and over again, which is why we got, the first time I got it out because it's 70, that last time we got it out because we were sitting there watching it reject, right? So that's pretty pretty key there. I hope some of you saw a little bit of that. And that's sort of, you know, the lessons that, you know, we try to teach around here for you uh, as we go. But I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting for something to happen on a lot of these names. Yeah, it's like what happened, that, that big flush at the open or into the open on the number, it kind of, it threw a lot of the shorts out of the window because you were so far away from the prices you liked, like Nvidia was an example. But thank you in the chat for reminding me about NVIDIA. It's like, okay, so it didn't go exactly how you wanted it to get you a trade off the open. However, this looks a lot like what Meta's doing right now. And it kind of like gives you an opening range, down 2%, Meta's down one and a half. I know it's a little different, but similar. Uh, and then you see this, like it's got this resistance up to like 223 half. So it, look, it can go both directions. You can break out from here and then suddenly we're staring that 228 I like for the short it's some, in our faces, but until it breaks it, it's still resistance. And if the futures check up here, when I say check up, I mean like slow down and turn around. It wouldn't surprise me if this was the area that it happened. That's where we had some chop yesterday. So if we do that, then anything that's at resistance sets up for me. That, that's meta right now, which I'm already in, and it's going to be NVIDIA off that 223 and a half. I just need to get a decent enough fill. If I roll into a long in one of the chip names, I don't know if I want it to be NVIDIA. I feel like that one's overcooked. And what, weirdly enough, Intel was really strong in the afternoon. I'm just going to give it props. Really strong in the afternoon. Ended up breaking out really late and I just, in the aftermarket or in, in the last 15 minutes. And then it did this down bottom or bottom break, higher low as well. Intel gets back above 28.70. This just, it looks like a long to me. It looks like a long above here. Like what it did right at the end of the day. If this market wants to charge back green, then I think Intel can get easily to 29 and there's room to the upside. Anyways, we'll cross that bridge if NVIDIA... If I get stopped out in NVIDIA, I might not be looking at Intel, which is literally the opposite of what I always say. Like me going Intel long, potentially, and NVIDIA short. Yeah, we, um, we just made a little bit more here. We'll go cash cow for Google because uh, it's been that today, and there it is right now again. Uh, we just bought 42s. It's at 66s. You can see the position uh, hopefully on the bottom right there. So we're into Google. Right now is a 25 cent win. Roku is a dollar 40 now uh, in the money. And uh, there goes Google again, right back up to its high. So I, I feel like we could get another piece out here, like 66 or so, but maybe, maybe it's sort of topping out right here. Uh, let's get a 63. Uh, if we can. Oh, there we go. We'll get a 62. I offered 62 there. Sure, just punch. Like when 63 was there, I could have punched 62. There it is. So now we're out of that one um, uh, on that little move up there. So we'll just take another 20 cents there on Google. So again, buy the dip on a strong name, right? Google's strong today. 0.3 versus 0.9. Now we can hold to see if it takes out the rest. So, so far so good here on Google. Um, let's go over to Amazon. I see what you guys are saying there about Amazon uh, right now at 100. So we can have a quick look at that uh, right now as well. A-M-Z-N uh, right now. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, because we have those uh, wicks there. So it won't be great on any of these charts. I'll have to clean those up afterwards. Uh, but, yeah, Amazon right here at 100. That looks pretty decent as well uh, back right now. But the market's pretty strong. I just don't know if I want to short anything at these levels. So um, that's sort of where I go with Amazon right now at that level. Um, Roku might have to just get an out. I'm, I'm having the same feels here, again, sort of like we did on Roblox, where it's just not going past his 73.50. Um, we're, you know, we're long at 72. You can see that. So part of me says, let's just take the money and not even worry about it and not uh, get too crazy with it. So, um, yeah, let's take another piece out here on Roku, and that way we put some more money in our pockets. Brendan with Crypto. <laughs>
Hey guys, yeah, still a nice positive day for crypto markets right across the entire board. Anyone looking at natural gas before we get into that, uh, just got the weekly inventory numbers there for natural gas storage. It was a smaller than expected build. So 100 BCF versus 109 BCF. So a uh, bit of a move there on Nat Gas. Saw that headline. Looks like Binance has become the next target of the SEC after we got uh, decisions on Kraken and Coinbase and Paxo, uh, Paxos uh, recently on the staking side of things. Binance said to be under investigation for similar. Yeah, crypto doesn't care. Uh, just took out that high, uh, day highs. This is a daily chart, but uh, just took out day highs and then came back in a little bit once again. So uh, we're above that. Uh, if you go back to the end of January, that was 24,000 we touched out uh, at. But if you zoom out a little bit, this is August of last year. Uh, 25,000, a bit of a problem right now for Bitcoin. Ethereum struggling just at this high right now, 1,700, but still positive on the day. Nicely, 6.8 in the 24-hour period, 7.75, 24.5 right now for Bitcoin. Uh, it's Matic down here leading the way, 11%, 142 once again for Matic, guys. But nicely green, top to bottom. They are, and the Coinbase long is actually going back and starting to work again. So I'm stair-stepping that one. However, you know, start with start with what troubles me first, right? And then worry about what's in the money after because it's in the money. And then this level breaks on NVIDIA. It's obviously a pretty big resistance level. You see it at the open. If we get above 223.70, like break that uh, three-quarter mark, I'm going to be out of dodge there. I did get one quick little scalp, but that was actually a bit of a keystroke. And I just re-entered. There, it just broke the three quarters. So I'm out, Google. not even thinking about it. And I like Intel uh, to the long side, breaking that 28.70. We're going long Google here. We just absolutely destroyed it right there on the reload again. We just got 40s out 70s. So it's like... I don't know um, if, if anyone's you know trading with me there or not, but I just got it out right there at 77. That's another 30 cent win in four minutes. So um, we are definitely uh, you know doing some damage here today on these markets. So I hope you're enjoying the show for sure. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, um, keep this show going, guys. You know we don't charge anything, so we, we you know we need to get YouTube uh, to kick it into full gear. So here we go. We're gonna take a long breaking right now. The higher the day breaks, we're long now. Google, uh, unfortunately, we just got an 83, but that's okay. Uh, we are now long 83, and I'm just going to hold this back to 50. If Google breaks back down here through 50, then we're going to get out. But it's a new position for me. Uh, I better put in my stop in case it happens right away. I don't think it would happen right away on this day. But, um, yeah, we're going to get we'll get out a little bit. I mean, now that I'm noticing, maybe 60s, sort of where we, stu we stumbled upon, uh, maybe a 60 fill or something like that uh, on Google in case there's any problems. But here it is, starting to go back up to the upside. I've got to get some take profits out, and then I'll maybe worry about the stop order uh, after that as we're a little far away from it. So. So, um, yeah, so far so good. Let's see if we want to still climb to the upside here on Google. Yeah, and look, I, I was saying go to the, the one that stopped out first and go to Coinbase. I've been kind of doing this, like scalp trades, maintain long position on coin. Is it holding a general trend line? You can kind of see that here. So I like the re-entries as we're kind of rubbing off that trend. And then once it goes toward the next high, try to get some out. However, the market's at a pretty key level here. So I'm going to back off on adding another time. It would be like the third time I added to the long in the last like 15 minutes. I want to see some confirmation in the market. And I want to go back to Tesla for a quick second because I've been trying to get VWAP similarly, ride the trend. But it does not seem to want to pull all the way back into VWAP 213. So Tesla's been, been a decent one off this little bit of a trend line. But now it's holding a higher low and just showing all signs of a breakout. And uh, the breakout is incoming on Intel. It'll be the first time I take a breakout trade in a long time on Intel if it holds. Meta, however, yeah, you know, the market continues to go higher and Meta doesn't seem to want to break this 175. So maybe it's better than I thought. And I'll jump back. If I can get 174, like really tight to 175, like last time, I'll look for the reload there. But the market's trending to the upside, which means I don't want to compromise on my price of a short. I don't want to short early oh, shit. on a strong market. I want to get a good short so I can have the right risk reward. Because if it loses and I have my stop out, it has to work. You don't want to have a situation where like, okay, like you win on five, four or five trades, but then you lose so much on the one that loses that it just wipes it all out. And that means risk to reward. So I need to get the short where I want it. There's Coinbase finally breaking 68 there. So next level up happening on coin, 69 will be the next out. And then we'll look to ride that trend. This was a case where sometimes you have to, if you want to power up, you got to be able to flip the script. It was a great short early, and I was like, yeah, it's turning into a long. I guess got to start working the long because it's trending to the upside. Yeah, it's going down in the pre-market. That's great. But higher lows, got to recognize those, and that's a trend to the upside. So we flipped it on coin.
Good job flipping. We like that. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be too biased one way, right? I mean, um, if, if the market changes, that's why the sticky note's a funny thing uh, to put out because uh, it, it can be difficult to try to pick directions, especially that early in the market day uh, right now. And it looks like right here, we probably got a little too excited about Google, it looks like, uh, right now because, well, it's coming back a little bit here. Let's say, I'm, I'm trying to take it, there we go. I just tried to take a piece out. It just What's dipped that? down. I just, this is one of those things again where I still think high, man. I mean, I don't have, uh, uh, my offers are still at 88 um, and then 94. So, you know, but we, we, we took an 83 long. We just got some out at 77 there. I, I don't want to be wrong too, too badly on this play here because we haven't had that many plays today. And um, let's just wait to see where it goes. We did get out of some. Here we go. Hopefully back up to the upside right now. We'll deal with it afterwards. Uh, we did get out of some Roku there. It's still at the high of the day. This is my number one stock, which is why I sort of keep going back to it with you guys here uh, on that. So um, Roku, a nice trade. So Palantir, I think we can short this one uh, at some of these levels here. So um, that's going to be something that's pretty interesting. Palantir up to 10.10. I don't know, Neil. You, I, mean, it, it, it I was, think it needs to over under that 10.10. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't I, know. Yesterday's move was 10.20. I, like, I don't here's, know. You know what? Generally speaking, the way I, I, I would treat those types of levels is you get to like a 10.20, and you have that you have that top up there. So either you're shorting it on an up down, like at the when I say up down, I kind of mean like breaking the high and then it reclaims it. So either you're shorting that, like give it to 25, comes back in, short like 17, 18 with a 25 stop, or the other way I'd like to play it is back beneath 10. Like show me the weakness, like double top, fail 10 and then get back, fail 10 again and then short it. So I, I'd want to see the weakness first and then join that as opposed to fighting the stock. Because when, when it does that stair step or linear move up, Palantir just slowly grinds you into submission when it goes to the upside like this. So I want to see confirmation of the short before I would jump into it. Sometimes the stock is just too strong. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the thing. And that, that's why you don't have to short it. Uh, there, but that, that would have been I something. I do have to short coin at the, 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 long, the long was a good one. I don't. Uh, right there. Uh, again, there we go now. 74 money, right now money, um, money, for money, Roku money, and still busting. Money, money, and again, money, 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 now money, Google pumping money, uh, money, nicely money, to the upside money. again for us. So now we're in the 90s here hey, uh, on, for Google as we continue to go here. The NOS boss has arrived. He's in he the is house. in the building right now, uh, live from the East Coast. So Michael Noss now in the building one more time. And you know what else is in the building? It's a little bit of money time right now as Google continues to go back up to the upside. Here we go, man. Nice move to the upside here for Google. Still running. Um, we just got some 94s out. So, yeah, are we excited? Yes, we are. Um, I cannot believe I get paid to be here and I get to trade. This is an absolutely dream come true for me. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying everything right now. Hey, that's why we created the show, actually. Uh, make your own dream dreams come true, right? So uh, here we go. Nice upside move uh, once again. It's why I've been trading for 22 years. Um, but okay, nice moves uh, happening all over the place. Google was a great trade. Uh, breaking out right now is Roku. Man, we're on one. But hey, you guys that say Sean every day says he's on one. Okay, well, maybe that's because of chicken dinner winner around here. Uh, there. Okay, so now Google's starting to go back up. Watch out for 97. Let's take a 96 out uh, right now, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Not only, not, not only am I not on one every day, we did have one red day this month, and I told you all about that day. You were sitting here watching me trade it when we shorted Amazon and Meta. Um, into uh, an up move from CPI. So uh, let's just keep the dancing going here. I'm watching my eyes over here as I speak and listen to, uh, you know, NOS boss and everybody here. Um, Google having a hard time. So that's what I was watching. Google having a hard time upside right now. I was waiting at 96, never getting filled. So yeah, maybe, maybe we got to take a little bit more out here. There we go. We just took a 91. So all right. Uh, now let's see if we go back up. So I just took a 91 off of an 80 long. Let's hope we get a little more on this. So I just, uh, you'll see me again out of uh, Coinbase here. And I, I got to stop hitting the Gronk spike because football season's over. Uh, but we got out in front of 69 on Coinbase. I said that was the next leg. If it makes another pop to the upside and goes straight to the 70 area, I am going to look for a short up top there and then just look for a bit of a retracement. I do still have that trend that we, it's a ridiculously steep trend line, which I don't necessarily love aggressively following a really steep trend line. Early on, it's fine, but late on, it's kind of crazy. Uh, so we get to 75. We just took out almost a $2 winner there, and we had to reverse it. Like, I was thinking shorts at 70. We missed that. 
I shorted off the open because it was showing some weakness, but then it stopped being weak and you had to reverse. I am now into Intel. I say that with a smile on my face because like, maybe I should only short the stock. Look, I, I just like the way this was setting up. And if the market gets back to the high, this put on a power move on the same break in the afternoon. So when I see it do that, it's like, okay, we'll give it back to the afternoon support levels. Like give it 20 pennies. Let's see if it can get to 29. Let's look for some reloads in here. It's got a nice trend to the upside. Let's see what it can do because I've been only shorting this name, ignoring when it looks strong. And above this level it broke in the afternoon, I think it has a lot of room to the upside. You got some higher lows on the higher time frame chart. Meta's cruising. It doesn't look like it's, uh, when I say cruising, I mean it's kind of going sideways but holding in the money. The stronger the market gets, the less Meta does. So I think it is on a collision course with at least 173, and we can get a better move to the downside here in Meta. But it is counter trend which means I do want to take my profit where it lies because the trend's now to the upside. As we go to Brendan and Sector Watch. Heading in the right direction, are we, for the uh, S&P 500 right now, but still red on the day. Here's how the sector board is breaking down right now. 0.72 for the S&P 500, these two. This is the healthcare group overall, top left uh, this morning, WST and OGN offsetting each other here off of reports. HSIC, the rest of this group, this is uh, pharmaceutical land, this is healthcare equipment maker land, so the rest of this group pretty much negative across the board, uh, leading the way, in fact, uh, to the downside so far. Uh, Cisco, 4.4%, nice report for them, trying to offset some of the other weakness in uh, tech uh, group today, in the hardware uh, sector anyways, uh, still negative on the day, but uh, software names and semiconductors all red so far so the uh, tech sector among the leaders to the downside banks are red consumer discretionary uh, red as well industrials also a little bit of strength in materials today a little bit of strength down here in uh, energy uh, stocks as well that uh, NAC gas inventory number that just came through I was mentioning not helping uh, pair up 3.6 percent we talked about briefly there off their report not good forecast even worse for them consumer staples also negative territory but we are seeing a bit of a bounce now 0.66, guys, for the S&P. Back over to you. Yes, yes. Uh, while you were there, I was about to say something before we went over there. I did stop out a little bit. I got out for flat once. Google came back in a little bit there, and then we rebought it through 80 again. So I kind of just doing like a little bit of a rinse and repeat here on Google. Um, we went back in long at 81. We just got some out at 89 uh, right there. So I like the short for Google. I like the long, sorry, for Google. But again, you know, don't want, I mean, we're still, we're coming into midday sort of right now. It's 1040. We know Google's going to be strong. It's just, is the market going to be strong? Like that's sort of uh, where I am with all this right now. So let's Let's wait to see. Um, hopefully we can catch something here to the upside. I just wonder if it wants to take 97. So I'm going to sit there at 96, 90, 96, 93 to get a piece out where we couldn't break last time. So for right now, it's Google high side. Good trades for us or for me, but, um, you know, not yet. I'm not happy with this. I really, really want that short uh, to come in or to, the long. Why do I keep saying short? Uh, the long to come in here for Google. So let's watch it. But look, it's not breaking 90 again. So here we go. Like, I'm, I'm going to get something out of 88. Like, I'm getting those feels again, the same ones as we did on Roblox, where it wasn't going and it just kept bouncing off simple levels. So let's take another. There it is. Okay, we took out an 87. So all right, fine. Now let's let it go upside. If this gets stopped, out it'll be back down here 50 I'm not gonna take an early stop on this so let's let's wait till 50 to stop out I, I feel like it's having some problems up here but it can get going so let's just continue to watch that yeah you are seeing like the market is not starting to really boom there a uh, team PJCT saying crypto is booming yeah some strong moves now now Microsoft is starting to turn yesterday's low gets right back into it oh give me a break and I'm not even getting the fill on this one I want to show you the 15 minute chart because that's what I was just trading this level off of you see an upward trend but a double top at a key level on the 15 minutes so I was trying to grab this short in here very similar to what I have in meta short the consolidation when it sets up at a, le at a level on the higher time frame and then if the market turns I got one that I know I like and then guess what's happening Coinbase is going to 70 rather rather quickly so it just got there well I want to I want to get in a piece, see it break. It doesn't have to break 70, but if it breaks 70, I want to give it a chance to float above and below. So get in like a, get in a third here and then only add to the position 
if it fails this higher consolidation. So if it gets above 70, can't really carry to like 70, 30 or 70, 40 up there and then slams back to the downside, look for, re look for an addition in that way. Because I feel like this could easily run over, so I don't want to be all in when that happens. I'm in Intel. Like I said, I want to give this room back into VWAP, maybe add down there. Kind of the way I felt about early on in Coinbase. Like, cautious where you want to add to it. See it hold, and then only add once the trend reestablishes. So here's the 70 break on coin. Does it carry through? If not, I want to add, and then see if it can't fall back to 69 and then 68. But the stock is on one, as you guys can obviously see, and maybe I should have just held the long a little bit longer. You guys might know what I'm about to do. Money, 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 right money. Right there. Money, uh, money, there's money, Google money. on the reload. Okay, we're reloaded, but we don't have the graphic uh, or the sound yet for that one. But there it goes, man. There goes Google. This has been a pretty good trade for us all day, man. We started with the shortcut, stopped out, uh, but still made money, and then went long, then went long, then went long, and are still long. Uh, so this is going to be a good one here for us on Google. I'm just going to let this thing float up. My thesis on this has been Microsoft way too high, Google way too low. So let's just continue to watch that. We did miss Google. Uh, Microsoft, well, we didn't miss it. I, I thought I had an offer there. I don't know, man. Sometimes I feel like some of these offers are just getting canceled or I'm just hitting too many keys and we're canceling our own. Uh, so Microsoft, we haven't really traded it. We went long through 266, uh, but that was a stop order to protect our short that we didn't have. Um, so the short at 266 has been really good, man. Like if I had that short, look how far it would have gone down, 265.50. So I'm going to stay with that thinking here that Google needs to go up. Wow, Google is going up right now. Uh, Google's into the 20s right now again. So um, I've been talking about this sort of flip for the last couple days. I talked about it with Greg and Brankles back there, and now we're doing it again with you guys. So there goes Google, a huge move back up. Your boy has this. Uh, it is what it is. Like, as I keep talking, my headache keeps getting worse and worse, but I'm here for you guys, so let's just keep this party going, man. We're at the highest freaking spot we've been at all day. That's a bang. Where's Michael Noss? This is for you, Michael Noss. There's a bang right there for you. And here's Michael Noss as well. It's O Canada, baby. Trade Ideas is in the building, and we're going crazy. So nice move to the upside right now. Roku, Google. Hey, and you know what? It's off Trade Ideas scanners, right? You got, you got upsize moves on all of these, man. This volume leader scanner that I have on board right now, what I like to look at is this relative volume right now. Airbnb going insane today off this relative volume. Up five, five times. Palantir three times. Roblox. There's my Roblox trade. Why do you guys think I was trading DraftKings early today? So yeah, look, we're all over this. We're super happy, man. Our family continues to grow. And guess what? We ain't going anywhere. Look at Google. Well, I mean, they might have to get me out of here one day when I eventually have a heart attack. But until then, this is going to be good. And that might be the best TV for everybody. So let's go upside right now. There it is. Google's still going. We're going to wait for 30s. Roku going as well. Man, this is going to be a good day. Uh, and we're just getting started. Yeah, every day has been just absolutely fire when it comes to volatility. So I'm going to take my out here. I told you guys the over under. It stops out. We're right back in. There's your wick top. So that's the plan of action. If it fails this level, I'm not going to hold it to 71. That's not my play. I'll take the out. If it does a wick, I jump right back into the trade. On the idea that Microsoft has been relatively weak, we'll see if it actually holds up. Uh, that's Meta right there. Meta's actually getting back to the high as well, and I was typing Microsoft. That's what I wanted to go to. So if Microsoft can't hold around here, 266.50 is a level on the higher time frame. That's why I showed you guys a 15-minute chart. So I'll just take the out. If it goes there, fair enough. I'm going to do that thing where I add on Intel if it takes the level the second time. So if it goes through 70 again, I want to be adding to that. But let's not forget about what's going on in Tesla. I wanted the trend in Tesla like we had the trend in Coin and Airbnb. And Tesla is just now gone. So uh, cancel the dip buy because we're not getting the dip buy in Tesla. Tesla is now cleared out of that 15 area. And on the, trust me when I tell you this, 230 is the next level up on Tesla. That's significant. So joining this trend back at like the 15 to 16 range gives you a lot of room to run. And I want to make sure we get it if it comes back anywhere near to it, guys. Tesla's on one, and I should still be long. Got out way too early, but I like to have targets in there when I take these trades. I, um, uh, I don't know. Oh, I mean, elbow just cracked like crazy. Your elbow cracked? Yeah, that sucks, man. Um, all right. So I don't, honestly, guys, I don't, I don't know what to oh, do that's anymore. Why, Sharif. 
I, I, there, there's not much to do, to be honest with you right now. Um, we're letting our Roku go. We're, we have to let Google go. Although I just saw Google stop at 50, so maybe I have an idea now. Let's get something out at 45, and then we'll just hold the rest, man. I mean, we still got 30% of this trade. Uh, I don't know why we got so nervous here at 80. Remember, I was like, 88 is holding, uh, and it did it. So that was perfect. Here we go, back up. I have an offer at 45. Couple more pennies to the upside. Look at that. Thank you, come again, bid. Nah, whacked. So these, there's so much volume here, uh, so much liquidity on all of these names. Someone just put 80,000 shares there and it got taken out in one second uh, as soon as it got posted. So I'm at 45 now for a 60 cent win. And we just put this on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes ago, we put this on and it's 65 cents in the money but we have our favorite segment coming up mine anyways it's money talks i'm gonna get something out maybe google wants to turn now uh, it's money talks with brendan over at the big desk hey guys quick look at uh, how currency markets are shaping up good timing as well because look at this chart Day highs right now for bitcoin just took out twenty five thousand once again so a uh, better part of three percent today on top of what happened late yesterday. So a really nice move. There's uh, 24,877 right now up 3%. 3% uh, today as well for Ethereum, 1720 coming into play. Everything else really not doing a heck of a lot. We had that uh, PPI print that initially had uh, the US dollar downside a little bit, but uh, we're back to the upside, just went green. 0 0.05 for the DXY. So everything else kind of red on the day, but no other real significant movers so far today, guys. Yeah, and I know a lot of people have been talking about uh, Silvergate, and uh, a lot of times I look at Silvergate. Don't get me wrong. It's a stock that you know, when you're trading crypto, it's a big mover. It can go, but if I'm in Coinbase, I'm trading Coinbase, and that's the one I want to focus on. So it did the over-under, and what I want to do here is I just added to it when it looked a little bit weak, but if I'm adding to the position, then some of that I want a tighter stop on and the rest I want to give to the high. And then I want to scalp some out there because if you're, if you're exposing yourself more, then I think you want to take some profit in that tighter range. And just, just in case it just hangs out here and then breaks the high, I want to have the benefit of 70 failing a bit and then taking some profit out. That's why I'm going to add to it and have a, an exit here in the 70s is not normally how I would play it because you're looking for the much bigger move. But once I decide that it's got that second wick and I'm adding, then I'm going to take more of a scalp out just from a risk to reward perspective because it can also be trapping shorts a little bit more. So, yes, it's working, but I like to talk over the plan of action in case it goes wrong, right? So it ends up working here. However, I was telling you guys, half the stop was going to be a little bit tighter and the rest I'd give to the high of the day in case it went wrong. But it went right, so who really cares? Uh, Meta looks like it's going to be okay for the other short. And Tesla's starting to pull back in here. So go from that to what I would like to be the next trade. Uh, which, look, Tesla doesn't have to come back into 215. Like, maybe it doesn't come back in here. But if it tests this consolidation level, I am not waiting for VWAP. I want the 215 level on Tesla. That's that big one on the higher time frame, guys. So over the 15 minute... That's where it was trying to break. Huge wall all day long at that 15 in front of it. So on the way back in, I like when resistance turns into support. That's what I'm anticipating happening over there in Tesla. And now that Coinbase has settled down, I can look at something like a Silvergate uh, because everything else is just sort of chilling out. Silvergate, you know what? Not nearly as strong. Coinbase actually has been a stronger move to the upside. This just went green. If it clears, this is at 23 level. If it clears 23, I think Silvergate can go again. But show me it breaking this. Show me Coinbase taking out that high of the day. And then I would go over to Silvergate over Coin. All right. I mean, I already sort of went on my rant there uh, a little bit earlier about crypto and, and just, you know, simply how easy it is to trade that uh, from the BTC level breaking through 20,000. That's come and gone now. You could do the same thing at 25,000 if you wanted to as well. Buy it, get out once it, break, once it breaks back down below and, and you're fine. Right up and down. You could even scalp back and forth. Interesting thing right here. I just retweeted this. So thanks to Stock Market News on this one. Tesla is back to having a larger market cap than Berkshire. And Elon has just regained his title as the richest person 
in the world. So there's Tesla's market cap, 700. Well, wow, you can see the numbers right there. So nicely done for uh, Elon, Tesla, and everybody holding that name uh, as it has just taken out once again. It's happened before. It's just now, you know, it's just happening again where Tesla now becomes the most uh, expensive company, or not the most expensive company in the world, richer than uh, Berkshire. So nice move there. Congratulations to everybody uh, that's been sort of on that Tesla uh, tip. And there you go, man. Rewarded nicely right there for your patience in Tesla. Um, I'm, I'm hoping Google uh, can get, get some nice, uh, you know, talks here as well. Uh, back up to the upside, hopefully for Google at some point as well. Um, now trying trying to go. I didn't get that 40 fill. We'll look to see if we can get that in a minute uh, there for Google, but we don't have that on board. And then Roku, that long today is really cooking off 72, but we've stopped at 74. And right now you're back to the 50 period, looking like it wants to take that level out now uh, one way. So let's wait to see here on all these names but for right now I still like the long the markets above the 50 period which I like and uh, that's that so we're gonna hold some of these longs until we're wrong and I don't think we are yet Google we just got that okay good we just got that fill at 37 so Google just ripped up and I'm pretty much like that trade now so I'm denying that he's the world richest man because last I checked it was Tron Right. Tron. For, I mean, it depends about Harlem. the dice game, though. Hot-handed a dice game. You know he's a, the world's richest man. Did That's he have right. a hot hand yesterday, though? Because, you know, this, this just happened Tron right has now. has a hot hand all in the, the dice time. game. Yeah, all what, the am time. I, what am I thinking about? All day, every day. But I'm going to do this one for you. What a race. I was sort of saying, like, if you're going to add to Coinbase here on that short, scalp some out, have the tighter stop. Didn't have to worry about the tighter stop because we got that out. And then you can short off the actual high. So reload off the high, scalp back to what was the level right at that 70, and then hold into 69. So this is how, even if it's ridiculously strong by relieving some of the pressure, not getting greedy with it, establishing a better en entry price, that way if it stops out the top, A, you have a better price and you've lost less. B, you've banked on the move that it gave you. And C, you still have exposure in case it absolutely flushes. That's the better way, I think, to work against the trend. So many times I'll do it the other way, where it's like, I'm in, it's flushing the VWAP, I'm giving it to the high of the day, and then you cross your arms and go pout face when it breaks out the top on you. But this is the way I like to play it. I think it's a better way to do it, as we are already at 1057, so let's see the earnings board. Yeah, quickly, guys, here we go. Uh, this is what is to come tonight and tomorrow morning for our earnings. Woo woo, DoorDash. So I won't be here, Arun will be, but I'm sure he'll be trading all of these names. Oh, and he'll be paying for shorts uh, on everything. You know, for sure, he'll be definitely trading all and or none of these names. But uh, DraftKings, DoorDash, obviously DoorDash off that big beat, well, big beat, big what miss by Uber. That could be something that, that's looked at there. Anything else uh, that we see? I mean, John Deere, if you're playing yeah. the value game there. Well, uh, I, well, I care about that because I feel like if they have a bad quarter, um, Caterpillar could make a real pullback. I mean, we out, I mean, applied materials. I mean, that, you know, hey, it's in the right space right now yeah. uh, to get a move. But no, I mean, I was trading DraftKings today. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to look at that. That's the one. You know, I think that's the one to look at for tomorrow. Although, as, yeah, go ahead. DraftKings on earnings day. I feel it's always dirty. On the earnings day. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to look that back up. I mean, a I'm, lot of I'm these. I'm going to look it back up. A lot I, of these Kathy Wood names uh, have gotten a little insane uh, on, on that. And what I mean by Kathy Wood names is just company not making money that has huge growth potential. And there's nothing wrong with being invested in that. She had her day and probably having it right now. The quarter that she must be having from Jan it's till now be damn must good. be absolute. Let's just check out Ark Innovation. A R K K A M, right? Yes. Not so, too, not too shabby. Here we go. Uh, yeah, it's probably. I'm going to say it's probably a 30% return from the bottom. Let's just. Oh, more. We pretty much nailed that. Nah, not really. More. Yeah, close. Third, yeah, no, 30 to, yeah, yeah, 50 almost. So that bottom there, 30, wow. or the very bottom, yeah, 29, 30, up to right now where we are. Let's just take 43. So, yeah, man, about, yeah, 45, almost 50% return Double there. Double top, though? Uh, yeah, so that's the other thing. <laughs> now that you're out of earnings, though, uh, what is going to rally Miss Wood's stocks? So you got to watch out for that. But, of course, remember, Tesla, as far as I know, and I haven't checked the holdings, that was something. Uh, for her, right? I haven't so, checked in a while. No, but Roku's uh, yeah. big. So Roku's big. I mean, day. again, another big day there for Arc. Well, not really. It's only up 0.1. But again, as these earnings come through, I think I think Shopify. So that's what I mean. Like, you know, holdings is important, and I don't know what they are, but I know that Shopify was one of those names as well. I think she sold out of Palantir, so that's not going to be a good move. But she was in Palantir. I didn't. Yeah, for a while. I mean, all those names. And, and like I said, huh. QuantumScape, which was reporting today, that did do good. Anyways, all right, it's almost 11 o'clock. I'm, um... Quick, oh, go ahead. 
No, we're, I mean, Google is just absolutely awesome, awesome uh, today. We'll probably just hold this literally all day uh, on that. So let's just continue to watch out uh, for Google Man and then Roku as well. That's the only two positions I have on, and I've been talking about them all day. So like Coinbase, which is going to the upside, I'm now out of Coinbase. It'll, it'll end up actually passing Shopify because I was more active trading it. But I was short for most of the day. I was short, I was short, and then we went to the long side. That was pretty good. And then I shorted it again. But if you only stay short, you probably don't have a way to make money on it. But there were shots that you had, and then eventually you joined that trend. If it takes yeah, out the buddy. high, if it takes out this top, I, you could see $80 if it continues this trend to the upside. And I just want to see it actually establish support at $69.70, and then I'll just join the trend once again. It, was, it wasn't that hard to get back into the trend the first time through. And then Meta, the last short that we have on that's going to be working, uh, we'll see what happens. It might break out this top here, but it's been resisting it. I've been, I don't want to add to this because the market needs to show me that it wants to turn around before I want to add to this one. But it's past 11 o'clock. Yes, sir. We'll be back at 2. We'll have Kevin O'Leary here at 2.45, so tune in for that as well. But for now, let's get the professor and special guest trader for the day. Well, kind of. Ciao. Thanks, Bears vs. Bulls. We got Ian in the house today, guys. What's up? This is the Midday Show. I'm Sharif. That's obviously Ian. And uh, what a day it's been on the market. We got a big boy sell-off in the morning from that PPI print. Now we're getting a nice little recovery, holding 4,100, Ian, which is uh, kind of important if you're range trading this market. Um, I've been kind of, you know, a little bit more hands-off-ish. Uh, I'm in a Tesla long right now. I was short uh, Tesla earlier. I tried to take it off the pop as we kind of rejected off that 41, uh, yeah, 4130. That's kind of been a level that Arun has been talking about here on the ES March contract. Uh, that's come up over and over again. So as we kind of uh, approached it and we retraced here, I took that short on Tesla. Now it looks like we're breaking uh, that level and heading towards newer highs. Uh, therefore, I am long now Tesla and holding, uh, you know, probably late to the party, but better late is never. I had a couple of trades as well on, um, whoa. <laughs> We had a couple of trades as well on our friend Apple. We'll have a look at that one in a second, but we'll just take off a little bit of profit on this Tesla's tr trade as we pump to the high side. Uh, the positions board will update shortly, guys, but I am long Tesla at 98, so about 25 pennies in the money as we're hanging out uh, in that mid-20 areas. Took out a nice little, I'm still holding 50% of the trade, so uh, I wanna let this run if it will, if it wants to, I mean, it's kind of extended. Apple looking good though, um, Google looking good, even Amazon now pumping through that one dollar of that hundred dollar mark. So that one looking good as well. Tesla, you know, and Meta kind of slowing down a little bit. Tesla had that big boy move uh, earlier this morning. Meta has just kind of been dead weight for the last little while. So uh, no surprise there, but nice couple of trades, you know, putting some money up on the board. Uh, better than nothing, but definitely by no means a big day, Ian. Uh, what's going on, guys? Uh, it's been an interesting morning for sure. Um, you know, I was I was leaning more short bias up this morning uh, when we were kind of like you know fading off of that uh, like 4180 area overnight, uh, and then obviously PPI comes out and kind of destroys all those ideas as we gap down basically all the way down to 4100. So I stayed away from the short this morning uh, right off the open. There was that opening flush move you could have caught, but uh, it was a little bit of a tougher trade. Uh, obviously, you know, being down at a, at a demand zone, basically around 4110, 4100, you heard Rune talk about those levels this morning. Uh, and then obviously, you know, you get the bounce, uh, as you can see uh, in the ES off that 4100 area now. Uh, I am short Apple, guys. Um, basically, you know, Apple's been ma okay. basically making this range much like the rest of the market uh, as well. Um, so, you know, the top of this range is around 155.50. Uh, that was the top of the, you know, the price range, uh, I believe, last week. Uh, wow. And then, you know, obviously the bottom was 151. So uh, there is some stack size there at, at 155.40 as well. So I kind of added Ian. in front of that. Um, so I am a little bit short there. Um, but, uh, you know, we're going to see where this go one goes. Uh, like like uh, Sharif was saying, 41.30 is kind of a level, but uh, we are kind of breaking out there. So, you know, I got my stops in. I'm not going to be surprised if these resistance levels break out. But just, you know, with the, the current trend, current market conditions and whatnot, uh, I'm liking the short uh, up here until it's wrong, obviously. But at least I got some clear outs. Ian, look at this, dude. Bitcoin is absolutely pumping to the high side. We're at day's highs. 
you know, goes without saying, we're up 4.5%, breaking through all sorts of support levels. We're up to 25,243 on BTC. I like how that rhymes. Uh, let's go to the daily chart. There you go, man. We're, we just keep making newer levels. Uh, this was clearly a level here, and this is a wick, by the way. This goes back to August. We talked about that earlier this morning. Highest period since uh, mid-August. Uh, now this breaks us all the way back to June. So we haven't been at these levels since June. So Bitcoin continuing to find, you know, its legs and uh, whether or not inflation comes in hot does not seem to be important to it at, at the moment. Bitcoin is kind of just saying, you know, I think, or the Bitcoin bulls are saying, you know, the worst is over and we're hitting the buy button. So what a move for Bitcoin. I was watching that overnight make its move. You know, I, I couldn't, it was just like, wow, it keeps going and going. Um, the guy to my right here, Sean, has been trading Roku all day. And that now is at day's highs, obviously getting a, getting a big boost from its earnings, money, uh, money, saying, woo money, 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 <laughs> there you go. Sean is long 72s, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. So the break of that top right there, that's an interesting little area to get along. So uh, two and a half bucks in the money, maybe even more. But you look, Roku's look good. Again, it's an earnings play. Uh, this is the uh, move yesterday, uh, you know, right at that 405 time slot. It busts out from 63, pops all the way up to 77, you know. Then the algo spike kind of goes down. We get a consolidation area. And then we're looking probably at 77 in the face again. In fact, you know, let's start building a position into this because I feel like we may be able to touch yesterday's highs. Uh, better late to the party than never. Um, you know what, I'll switch this one. Let's get in Roku here. And the idea with this trade is, I'm gonna add incrementally uh, to it so that I don't have big positions in case it goes against me. And then, uh, oops. And then as, what's going on with this thing today? And then as it uh, heads to the high side, we will, um, okay, something's wrong. Um, I'll send it to you for a sec because I got to figure out what's going on. With yeah, this. yeah, go for it. I was just taking a look at coin and, and Neil mentioned in the chat, obviously, you know, Sharif mentioned Bitcoin's popping off. Uh, coin is as well. Uh, coin's up five and a half percent now, reaching the 73 area. I was quickly trying to check some levels, uh, just looking at the daily. And it looks like we are kind of running into, uh, you know, some levels here to the upside, obviously closer to 80. Um, but I don't want to short this name, obviously, with Bitcoin kind of popping, popping off. And, you know, that trend is clearly trending upwards. So I was like seeing like, okay, if I'm going to take a trade on coin today, uh, you know, where can I get, uh, you know, where can I get long, right? And it doesn't seem like, it basically seems like I have to be patient. Otherwise, I'm going to be chasing this move. Um, you know, just kind of looking at the five minute here, uh, maybe closer to 70. It looks like, uh, you know, once the 70 kind of broke out, there was buying back up. Uh, you know, once the 70, uh, you know, start to be retested there. So I'm liking that for now. It is pulling back right here. Uh, pull back a dollar as I was just kind of speaking about it. Um, it's pulling back actually quite hard here. Uh, there's Bitcoin's some aggressive, uh, aggressive selling uh, coming in here on coin. So it looks like the 70 might come into play uh, sooner rather than later. But that being said, uh, you know, the shorts are kind of working right now. I just got some fills uh, on Apple. Uh, you know, that one, it tested 155.40 and I was like, okay, am I gonna get stopped out of this one? Uh, but now it looks like it's, you know, trending a little bit downwards uh, and this resistance is gonna really start to work now for me. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit more out here uh, just as we break down 155. Um, but yeah, what great ads there. You know, you gotta trust the levels. I find that that's like so key in this market. Uh, you know, liquidity and volume obviously, you know, dying a little bit down. Um, you know, as earnings season, pro earnings season progresses through here, obviously, you know, you're gonna have your, uh, your, your you're gonna have to pick each day. Uh, you know, stock picking is so important. But um, with liquidity kind of, you know, not at its uh, highest point here, I feel like levels. Uh, I feel yeah. like a lot of people are just trading up charts. I don't know. I like this 155.50 level on Apple, and it worked here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue to trade it as long as it's working. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I agree with that. And yeah, chat mentioning that BTC taking a bit hit. You saw Ian show you there the move on coin. BTC coming down from that 25.249. We're now plummeting down to 24.631. That's a whole lot of money real quick. We're talking about like a few 
three minute candles here guys so big big move as we see big moves on the way up we see big moves on the way down but that's the beauty of this market uh, a lot of volatility here uh, and you know these resistance levels they're there for a reason right i mean uh, technical analysis com has validity i mean this is why we talk about these levels being areas where we can get shorts or if you know break out above them for any prolonged period take longs and use them as support uh, so that, that's basically where that comes from, and you, and you guys see that live in living color in front of you right now. So um, I'm in this Roku long. I'm building a position into it. Initially, I got in at 50s, and then I added at 69s. Um, I'm just looking for a continuation. Um, I'm not going to take a big position initially, like I mentioned. It'll be something that I build into. I'll have to be in the money, and then we'll add incrementally. But I like this one, stair-stepping up maybe uh, for the rest of the day up until that level we saw yesterday after um, the, um, the algo spike. The earnings got us up to about 77.5. If we can get up to maybe 77 uh, and test near that area, I think that that would be a reasonable target to have. So uh, we could be you know, easily two, three bucks in the money by the end of the day on this. We're already like, uh, we're already 25 pennies in the money here. So let's ride this one north. I'm probably gonna add above 75. Um, if we get our way up to 75, I wanna add maybe at 74.98, 74.97s, something like that. But just build on the profit that you have. Don't take anything super long, cause we are extended, right? And if it goes down, well then I've already got a cushion. I can deal with that. Uh, what's the chat up to? Camel Crush, Sharif, my darling, LEU, up another 7% today. That's 25% since I mentioned it. Let's go. Are you in this? I, I mean, I hope that you're, I mean, it's great that you're able to make these analysis and that shows obvious talent, but like, our, I hope you're in this and you're printing uh, because, you know, it, it feels nice. Uh, dude, I've got my eye, you know, I, there's only so many things I can watch. I've really been watching UNG a lot. Uh, that's kind of the one I'm looking for to break out. Uh, I'll, I definitely like uh, the one that you sent me, LEU, for a swing trade, but definitely not something that I can, uh, you know, get into all at once. Only so much amount of capital will go around, right? So, um, all right, Zach C says, TWLO. I, shout out, Zach. I saw your uh, super chat earlier. Thanks for that. Let's have a look at TWLO here. That's Twilio. You guys know that it's probably in an earnings play. I think, I think it was an earnings play. Um, which one should I take off here? AmAm's not doing anything, so we can get rid of this one. TWLO. Let's pull her up here. 79.70 is a high. Uh, technically, why isn't it showing me the percentage up on the day? That's so frustrating. Okay, type it in here, TWLO. So we are up 19.25% on Twilio today. A nice little move. There's the algo spike from earnings. Yeah, so that's an obvious earnings play yesterday, that 4 o'clock spike. We break through 66. We pop up all the way to 75. Very similar look to uh, Roku. And But uh, instead of you know testing the algo highs, we've already broken the algo highs from yesterday, and we're knocking at the door of 80 bucks. So this one's been a nice little move. And uh, what are you looking at? You know, I don't want to keep talking no, too much no, here. No, yeah. no. Honestly, you were doing a great <laughs> job because I was just managing uh, a couple right. positions here. I did hop into the coin long uh, right off 71. I noticed that there was a, a seller, uh, 300 lots that got taken out just like that. Uh, I didn't really know what was going on. You know, Sharif said that Bitcoin was kind of you know plummeting a little bit down. I thought, you know, coin's super strong today. I bought that dip uh, into 71 as I just nice. noticed there was buyers there uh, and then, you know, covered into, I think my best fill uh, on the way out uh, was 74 to the upside. So, you know, quick 75 cent winner there. I was actually thinking about adding uh, in the 20s, but uh, I can't lie, I got a little bit scared, so I didn't. Uh, but now we're up to 72. That would have been a nice add. I'm still holding a little bit of this position. Uh, you know, I'm basically gonna try to hold, uh, see if we can get up above 72 and, and you know, test these highs again at 73 because, you know, coins obviously been super strong today. Um, so, you know, I wanna participate in that one a little bit. Uh, I added to Apple uh, as well as it crept back up to that 155.30 area. Uh, you know, it was just kind of bouncing back up there uh, and then seller stepped up again. So I was like, okay, let me add to this trade. Uh, it seems like it's still gonna be working for me. Uh, I am bidding, I got some out in front of 155, so I am bidding again below 155 uh, into the 154 area. Uh, 154.90 area that is. Uh, so, you know, you see me working that trade. Uh, man, coin 50 cents in the money, uh, you know, real quick off that one. Uh, that one's nice to kind of have. Uh, guys, I am short PLTR. Uh, and this is what I want to talk about earlier when I came on the show, but then just got a little bit busy. 
Uh, but, you know, you heard Neil just kind of mention right before, uh, well, Neil and Sean were talking about shorting this name. I was trying to short it as well uh, around like this 1010 area, but then Neil said, um, uh, you know, you kind of want to wait for this level to be exhausted first and then see if there's actually sellers that step up and then, you know, you get the flush move back down. Um, that's kind of what happened here. I got stopped out, uh, you know, trying to front run the level and that was a mistake. Uh, but then, you know, once you actually get the move, I, I hop back in the short here, had to do smaller size because I obviously took the L earlier, but that's okay. You know, that, that's going to be trading. You live and learn. Uh, you know, I'm obviously going to try and, you know, trade what I see. And then, you know, obviously, you know, you're going to make mistakes, right? Uh, uh, but that's okay, right? Uh, so, you know, now back in the short, I got some out here at 06. Gonna, you know, I, I, th I guess I should bid in front of 10 there just because that's probably gonna be a, a, you know, a psychological level. So let me, let me bid some more out there in front of 10. Uh, but now in this short here, I, I'm liking this level as well. This was basically yesterday's high of day. And I just feel like the coin move uh, is a little bit overextended. Let me zoom out. Uh, so here's the high of day from, uh, you know, yesterday uh, at 1020. Right, and that's the five minute chart. But just look at this move here uh, on the daily. Uh, you know, PLTR uh, had that big move up, uh, you know, up on volume. Yesterday was a little bit lower volume as well, right? So I think this move is a little bit overdone maybe at this point. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of due for a pullback. Uh, who's to say, you know, maybe we got that this morning, uh, you know, obviously uh, when, uh, when the market rejected those highs. Uh, but here we are back again at the high of day. And for now, it seems to be working, guys. So, you know, common theme with my trading right now. Uh, is, you know, I'm trusting these resistance Ooh. levels. I'm gonna, you know, keep getting short up here at these levels. Uh, and if they're gonna work, they're gonna work. If not, then I, you know, I have some clean outs. All right, LUNR is just absolutely flying to the high side, guys. 111% now. Uh, it's halted how many times? All right, we got, let me count these. We got one, no, we don't got, we got one, two, three. All of them to the high side. So three halts, all to the high side. Uh, high day, 27.50, very scary. Uh, the spread is huge. Let me just pull up something here real quick. Um, L-U-N-R, just need to see something. All right, spread wise, where are we here? Okay, so we're like 50 pennies almost, yeah, at times. So very uh, eesh, scary. Let's bring in the trade ideas. Think to find out the float, the short float, figure out what we can know about this whole thing, L-U-N-R. Here we go, what do we got here? Okay, so we got 16 times Arval, which is good. We're not seeing a short float on that or float. Let's check here real quick. L-U-N-R. All right, I'm not getting a float on that at all on both my platforms, so it looks like it's something new. Is this a recent IPO or something? Let's look here, daily. No, this has been going for a while. Okay, I have no idea what this is. I don't even have details on it. I don't have uh, like information on the, the company, nothing, so kind of just going in the dark here. I have a bit of a history. Uh, this is a, it's a risky one to get into, but it's just absolutely pumping to the high side here. There's all sorts of FOMO getting into, getting into this. Like, I mean, where do you get in? I mean, the, the spread is like, here we go. Now it's crashing to the downside. I mean, you can, what, you punch in like 10 shares into this? I mean, it's like terrifying. Um, all right, here, we're at 20. Maybe I'll just leave this alone. Otherwise, I'll probably make a mistake and get into something I shouldn't be getting into. But, you know, if I could look at it and be honest, at 24 level, right away it stands out because that's a last halt level. That always seems to act as an area of support with these halting stocks. Um, that's not guaranteed, obviously. Uh, $25 level could be good. It's just pumping to the high side here, dude. Ooh, here we go. Now it's making new highs, $29.99. So just rejecting off 30 here is L-U-N-R. This one, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do with this one. Ian, do I punch? These are, these are kind of the ones where you just kind of stay away from it. Like, uh, you know, so if, you, if you miss the move, like, don't FOMO into it. Yeah, you know? like, no, you're uh, right. The, the, you're the move right. is done. Like, uh, you know, usually that first halt uh, gives you the best chance for, you know, another no. print up. Uh, but now it's halted a couple times, right? Uh, I want to thank a uh, super chat that came through. It just oh, went yeah. away. Uh, so my apologies there. Oh, but uh, thank you so much. It's, uh, uh, can you see it there? I got can you it. say his name? King of the Ring 3X. Yeah, he sends uh, a friend of the show uh, okay, 13 cool. Swiss francs. So that's yeah, yeah, what CHF yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Thank you so much yeah. for the for the super chat there. Uh, he says Twilio uh, I made them more money than last year. Uh, you know, they obviously had their earnings. Uh, and they're up 20% today, awesome. guys. 
Uh, you know, so incredible day for Twilio. Uh, I'm not sure where to get involved in this one. You know, the spread is kind of a little bit wider on this name. Uh, 12, point, 12 million volume. I'm pretty sure that's higher than the R vol here, but uh, I've never really traded Twilio, I'll be honest. So I'm probably not going to, you know, I'm probably going to stay away from it from now. But, uh, you know, clearly, um, you know, you, you've been trading it and this is one of your go-tos and, you know, congratulations on yeah. uh, making the money on it uh, to date. Uh, just printing, printing off of those earnings. I did get stopped out of coin, guys. Uh, it was unfortunate. Um, let me load the chart there. There we go. Yeah, I got stopped out. It was kind of flirting with my stop and I'm going to be bottom tick of that pullback. Um, it is what it is. You know, uh, I, I, I took my winnings there, so I'm obviously still up on the name uh, quite a bit there. But, uh, you know, it bounced off my stop essentially. Uh, and then, you know, bounce all the way back to 7150. So I'm not really sure how to trade that one a little bit better. You know, I was basically risking off of like 71 ish area, 70, 80, giving it a little bit more breathing room. Uh, but that being said, um, you know, I was waiting for it to kind of reclaim that 71 area and it just didn't really look like it was doing at the time. So it was kind of a time thing. You know, I, uh, you know the amount of time that it was spending below 71, uh, I didn't like it, so I stopped out, uh, but here we are back up to 72. Uh, that's okay, gonna leave that one alone. Uh, I didn't plan for coin today. I saw the move happening and you know I took advantage of a quick move there. So you know that one's a solid winner. Nice. Apple uh, is coming back to these prices around 155.30 uh, up here, right? It's kind of struggling with this 20 area. I wanna, you know, I was bidding down below 155 there. That never came to fruition. Uh, but that being said, you know, there, there is still some sellers here and it seems like the market is kind of struggling around this area. Do we kind of just consolidate or fade or is this the capitulation that you like to see, uh, you know, and it's going to fade the rest of the day? Who knows? Uh, obviously, you know, the market is still down 0.7% today. So it's still a negative day, guys, uh, from where we were yesterday. Uh, and like I said, you know, Sharif said it earlier as well. We kind of rejected those levels, um, you know, to the upside of the top side of this range, right? So, you know, ranging uh, again here, uh, I guess, you know, weekly levels, you got to pay attention to them. You know, Arun gives them every day, you know, Sean, Neil, and they give them every single day, right? So, you, know, you just got to pay attention to these ones. I think Sharif's on to something, though. Yes, I'm trying to get out of this position. It's not letting me out. Oh, come on, dude. How could it be so wicky? Okay, so I, was, I got in this LUNR, man. I got in 29s, it went up to 31. Somehow I got filled at 2960s. I mean, I don't know how that could have been such a huge area of illiquidity. It's pumping to the high side. Okay, the idea here, guys, was not to FOMO, was basically to wait for the bull flag continuation. We had a big move up, a retracement of about half, and then we had a new one minute candle to make a new high. I punched in uh, a little late because of the area li illiquidity, but that's what I was looking for, bull flag continuation, and, and there, we're getting it. It's pumping up to 32 now. Ah, man, I don't know how I paper handed this trade so badly. That's frustrating. Um, kind of just not been my day today, but there we go. Now we're, look we're knocking on the door at 32. Where did I get in originally? I got in at 29.21, oh wow. Okay, anyway, so this one's going uh, up now 148%. Still don't have enough information on this one. Very scary. Uh, let me just look at um, Float Checker to see if they've got anything because neither of my platforms, LUNR, Intuitive Machines, there we go. Okay, so this one, you know, only Ameritrade's coming back with a number uh, and that's 31 and a half million. Nobody else has a number on this one and, you know, that's not surprising. Uh, obviously, needless to say, there's no short float. Our Ameritrade is saying 0.01%. So like a for fraction, it's halted now to the upside. What a big boy move. It's halted at, uh, I'll tell you guys in a sec, 31.72. I'm seeing the tap at 31.80. So it's moving up at the moment. Yeah, eight pennies obviously is not that much, but this one is by no means done on the day, guys. Uh, it's squeezing and maybe, maybe it's like uh, the allure is the lack of information because I can't find any information on it on any of my platforms here. Chat, if you guys have more info, if you're able to secure some, some good data there, please tag me in the chat with that. I'd like to know. Um, yeah, Marco Ferrer saying Lun Lunar's volume is 628,000. Uh, oh, I forgot to add that up. Um, I'll tell you what it is quickly here on my platform. I got 745,000, so a little bit more than what you're showing. But yeah, what, what an absolute monster Lunar is. Um, 
Yeah, but I know, you, I know you're not about these names. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not about these small, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. these like kind of runners. Uh, I'll be yeah. honest. Like, obviously, you know that one's been <laughs> running up like insane. It looks uh, good. You know, you got a couple trades on it. Okay, cool. It's horrible. I don't even want to look at this chart. Let's flip the chart. I, I mean, yeah, horrible. Whatever. You know, it, yeah, it's yeah. okay. You know, yeah. You, you're up, right? You're up on I'm it. I'm up on it. Yeah, I'm okay, cool, it, whatever, yeah. whatever, just leave it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm reading through the chat here. I'm trying to see what you guys are trading. Uh, a couple of people mentioning Meta, uh, Meta 175 area. Uh, I think this person said 174.50 short uh, here. And uh, you know, it seems like it is kind of making this, uh, you know, kind of this top here at 174.50, uh, 175 area. I want to look back at the rest of the, okay, so we did gap down 176. Uh, was the support area yesterday. So, you know, 175 seems to be kind of the area here. And, you know, I'm liking the theme. Uh, oh, I, get, I did get that fill on, uh, on PLTR. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm liking the theme of shorting some resistance areas uh, as well. So, you know, I like that trade for sure. Um, you know, I, I was trading Meta closer when it was like 183.50. I think that was a really good, uh, you know, base that, uh, you know, kind of broke down and you, you, you shorted there. Um, but uh, I haven't really traded it since then. Uh, you know, a little, lo little bit lower volume, uh, only 10 million volume. Obviously, when they had their earnings, it was kind of going crazy. Uh, so I haven't really traded it since then. Uh, guys, when, when will you be able to trade cryptos? Uh, I'm not too sure soon. about that one. Sean and um, them were saying that we're going to get crypto soon on DTDW, I believe. Uh, okay. Uh, Sean, am I right on that? Are we getting crypto soon yes. on our exchange? Yes, yeah. We okay, are. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. At least the top 10 coins, guys. So, you know, maybe even more. Who knows? But, yeah, DTTW is definitely going to get that. So, you guys know what to do. Exclamation point DTTW in the chat, baby. Yeah, so it does seem we are going to get some, uh, some action uh, to the crypto side there. Um, uh, so, that's going to be very exciting, obviously. Uh, you know, obviously, all of us here love to trade. And, you know, give us more instruments, instruments to trade, and we will trade them. Uh, but, yeah, Question. Meta kind of pulling back here. Uh, nicely, I want to bring up this PLTR because I just I want to make sure that I got that fill. Okay, cool. Uh, so this one is trending closer to 10 now um, as well. Um, Sharif, do you want to take over a quick minute? Yeah, absolutely, guys. I'm I'm waiting here for this LUNR uh, open. It looks like uh, we're due to open quite soon. Otherwise, it'll be a 10-minute halt. Uh, when did I get the machine, the, the message? I got it at 25, no, okay, it's not showing me here. So we'll have to wait for that. But I think we're in the last minute of the halt. Otherwise, it'll be 10 minutes, 3172 is where we're closed at. This is what I'm looking at right now. The tap is showing me 3190. So we're slated to open up 18 pennies above the close. You know, that's always bullish, but that means absolutely nothing. You know that you can get wicked up, wicked up, wicked down on these moves because it's so illiquid. Uh, that the moves are so just wide-ranging. So, you, I mean, if this is new to you, obviously stay steer clear. If you've seen this before, obviously you guys know what to expect. So here we go, open up soon on this one. I'm also building my position into Roku uh, on, um, yeah, so adding like incrementally down into that 74 area where we're hanging out now. I'm looking for a possible continuation here. We're coming down to that area of support, that 74-ish area. Sorry for my charts, they're getting, uh, I don't know what, why the platform is doing this today, but there seems to be a lot of these crazy wicks showing up here, I don't know why. Uh, hopefully we'll get that fixed sooner rather than later, but yeah. So building into my position on Roku, uh, and we will see what happens there. Okay, so LUNR is open, pumps to the high side, 34.72. That's the high now. We're back into the low 33s. Look for the area of support at 31.87, because that's where it halted last time. The, the halt areas tend to be areas of support here, but look how crazily this is moving up. It's moving up dollars and $2 at one time, guys. What a mover is LNUR now up. 175% on the day, day high, 35.95, 36.60, 37.37. Oh it's pumping to the high side. Super dangerous, but uh, super gratifying when you get it. Uh, looks like we're, we're knocking on the door of another halt here, 37.60. Not quite yet, uh, Ian, but this one's up 25 bucks. Where do we start off the day at, dude? Uh, the low, anyway, is 1370. The high is 3760. We might have found a bit of a top here at the moment as we retrace into the high 35s. 
Let's see how this one plays out. Um, I don't have a trade in it, so maybe I can look away for a second, check my Roku. Looks like we are, uh, you know, holding 74-ish for now. I do like this area. I'm probably gonna add again in this area for a possible continuation into that 77 area, 77.50 area we talked about, which is the high wick on the algo from yesterday. I'm thinking about another ad here on Apple. It is creeping back up uh, to this 155.30 area. The market is basically just bouncing, like uh, trading this channel now, five point range, 41.25 to 41.30. Uh, so I'm thinking that uh, some of the trades that I'm in, well, especially this Apple one, uh, is going to just kind of be a range trade, right? So let me actually just offer out, uh, let me, let me, you know, be patient and be passive with this one. Uh, there it is, I'm probably gonna get, okay, I just got that filled there. Uh, so, you know, now adding more to the short on Apple, uh, and let me just kind of bid out uh, as well there, because I don't wanna get too hasty with this one. It is kind of going against me there, um, but that one's okay, right? I'm still trusting these levels. You, you, you gotta trust these levels, and you see that, guys? Uh, you know, if you would've got scared on that one, obviously that was a lot of buying that came in, but look nice. at all the selling that just came in. So just be patient, and just have faith uh, in those levels and just you know have faith in the tape right and, and that's exactly what happened there uh so you know quick uh, quick Pump ad it. and a good uh, a good uh you know kind of sell off there so let me bid down there uh to kind of average into this position a little bit and, and better my average uh back to the higher uh i guess to the you know to the 30s there uh someone said nice trade on pltr uh and yeah you know i had to be patient on that one uh i made the mistake earlier today uh, by getting short, trying to front run the level. Um, you know, front runs really haven't worked recently. Have you been recently. trading that all week? Um, I had a couple trades on it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the past couple days, yeah. So it, it's been okay, uh, more so to the long side. Um, you know, obviously after their earnings and whatnot, yeah. uh, you know, the $9 break, that was pretty nice as well. Okay, now I'm breaking down 10. Um, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I made the mistake earlier trying to front run this level. And I was trying to say like, uh, you know, front runs really haven't worked in this market environment just because, you know, the market is really trying its best to hunt for liquidity just because of the lack of liquidity and whatnot. So, you know, you really need that move uh, to kind of, you know, show the sellers up there and, you know, exhaust the level. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Um, and, you know, I hop back in the shorts. So, you know, here we are, the shorts working for me. Uh, and, you know, you just kind of have to be patient with that one. Took the L earlier, but now trying to crawl back uh, some of those losses. Uh, he... Lunar halted, so calm, guys. no panic at all. Uh, lunar, lunar's halted lunar again, halted guys. to the okay, downside, so, though, this time, Oh, to the guys. downside. Yeah. Okay, interesting. We're big boy down now on it. We're, we're closed off at 32 and a quarter. The top right now is 31. So a dollar and a quarter lower than the close. Uh, now we're at 30. I just saw 30, 30 and a half. Okay, it's going to change incrementally. No point updating you guys on that. But, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Maybe... We get a 10 minute halt this time around. Who knows? I mean, it's getting, this is what, halt number four? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. No, no point guessing. Let's just figure it out when it happens. But in the meantime, let's go back to this Roku trade. We are now printing on this trade as we march towards that 75 area again. 74.96 is the high of day. You saw the guy to my right today, Sean. He was trading that all morning along 72s. And now we're looking uh, to knock on the door of that. $75 area. I like this one again up to 77, maybe 77 and a half. Let's see how that one goes. We built up a nice position into the, into this one uh, incrementally on the way down here. Sorry for all these wicks, by the way, guys. I, I'm not sure what's going on today with that, but uh, yeah, yeah. But you know, the price action, you can see it here on the level two. So, and I'll keep you apprised, obviously. This CYH as well was also an interesting small capper. I didn't trade it. It's up 43% today. Uh, let's bring in this chart here. Actually, let's bring in the trade ideas chart. Wait. There we go. So we'll put um, CYH and Community Health Systems. So let we go like this and we duplicate into Floating Window. Shout out to the NOS boss who's here in studio today, baby. He's gonna be he's gonna be helping out. I can't wait to actually figure out how to use some of this. All right, so here we go. This is the two minute seven twenty fives where we're at. The high of day 740, it's been kind of stair-stepping its way up. It had a VWAP test earlier in the day, I want to say around 10 o'clock. Didn't hold a VWAP exactly, but you know, it was in and around that area, reclaimed it quite quickly, uh, made newer highs, continuing to make higher lows, uh, you know, angling towards the high side. But at what point do we find exhaustion? Let's have a look at the daily charts, see if we can glean any levels. 
Uh, so far, we've broken out. Um, we are almost at 52 week highs. Last time we were up here was April. So the level above where we're, where we're at now, okay, so at 750 level is gonna definitely be a level. We consolidated several days there in March uh, before breaking down. So that 750 level is definitely gonna be a level. And then above that is gonna be about eight and a quarter, maybe eight and a half. So we'll see. CYH, uh, in case you guys are wondering what this guy is over here, what am I talking about CYH for? Community Health Systems. All right, what they do is they are an operator of general acute care hospitals and outpatient facilities in communities across the United States. The company provides health care services through hospitals that it owns and operates. Okay, right, is there a catalyst on this guy? There's probably obviously a catalyst. Let's scroll down here. Uh, shares are trading higher. Oops, I'm just gonna get rid of that one second. So community health shares are trading higher after the company reported better than expected Q4. So it's an earnings winner from yesterday, it's a continuation. We'll talk about this one and maybe LUNR when we get back from Brenda, who's at the big desk with the Euro update. Hey guys, just wrapping up the session. Michael Noss is here, if you hadn't heard. Uh, just wrapping up the session for uh, Europe for the day. We're seeing some positive movement into the close here. Just waiting for a few final prints to come through. Stock 600, though, just uh, closing up 0.06% there. The FTSE 300 back into positive territory only just right at the end of the day. But uh, positive numbers, if you remember in the uh, pre-market, most of this was uh, downside. Bit of a choppy session overall, though, guys, for Europe. Back over to you. Oh, interesting. So they went green. Maybe we'll end up green too. Who knows? Yeah, um, who knows? European I markets. mean, obviously, you know, the yeah. markets, uh, you know, it's a lot, of, a lot of time left in the day, guys. Yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm just watching the market kind of bounce around here. I'm just watching uh, Roku make new highs, baby. Let's go. Yeah, you know, yeah, Sharif's printing sorry. on Roku. Yeah. Uh, I'm printing here on Apple as well. Um, I'm trying to manage this one a little bit more just because, uh, you know, it's, it's consolidating up here quite a bit. Uh, and the more that it stays up here, the less patient I'm going to be with it. Uh, so that's why I am, you know, oh. I'm, I'm starting to bid out a little bit higher and higher uh, on this name. And now we are getting a little bit of a flush move. Hit me at 05, man. Hit me at 05. I'm sitting there right now. It's about to hit me. Uh, and it did it. Mm, I, don't you just love it waiting? Did. I love waiting oh, for the fill. Oh, man. I, I said this one time and, and Sean was laughing, but... Uh, you know, I'm kind of sitting there at 05, I'm waiting in line, I'm like peeking out, I'm like, oh, over here, hit me, pick me, pick me. Uh, and I didn't get picked that time, but uh, you know, who knows, it's probably going to bounce back down there. And uh, you know, I guess I picked a good price because it's bouncing right off of that one. Uh, someone said Piton was, was, was popping off. L-U-N-R is um, okay. I mean, it's up a 1%. I wouldn't see it's popping off per se. Uh, you know, 3.4 million volume on the day. It is making a nice up move, uh, you know, that's for sure. Uh, you know, making a nice up move. So I'm, you know, I'm sure you're probably long in this one. I'm sure that's why you're excited. Uh, it is kind of making this uh, bounce around this like 13, 14 area. So, you know, if you're long on that one, uh, I won't take anything away from you. It's, uh, that's a good trade, man. Uh, you know, keep, keep rocking it for sure. Um, what just happened there with that? Okay, interesting. Um, I wanted to check on Tesla as well because someone said is Tesla going to bounce off, uh, you know, 217 once more, uh, and it looks like uh, you know 217 is, is kind of this top four now. Uh, the market is pulling back uh, a little bit here, but uh, man, it's been trading this range, so you know you don't want to get too hasty with this one. Uh, you know the market, uh, it, you know it could just be trading this range the rest of the day, unlikely. But uh, you know, potentially, uh, you know, for that, right? So I've stayed away from from Tesla today. Uh, I was telling Sharif a bit yeah. earlier. Tesla is basically my only losing name this week, uh, and I traded it. Um, I traded it the past two days, right? So uh, I, I told I told myself today, no Tesla Woo! for me. Uh, so you know, you won't see any trades uh, on me on that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been a good trade so far, offering uh, you know some decent levels. T two ten today. Uh, held very nicely. Uh, I was more interested in waiting for like a 204.50 area if I was going to trade it, but uh, like I said, I stayed away. Right, we're gonna have to actually ring that register, baby, because we blow through that 75 top on Roku. We get the fill at 75.05 there. I de-risk a little bit more. We're hanging out at the 75. We're not really breaking above it. We're not really breaking below it. Pratt, come to my screen. Thank you. Um, yeah, so now we're hanging out at that $75 area. What a, 
sorry for uh, these wicks again, but now we're continuing to make newer highs, 7505. I'd be a fool if I got out of it all. Watch, watch, I'm gonna eat my words for saying that right now. It's gonna flush like a dollar on me. And just as I say that, it flushed 10 cents. No, but like in all real, all realness, what's my average? I'm at 7430, uh, I'm 70 pennies in the money on this. I gotta let this one run. I just finished telling you guys that I wanna let it run to 77. I can't be taking it out now. But simultaneously, my eye is on the market and I'm saying, okay, well, we're in the bottom end of that range. Yeah, we're above VWAP, but we're, you know, we're red on the market, obviously. And so I got to be cognizant of that, the fact that it's a red day, even though Roku is in, running independent of the market as a result of good earnings. But this is the, the ES right now. We're kind of holding that 50 period consolidating sideways. We've kind of been in a 10 point range between 41.25 and 41.35. That goes back to about 10.30 or so. So the better part of an hour, we've been in this range. Uh, the 200 periods hanging out around 41.38. Yesterday's close, let's get rid of these. Uh, I like, yeah, let's get rid of these ones here. Uh, yesterday's close, guys, is at 41.58. So that will obviously be an area of resistance uh, should we continue to make up, uh, make our way up. So I'm definitely gonna mark that off, 41.58, yesterday's close. Uh, obviously a, a, a decisive break of this 41.35 top puts us in a new tier on our way to stair stepping up possibly to yesterday's close. So look for a decisive break of 30 of 41.35. You know, sometimes we get these perfunctory breaks, but you know, well, uh, we won't get continuation. So that's what I'm looking for on the futures. Roku is absolutely pumping to the high side. Ah, wow, what a nice trade this one was, man. Building up the position. There we go, we take a little bit more out. We don't even get top wick there, sadly. But now we're in the 74 and a half. That's, sorry, 75 and a half. That's what it is now, 75.47. That's a high of day on Roku. This one continuing to stair step up, up 18 and two thirds percent on the day. Mary and E says, Sharif, Will we get a free fall Friday? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have any uh, good red shirts to wear on rotation at the moment uh, to kind of uh, to kind of like I have to like you know play the role there. But I don't know. Do we get one? Arun was saying something about that today. He was saying you know these Fridays before the long weekend tend to be a little bit quiet, and so the Thursday prior to that usually there's a bit more action. We're kind of seeing that. I don't know what the uh, the volume is today, uh, Ian, but you know seems to be a decent day. I think uh, I think we got to see that 4100 area break down. Uh, I think Arun mentioned 4090 to the downside as well. So that's the zone, guys. Uh, you know, you got to wait for that area to really kind of break down if we are going to get uh, a free fall Friday, right? So uh, you know, kind of keep that in mind. Um, let me actually just do this quick because this is kind of uh, you know sketching me out a bit. Uh, let me do that. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, no, just placing some orders as well. But, uh, you know, keep calling out what you guys are trading as well. Options expire Friday. Yeah, so, um, you know, th thinking that, uh, you know, tomorrow is going to be interesting for sure. Like Sharif said that, you know, the days before these, uh, these long weekends, they tend to be uh, quieter days, right? They tend to be quieter days. So, you know, maybe if you made some money today, uh, maybe it's time to take it easy tomorrow unless you do see something really set up nicely for you, right? So, you know, these are the things that kind of keep in mind. If the market didn't free fall after today's numbers on PPI, then no free fall Friday. Uh, like I said, guys, trust the levels. 4,100 to the downside uh, held very, very cleanly today, right? Uh, you know, it, it, it did break down a little bit, but uh, man, I was telling, I was telling Max, uh, you know, this 4,100 is probably going to be a long uh, and that's exactly what happened, totally agree, right? Dude. So, you know, you kind of had to uh, kind of keep that in mind. What what the heck is this? Uh, I'm John, random things on my chart here. I don't know what what this. No, this I agree totally with you there. today about that 4100 hold. Yeah, yeah, totally no, the 4100 well, yeah. was the level, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, so you, you gotta trust the levels, guys. I've been saying it all the show. Uh, everyone pretty much says it. Just trust your levels. Yeah. Uh, and and trust your setups. Yeah, guys. All right, we took a, another little baby piece here just to get our beak wet on the Roku profits. We're, we're long 74.25, we're hanging out here at 75, but I took as high out as uh, 75.30s. We're retracing a little bit here, to be expected, but I'd like to see, you know, that 75-ish level hold, and by ish meaning down maybe to the three quarter dollar to about uh, 74.75. If it holds within that range, you know, for the most part, and, and stair step up, 
uh, stair steps up, I, uh, I would greatly appreciate that, Roku. No, kidding, of course, tongue in cheek, but uh, we're, we're nicely in the long on this one and continuing to print. Um, let's see what else is going on here. FSLY is going as well. I know TWO uh, T -O, Twilio was also moving. Let me put TWLO. I have it over here. Okay, so it looks like we're retracing the 78. Let's bring in these charts here. This is TWLO. Looks like we got to 75, 79, 70 off that 71 bottom that we made uh, in the pre market. Nice big boy move up. Obviously, a lot of volatility at that 930, but then uh, basically straightens up after that. FSLY, very much near day's highs. This one is not done, if I had to guess. 1614 is where we are at now. Uh, 1628, that's the high, so very much nearer the highs than they are the lows. Nice bull flag continuation here. I wonder if this is a new bull flag forming. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit to figure out uh, what the daily looks on this one. Glean any levels? Yeah, so we talked about this one. Okay, so um, 18. I'm going to say we're probably going to encounter levels at every whole dollar because of this consolidation area here. There does seem to be a lot of price action. And so in all likelihood, we'll have, probably have resistance at the whole dollar and maybe even the half dollar. So look for resistance coming up into this area where we're in. We haven't been up here since last April, so almost going back a year. I think I mentioned that already. Um, that's, that's what I'm looking at here. Then Roku, obviously, I'll let that continue to run. Uh, MM doing nothing. SERA, this one's been kind of quiet, guys. I mean, it's up only 16%, but it's held a real nice pattern. Obviously, the notional move on this is Bubkiss. Looks like that 208 bottom, 275 <laughs> top. But uh, yeah, holding, holding nice. There we go. I like it, man. The animations, well, uh, you know, all the new uh, yeah. videos, all the new sounds. Yeah. Uh, man, it's sick, man. The, the, mm -hmm. the show is getting really cool, I think. Uh, it's been improving a lot. And, uh, Thanks, you know, man. this is a testament to, uh, to everyone on the show right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. It's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been really cool. Um, Apple is really testing my patience here. The market's really testing my patience. Uh, guys, what is happening here? I, I, oh, it's because I pressed this button. Oh, my God. Okay, so that's why I was like kind of confused of what was happening there. But yeah, the market is, uh, you know, testing oh again, the top goodness. end of this range. Uh, I did add to the short uh, on Apple here, but uh, now it lo interesting, interesting. Okay, uh, I saw it flip up to 45 there and then immediately stuffed down by sellers. Uh, so, you know, just watching the tape here, guys, and just being patient. I am sitting out of the money uh, about 10 cents and I am trying to bid and, and manage this position and, and you know, I'm just basically taking 10 cent scalps on it. Uh, but uh, and now we are flashing up to the high side here. So, you know, this is my bigger position of the two PLTR. I basically took out a lot of the profits there uh, close to that 10 level. I am actually offering out once again, but I don't know if it gets back to that level. Sometimes when you are in a position like this one on PLTR, for example, you do offer back up there, but you almost don't want it to get back up there because, you know, if it gets back up there, it means that there is a lot of buyers uh, present, right, uh, at these prices. So, you know, I'm managing that one. I am offering, but we'll see. I, I'd rather this one just kind of just fade the rest of the day. Well, both these positions Roku actually. On? I'd rather just both basically uh, fade just the rest of the day. But, uh, you know, we'll, we will see. 75, uh, 60. I look for Apple stop I'm in out it. shorts, 155.53, uh, then pull back. Interestingly enough that you said that, um, because, you know, my, my stop is obviously up there, right? So if it, okay, now there, okay, let me show you guys this, uh, because there is now uh, an offer there on Apple that just got chewed through and then kind of sold off there. So that was interesting. So clearly there are some sellers here. Uh, there was, again, it flashed. Uh, so it got chewed through, re-offered, hit a little bit, and then sold off again. So very, very interesting dun, 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 dun. here. Uh, you guys are the show. Congrats. Uh, oh, thanks, guys. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we wouldn't uh, be here if it wasn't for you guys. That being said, guys, smash the like button. We're only at 1.9K likes right now. Let's get this up above 2K, um, huh. you know, uh, you know yeah. in the beginning of this, uh, this midday show here. And let's, you know, get this up to 3K. Let's, let's send this up higher. If you like the show, like the video, and subscribe. That's my guy sick, killing sick, it there. Uh, yeah, killing like it. I said, man, the, yeah, the, the new animations, the videos, uh, everything mm -hmm. is so cool. 
Uh, you know, you guys got to smash the like button for that one. Thanks, guys. Um, all right, guys, we are absolutely printing, so let's hit an oldie but a goodie money, money, on money, Roku. Money, wow, money, what a move money, to the high money. side now. 75, 75. Uh, what's the high? Hold on quickly here, so I'll give you guys incorrect information. 75, 75 literally is the high. For now, of course, uh, we're going to look to 77s on this one, guys. I'm still holding 38% of the position. I've been taking baby outs on the way up here. These are not big boy outs because I want to be on the right side of this trade. And that right side of this trade, in my opinion, is that 77-ish area. So let's ride it. Let's be, let's be patient. The market's given us a, a, a good reason to stay in. We're continuing to trend higher on the market. 41.35 is where we're at now. We're at the top high of that range. We're breaking out. We talked about 41.35 being the breakout area of that range. Let's see if it breaks out with any you know, vigor and, and sustains itself above there. That's what we want to see for that continuation, possibly into yesterday's close, uh, which is 41.58. That, in my opinion, is going to be a possible resistance level if we're continuing to move up. So, uh, the market giving us a reason to stay in. Roku giving us a reason to stay in. 75.82 now is the high of day. This one is absolutely moving. Uh, someone asking me what's happening on Roku in case you're just joining us or you, you didn't hear. This is an earnings winner. They reported a net subscriber, uh, net increase in subscribers and users, which is, you know, like the holy grail usually for, uh, hasn't been lately, but, you know, was, once was to continue to grow and to add users. They did well. They also dropped the efficiency word. They said that they were going to cost cut. Wall Street wants to hear that at the moment as a result of, you know, the the sort of uh, kind of contraction period we find ourselves possibly getting into. So uh, that's the news there on Roku. Uh, sorry guys, today my chart is a little bit messed up. Again, I, I see you guys there in the chart, in the chat. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what's going on. Kind of can't do anything about while I'm on the show. We'll have a look at it after, no big deal. Uh, what's happening? Okay, so yeah, same question. Yeah, I have to set my filters, guys, so uh, I got to do that maybe when Ian's on or something. So just uh, keep looking here at the triangles as we're continuing to take some out in anticipation of that 76 break. In fact, let's go ahead and have a little bit more out here at, uh, let's say that uh, 75.95. You know, we'll kind of hang out five pennies in front of that whole dollar area and see if we can get filled. Uh, again, high of day on this one is 82s. Okay, so what else we got on board here? FSLY continues to head to the high side and print higher highs and higher um, higher days uh, or print high of days. And that's what I'm looking for there. 1636 continuation there. Uh, it's green candle after green candle. We talked about the levels on this one, but uh, you know, just yeah. th for me, I can't punch in here. It's like it's just I'm punching in way too high. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, don't don't chase guys. No. Uh, and you know, you're obviously already long. Uh, as well so you this is something that i've actually been working on uh, as well as like i don't want to ruin my average to a point where uh, it just kind of ruins the trade for me right so that's why i'm not like you know on these sell-offs uh here you know you could say like okay maybe apple is you know really starting to push down and you know really sell off here you get excited you might want to press that sell button for example here on this 155 breakdown right so, what if I had done that? Uh, and then my average is ruined, and now we are here testing the highs once again, right? Uh, and the market does look like it is kind of breaking out there. Uh, so, you know, going to be careful okay. with this one. Probably going to stop me out soon. Apple, uh, but that one's okay, right? So I've taken enough profits on it, uh, you know, for now, uh, that if I take the loss, it's not going to hurt me that badly. Uh, and there is also a bid on, uh, on PLTR as well. So interestingly enough, a uh, couple things here. Uh, kind of catching a little bit of a bid. Uh, is that Apple high of day? Uh, yes, it is, I believe so. Or was it higher in pre-market? Uh, let me actually just check the five minute here. Uh, no, so this is Apple high of day. Uh, it was yesterday's high of day as well, um, the 155.50 area, right? So that's what I'm basically, uh, you know, kind of shorting off of here. Um, and, you know, I'm going to trust this level until it's broken. And here we are kind of rejecting it once again, right? So. Uh, still working, uh, not working as you know swiftly or as uh, uh, I guess fast as I would like it. So, but uh, you know that being said, you gotta be patient. Uh, you gotta be patient uh, with your trades, right? And that's something I've been really trying to work on. Um, 
I'm just trying to read through the comments here. Uh, mention some more tickers, guys, oh. so I don't have to keep talking about Apple. Obviously, you know, this is the trade that I'm currently in. I'm trying to manage. I'm printing. Um, uh, you're printing on, on Roku? Is 93 is the high Let's now. Go. Guys, we're Let's knocking go. on the door of 76, and I'm sitting at 95s. I don't get the print, obviously, because it's two pennies below where my profit taker was. But, you know, it's it's a good trade. Let it, let it ride. Let it ride. Um, you know, where, where am I long? 74.25, so let's hold on to this one. All right, let's see what else is going on. Meta is relatively weak, eh? And I think that on any market decline, I think we could see Meta move down. I mean, like, look at, look at the chart, compare it. It's kind of like Leg or like Microsoft. They're both down similar amounts. Microsoft 1.6, Meta 1.85 to the downside. Uh, Apple looks stronger, Tesla looks strong, Google looks strong obviously today. Uh, Amazon, not so bad, even though it's 0.9 to the downside, it's above VWAP. Um, by a greater margin than uh, Meta is. So on any market retracement here, I want to be on guard for a Meta short. Uh, we're already at VWAP and we're, you know, looks like we're interested in breaking it. If we can get a, a little down move here on Meta, as I always look back and forth with my ES chart, that's what I'm doing here, guys, so you guys can follow along. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking along the lines of something like that. Let's see how that develops. Just want to put that trade idea out there, possible Meta short. Uh, into any weakness. Guys, we're continuing to see higher highs on FSLY, 1642 again. Uh, it's a bit of a slow mover though. Um, you know, not, not much to say about this one except get it on the dip. Uh, but it's got to give us a dip first. Look, at we had a nice little like, 15, 20 minute consolidation. This is more actually. It's about a half an hour consolidation area. And then you had the break of that and a continuation north. I, I mean, I don't know how to get into this, but I just keep mentioning it because it's high of days, right? Uh, it's worth, uh, it's worth mentioning. All right, uh, what else are we up to here? Not much, looking for any possible trades. Don't see much. Ian, what are you up to? Uh, I just got some out there uh, on Apple. Uh, and, and like I said, guys, I'm trying to manage this position uh, because just hanging up here uh, a little bit longer than uh, you know I would obviously like. Uh, so that being said, I am going to try to take these 10 cent scalps if they're given to me. Just so that if I do end up getting stopped out, I don't have like my full size position or anything like that. I'm still holding a good chunk of the position uh, for these moves down to the 155 area, 154.90. Those bids still remain, right? So, uh, you know, I'm still in the position. I'm still active in it. It is starting to pull back a little bit more, which is nice. Uh, and I am trying to offer again back out to one, uh, you know, 55.40. But uh, I've been managing this position quite well here. Um, you know, I'm 10 cents in the money, whatever, basically flat, who cares? But, uh, you know, I'm trying to, uh, you know, work for this level. Uh, and essentially, you know, I, get, I hate to use the word hope, but, uh, you know, hoping that these levels uh, remain resistance levels for now. I want to bring up a couple names here that you guys have been talking about in the chat. Uh, AMD uh, 83 is sort of a level. And uh, let's take a look at this one. Um, okay, so on the five minute here, we are kind of, uh, reclaiming this level. Uh, man, the moves uh, on these names have been just quite crazy. 86, uh, a level to the upside. Okay, so yeah, looking at the daily here, uh, it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, you know, the 86, 87 uh, area is seems like the resistance area for AMD and 81 to the downside. So a lot of names kind of trading these channels. So if you are trading around this 83 area now, uh, just kind of keep that in mind. You're basically trading in the middle of the range. You don't want to get chopped up, so to speak. Uh, you know, so keep in mind uh, the bigger levels or the bigger ranges. Obviously, you're gonna have intraday levels, guys. VWAP, you could always have those plays, uh, sort of speak. Um, you know, any any day really. But uh, just keep in mind that uh, you know when you are in the middle of these levels, there's gonna be a mixture of you know buyers and sellers, right? So uh, kind of keep that one in mind. Uh, Ian, someone else, yeah, Roku, go for it. Roku just broke through 76, guys. You're printing on Roku. Uh, right? Yes, 7613 <laughs> is now the high of day on Roku. As this one still continues to pump to the north side, guys, eye out for 77. Keep an eye out for 77. It's between 77 and 7750. And here's why I say that. Let's look at the 15. Uh, this is the kind of the algo move, I mean, it, obviously a lot of it has to do with algos, but you gotta assume there's probably people waiting to hear what they're, they have to hear, and are probably punching in as humans as well. And uh, well, looks like we got to the high there about 77, what's the high exactly? 77.10. So yeah, so that 77 area, definitely where I'm gonna take profit. I'll probably take profit before that though. 76 and three quarters, 76 and a half-ish area, you know, it never really, I don't wanna say never, but it, it, 
doesn't always come up to that exact level. You know, it's that exact level area. So it might as well be safe, better safe than sorry. 76.20 now is the high of day on Roku. 76.30 now is the high of day on Roku. This one's <laughs> heading to the north side. It, it, it looks good. It's probably time to take a little bit of profit here. Let's go ahead and take some out here. There we go, we get that print. And then here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna start sitting at levels, key levels, guys, okay? So now we're gonna sit in front of the half dollar. I'm gonna sit at 47s here. So let's go ahead and put that in. And then the next level will be again, probably that three quarter dollar. Um, there's, there's the chart. So I'm gonna use this chart for, for now, just so that people can see what the price action, there it is. And uh, so we'll continue to pump to the high side here. No other trades for me, except to mention that FSLY made another new high, but it did a bit of a you know, topping tail candle that we don't really wanna see. Uh, 1675 is the high of day. Now we've retraced back into the mid 50s, 1654. Uh, you, know, you don't wanna see this candle close like that. Uh, I mean, I don't anyway. I wouldn't go long if I saw it close like that. Then you typically see reversals off these. There we go, now back into the low 1650s. If it closes any higher, you know, it'll give, more of a bullish look, let's see what it does. I'm definitely worried if we make a newer low here be below that 1640 area, I'd be on guard for that. So FSLY kind of, uh, you know, this is why I didn't want to get in at these levels. You just don't know when it's going to turn. It's so extended. Uh, you know, you want some sort of retracement either to a key level or a moving average that you use or something along those lines, you know, different with every stock, guys. All right. Uh, not much, not uh, not much else to mention. Let's see what the chat is up, chat is up to. Meta deflating, yeah. Much to the chagrin of my personal account, Meta has not looked good lately, <laughs> right? Um, um, but yeah, that's what it is. So we'll have to kind of ride the storm there. PLT trying to go green. You've been trading PLTR. I've been trading PLTR. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, guys, I haven't been paying much attention to that one. I've been trying to manage this Apple position a little bit more and looking for other trades. Uh, as well, but uh, uh, I'm starting to continue to print here on, on Apple. I got this bid down at 05, you know, waiting patiently in line. It finally hit me there at 05, so, you know, there you go. Uh, patience pays, I guess, you know, collected some fees on that one as well. It's trying to, you know, it's struggling with this 155 area, but now uh, sitting a little bit more comfortable in this trade, about 20 cents in the money uh, oh, wow. here on the short on Apple. Um, and you know, obviously, you know, 20 cents may not be uh, much to you guys or whatever, but it's always relevant to your sizing guys. So, you know, that's why I was, uh, you know, kind of focusing on that one. It was uh, getting close to that level. You gotta trust your levels. Uh, what about AMC? What about AMC? Uh, why, don't, why don't you guys tell us in the chat? Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't looked at AMC in a while. Uh, you know, the memes kind of popped off a little bit uh, was it last week uh, with BBBY a little yeah, bit? Maybe the week, week before. That, yeah. It might have been the week previous there. And, you know, there was some trades uh, on, on on all the memes, uh, all the meme stocks. Uh, AMC up 3.5% today, 20 mil volume. That's nothing, uh, you know, to write home about, guys. Um, the daily looks kind of weird on that one. But uh, sure that one there. But, uh, yeah, AMC, not really, you know, exciting oh too much uh, around these $5 areas. Um, let's send it to uh, Brendan for uh, happening now. Hey guys, we are heading into lunch hour uh, on a red note still, but well off the lows. Obviously, this was uh, full percent and change to the downside. Uh, last time we took a look at this, 0.61 right now, 0.61 for both the S&P and the Dow. There or thereabouts for the Russell as well. A little bit of strength in the Russell 2000 once again. NASDAQ Composite and the 100. Uh, same story, 0.6 or thereabouts. So still in the red, but heading in the right direction. If you're with us pre-market, we uh, got you caught up on Roku. We got you caught up on Shopify and Tesla. Yeah, nice report from Electrek after the close yesterday. Model Y sold out for Q1 in uh, the U.S. There's Shopify, meanwhile. Uh, no love for this thing whatsoever today. Just grinding along day lows right now for Shop, guys. Thanks for that, Brendo. Shop, yeah. you know. It's been tough for them lately. You know, they're, they're a good Canadian story, and we always want to support the Canadian. Uh, yeah, we want to support Canadian, just like uh, the, our American friends support American. It's what it is. It's nationalistic. It's good, it's good for the country. But, you know, they've, they, made a, they made a couple of boo-boos. Let's put it that way. The, the boo-boos uh, were, you know, just like get overestimating really kind of how the post-COVID shopping demand would be anyway. 
Yeah, so, like you gotta imagine, like obviously yeah. uh, those numbers were a little bit inflated yeah. during that time. Yeah. Obviously, right? So now they're having to kind of, uh, I, I, you know, I was reading that they're raising their prices to kind of compete with uh, Amazon. Amazon has another thing going on as well. It's gonna compete directly with Shopify, right? So, you know, Shopify obviously getting hurt today. It's down 16%. Uh, I had one trade on it earlier this morning. Um, I've been really trying to uh, work on a different kind of approach to these SSR stocks. I like the shorts in the pre-market, obviously, but when it, once it turns SSR, it, it's kind of really hard to get shorts. I think Neil mentioned like he was trying to get short, didn't fill them. Um, so you know, with SSR, you do have to wait patiently and kind of get run over on the offer, right? So you know, you, you got to be careful with that one. But essentially, what I've been working on. Uh, with uh, these SSR uh, names is looking for bounces, right? Uh, you know, so my play here was 45. I was originally looking at 47. 47. That level got knocked out uh, pretty swiftly there, uh, uh, basically in pre-market. So the next level I was looking at was 45. And essentially what I'm looking for uh, is, you know, bids start to stack up. Uh, and then offers really start to get hit, right? So that's exactly what was happening here. Uh, it turned out just to be like a you know a quick twenty cents scalp. Uh, that's okay. I got in at uh, 05, risking five cents, twenty cents uh, win. So you know four to one. I'll take that every day. Um, and then obviously you know I was wrong about the level because it it, it collapsed and you know got uh, you know those bids got slammed. Eventually it did give a bigger bounce here around 44.40. That being said though, my level was 45. I took the trade. Uh, manage it as best as I could. It ended up being a winner, so I can't complain about that one. Uh, it was a good trade, but no other trades for me uh, today on Shopify. Um, definitely, obviously, has offered you uh, some decent opportunities, but uh, like I said, I was looking for the long mainly. Got what I was looking for and uh, kind of ran away with that one. Um, heck so. Uh, <laughs> let's take a short Rivian. Meta below VWAP. Uh, we, can, we can take a look at Meta. I know we were talking about that one. I, I know someone Jeez. else was in that trade as well. Uh, I was short around 174.50 they mentioned. Uh, and now this one's falling back in as well. The market is kind of fading um, as well off this 41.35 oh, high, right? So, you know, Meta is kind of fading here I below back uh, VWAP down Damn 2%. It. So, you know, considerably weaker than some of the other large cap uh, tech stocks here. Uh, so that seems to be a, a good short. Uh, so I think it was, his, their name was Paul. Uh, you know, so congratulations on that one. Um, the short off of that 175 area, uh, that seems to be working. Uh, and it is a pretty clean level. It looks like it held here uh, in the morning. Kind of gave that exhaustion move that I was speaking a little bit about earlier. And now, you know, fading back down. Probably gonna test these lows. Just look at all that selling coming through. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm very upset that I didn't take the meta trade. I just finished going on uh, a rant about how it was relatively weak and any downturn, but we didn't really see a downturn in the market. Maybe that's why I really wasn't wise to the whole thing. But yeah, Meta making a move and breaking that 174, really giving you a nice opportunity down into that 173 and a quarter. It's been relatively weak and it's kind of making a bit of a top, circle top, you know, frown, but a frowny face. So, you know, always sell the frowny face. That's kind of the look there. Um, I wanted to mention quickly, Roku. So we got out through the break of 76.50. It then, we then put our, our out at 76.74, okay? So one penny in front of the, the three quarter dollar, it goes all the way to 76.62 and we don't get filled. So uh, now it's retraced back below 75. We're kind of, sorry, back below 76, but it's holding 76 now. Looks like it's retracing up. I was gonna say, you know, this kind of looked exhausted here. It was time for me to get out but I'm only holding 8% of the position left. Might as well see if we can really retest and come close to that 77, but we talked about it. The high yesterday was 77.10. We got up to 76.62, so, you know, for all intents and purposes, they're kind of they're kind of close. Uh, you know, if this one kind of, I'm gonna say if this one breaks below 75.50, I'll be out of this one. So I'll probably put a stop below 75.50, otherwise I'll let it run. I'll give it some room, that's about 50 pennies from where it's at now. So Roku looking good, uh, but um, you know, starting to slow down a little bit here. We'll see if there's continuation. CYH and FSLY continue to look super good, man. CYH, we're now high of day 766. It's just one green candle after another. Let's look at the one minute chart real quick. This is the three minute. Yeah, so it's 
choppy-ish. I mean, if you're looking at it from a one minute time frame, I can see why you know that you may see this as choppy, but it, if you look at the bigger picture here, it holds the 50 period really well. So if you were using that, and I wouldn't see why you wouldn't, given how many times it's touched it uh, and rejected off it, you, you know, you probably hold. Uh, but the three minute definitely kind of filters out a lot of that noise, and I feel like that's why I've been trying to employ it a lot more. But anyway, uh, an interesting area to pick this up at, if there's a retracement, it's relatively strong, so 50%. So an, a good area is that 70, I want to say 70, sorry, 70, 730 or 740 area. It seems to be an interesting buy zone there that seems to be an area of resistance we couldn't break through, so pro likely area of support. So if I was to look to see for a dip trade, that would be an interesting area to pick something up. Otherwise, you know, I'm not gonna punch high. FSLY, I, I was like, oh, this is a, you know, a reversal candle, this and that. Well, you know what? It looks like it's got other ideas. It's still continuing to head to the high side, starting to make uh, higher highs here as we break and continue to head to 16.75. We're about 16.50 at the moment, so. This one's been a decent trade, but it hasn't really given me an opportunity. I mean, unless you, you're talking about punching in at 16.30, and then why would I punch in at 16.30? That's not really a level, right? Like, I mean, I wouldn't get, that would be a random level to select. So that one is like that. Uh, okay, what else we got here? Not much else going on. I, I, just, I just got into this position here uh, on AMD short, basically off of this 83 area. I was just looking at a lot of things and they're just kind of fading off resistance, like specifically Tesla and Meta as well. So I was looking at something else. I didn't want to chase those moves, obviously. Uh, those moves are a little bit too far gone. Uh, you know, basically retracing all the way back down to VWAP. Uh, but now, you know, I am here uh, short on, uh, on AMD here, basically risking off of these highs, 83.30. Uh, that's basically the high of the day. Uh, I guess live uh, market hours, obviously, you know, it was a little bit higher there before uh, in pre-market, but uh, now short here. Uh, let's see how this one goes. Uh, giving it about 30 cents risk, guys. So let me actually just get my stop ready there um, on that one. Um, but uh, yeah, now new short position there. I'm still offering out on Apple as well. So, you know, still managing that one. I'm glad that I got some out there closer to 155, but it looks like that level uh, kind of held, right? So I, I'm gonna leave my offer there. I was thinking about, hmm, should I, should I offer around this 30 area again? Basically my price, you know what? Let me be patient with this one. Uh, you know, I've taken a decent amount of the size out. I wanna get a better price if I am going to get short uh, on it more so, right? So. Uh, you know, I'm leaving my offer there at 42. Let's see if that hits. If it doesn't hit, then, uh, you know, we'll keep rocking this position as is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny how, you know, you can go from being, you know, 30 cents in the money, uh, life is good, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, here we go back again, uh, back to flat, uh, you know, actually out of the money a few cents. But obviously, you know, I've I taken the profits on it, so I'm not going to cry about being out of the money, uh, you know, five cents. Still risking off at that higher level, guys, uh, to, the, to the top side. Uh, Ian, I love how you trade. We'd love to see a little bit more energy. I'd really like to learn from you. Um, guys, you know, it is tough uh, trading live here on the show, right? So I'm doing my best, guys. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing my best to get in some trades and, and uh, you know, keep trading and keep that uh, energy up. I'm also trying to concentrate too, right? So, you know, uh, bear, bear with me there. Uh, any idea, Carvana? Let's take a quick look at Carvana. Um, I, I was trading this one a little bit uh, a while back there when it was kind of popping off. Um, you know, back up, uh, just looking at the daily, when it was reaching those like levels like 18, 19, uh, that was quite, uh, quite insane and quite interesting there. Um, you know, some fun times, but now we're all the way back down to, uh, to 10 guys. So, you know, quite the sell off. Uh, Carvana, let's take a quick look at the five minutes. I uh, always like to start here. Actually, let, let's start back here at the daily guys. So, so let's actually do like a, a, you know, a top down approach here. Um, so it seems like 13 is a level. Uh, just looking at this, you know, it acted as support there, eventually broke down. Uh, and then yesterday, it seems like that was the high as well. Let's just double check that one by looking at the five minute here. Uh, yeah, it looks like the high was around this 1280 area, right? So if it gets back up there, you got to, you know, assume uh, that, uh, you know, it's going to continue to act as that resistance uh, just because it was such a, a key level uh, back here on the daily, right? So that's probably my idea here for Carvana. Uh, just waiting, being a little bit more patient, seeing if it gets back up to these highs and, and looking for a short up there uh, on Carvana. 12.30 is, is good, you know, to kind of risk off of that area first uh, since that was the high of day. But uh, if that blows through, you know, got to quickly stop out and, and give it to that 13 uh, area. I like that level a lot more. 
Um, so that is, uh, is kind of like my, uh, my Carvana idea. Uh, for me, I stayed away from that one. Uh, I did get the fill on Apple, guys. Uh, you know, so I did get that fill nice. um, on, uh, on, on the offer there on Apple. Uh, so a little bit more short now. Um, there is size there at 50, but uh, obviously, you know, that one's not going to be uh, anything too big. I think it was like a few hundred lots. Um, like I said, guys, the market continues to kind of hunt for liquidity where it can find it. So I'm not gonna, you know, bank on that size holding or anything like that. It's more so no. just the level, like the general zone, the general area, um, you know, that's gonna hold as resistance or continue to hold as resistance. Uh, that being said, if I take the L here, uh, it will basically be uh, a little bit positive for me, uh, basically flat, uh, because I've been taking out these profits here, right? So. Uh, been good trading so far on Apple. Uh, can still get run over. The market is still testing these highs. 41.35. Mm -hmm. Look at this channel, man. 41.35. Uh, you know, basically down to 41.25. So, 10 handle range here in the midday. Uh, obviously, you know, not going to be uh, too too exciting. But let's range trade, right? Uh, that's what we're basically trying to do here. All right, I'm out of my Roku position, guys. Um, I said I'd give it to the. Half dollar break, it broke below 75.50. I may have gotten shaken out of this one as it now pumps back to the high side and looks to test 76 again. But a viewer was asking, what's up with Lunar, L-U-N-R, um, Future Eddie? Well, that's how these kind of stocks trade, dude. Um, or person, I don't know. Um, here's the deal. They usually make these big moves and then they find areas of consolidation. You know, they either trend a couple of bucks this way or that way. They'll be they'll be range bound. They'll lose their kind of oomph. At some point, you know, the buyers are gonna run out. Uh, either sellers will overwhelm them or you know they'll become an equilibrium between the two, in which case this is the kind of price action you're gonna see. And so, you know, you kind of try to stay away from this. At least I do. I don't like to range trade these. Um, until they either decide to break to the upside or the downside again. Now, you're like in our case, you'll probably have to secure shorts for this because you know this is a kind of a random stock that may be cost efficient, that may not be, depending on how much it's going to cost you and what your projected move is, how many dollars per share you're looking to get, etc. You have to do your cost analysis. But the point is to kind of look for these ones to slow down and then to either become parabolic to the high side or the downside again and follow the trend. Like in this case, uh, what you'll see, and, and this is not always true, by the way. I'm going to preface this by saying this is not always true. You do get these, like, they are hard to trade in the sense that, you know, we're talking about $3, $4 at a time. But when you look at the chart ex post facto, you see that there was a general trend. Oh, we're going to have to drop that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ex post facto, which just means after the fact. That's all in Latin for after the fact, right? Um, it's a legal term. That's the only reason I use it, right? Um, and so basically... Uh, You're they, spoiling them with the words. Right? Know, right? You're spoiling them too much with the words. Uh, so basically, <laughs> they're, they're just, there seems to be a trend with these, either to the upside or the downside. Now, mind you, there, there are times where, you know, they're completely sporadic, the halt levels, right? They don't look like they're trending. Like the halt levels here are clearly trending up. Um, so it is a little tricky. I just want to preface that by saying, you know, it's not always happening. All right. Anyway, out of Roku... Uh, not in any trades, but definitely looking for more here. The market is definitely at uh, topping up, making a bit of a, a top. We're talking about that 41.35 being the level on the ES March contract. It's building up a position around it. It's actually holding the 50 period. The 50 period is trending up, and it's making higher lows. So, you know, if I had to guess, I'd say this market may continue, right? But we'll see. That 41.30 has definitely been a level over and over and over. Arun's mentioned it, and it's been... A, one of the ones I've kept on my chart because it's been that that kind of a persistent level, Ian. Uh, the market kind of pulling back a little bit there. It looks like that ad on Apple was uh, decent. Someone asked me a question, um, Ian, do you trade Amazon? Actually, I traded on Amazon earlier around this 100 level. That didn't work. I stopped out there. Uh, it looks like that one's fading back below now around this 100 level. So I, I still like the over under here. Uh, I brought it up late. Uh, I haven't looked at it recently. I, you know, obviously, I've been managing a couple of my other positions here. But it looks like this over-under on Amazon uh, seems pretty good, right? So uh, we, I might have missed a trade here because there was this consolidation and now breaking down, uh, inching closer to VWAP. So that being said, I might have missed a trade. But, um, you know, if it comes back up there, uh, it's definitely going to be something to uh, kind of keep an eye on. So uh, I have it up on my side charts now. Potential trade idea there on Amazon. If it creeps back oh, closer to uh, to 100, uh, I'm going to try that over under on the short 
uh, side uh, here on Amazon. But uh, guys, I, I don't want to you know chase this trade. Obviously, um, you know I wouldn't encourage chasing trades. Obviously, so you know just kind of stick to your guns uh, and you know stick to your setups and whatnot um, on that one. Uh, shop flat bottom break. Uh, let's take a back a, a quick look back at shop because I know we were talking about it a little bit earlier. Uh, we were talking about bid just kind of continuously getting slammed. Uh, let's take a quick look at the five minute here. Uh, so I wouldn't say that the five are, you know, I guess there is sort of like this flat bottom that kind of building weak. up yeah. around this 4440 area, right? So if that continues to break down, I wouldn't be surprised, um, you know, if that breaks down and we continue to fade lower. I don't know if, you know, it breaks down on volume, like taking that breakout per se, um, just because, you know, just in the nature of the day right now, we are, uh, you know, obviously, uh, what time is here? It's past noon, right? So, you know, we, we are obviously uh, trading into uh, the later hours of the day. So volume is going to die down. Breakouts probably won't be that great. Uh, so, you know, kind of keep that in mind. But, yeah, this one is kind of setting up now uh, to just kind of break that level, the last line of defense, so to speak, here for shop for today. Uh, and, you know, continue to fade lower here. Uh, uh, shop has been getting hurt. Uh, you know, I talked about getting that SSR bounce long there. Uh, that was a good trade too. But uh, it seems like the show was just much better as soon as it got back to VWAP. Couldn't really hold above. And just kind of shorting these lower highs here uh, on, on, on shop has, has worked. Uh, I did get these fills, guys, on the bids here on Apple. Uh, this ad here was money, man. So again, continue to trust mm. your levels. Uh, oh, wait, wait a second here. I'm actually also uh, in the money, <laughs> kind of deep here on, hey. on uh, AMD as well. 30 cents in the money on AMD, right? So uh, guys, you know, have faith in these levels. It got scary there for a second. And like I said, you know, there was size at 155.50, but I wasn't banking on that size to hold uh, anyways, right? Uh, but uh, here we are now. Apple, 50 cents in the money. Uh, AMD, 30 cents Atta in the boy. money. Uh, PLTR, 20 cash, cents in the money baby. as well. So, you know, be, be patient. Look at this big sell candle on the ES, guys. Look at that five-minute sell candle oh, there so uh, coming through, right? So be patient. Trust these levels, guys. I was, you know, I talked about the whole show. I was looking for resistance areas that have been, you know, basically weekly resistance or, you know, yesterday's high a day or whatever, trying to short against those. Uh, and here we go. Uh, it's starting to work. Beer Money Scalper says, congrats, Ian. There you go. Love in the chat. All right, guys, I'm looking at Tesla here. And this is an interesting area. Now, I don't want to go against the market, but I, am, I want to be cognizant of this area. Yes, we are at VWAP for Tesla. It's been a good level for us lately. If you go back and look yesterday, we had a couple of nice bounces off VWAP that we could have taken long. So uh, looking here for a possible bounce on our friend Tesla, it looks like we're hanging out at that 14 and a quarter, uh, maybe a range. I, I want to say like a, we didn't quite get down to 214, maybe 214.20 and then that 214.50 area, so about a 30 penny range. You know, it could be more. I'm just saying for the moment, that's what it is. I wanna see if we hold this, but is it one of those ones that I wanna front run? I don't know. I don't feel that confident about it. There's not enough C word there, conviction, for that uh, as we do break through the, um, the VWAP level all the way down. Where are we at here? Where do we get down to? 04s, we, we hold uh, 14s for now. But uh, let's see what this one brings. I mean, let's see if it sets up. I just don't want to punch in here. Yeah, not confident enough for that. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, it looks like a nice little retracement on all these big caps. You saw Ian take Apple South, obviously a big boy play there. Um, Sarah, we were talking about this one earlier, S-E-R-A. This one is now printing high up days again. It's a bit of a slow mover, but we commented about how it held VWAP quite nicely here on every retracement. Then you have that continuation. If you put VWAP at your risk here, you were not disappointed, you were rewarded, and then you get that bull flag continuation. Now we're looking to knock on the door of $3 as we have a 297 high on SERA. Not a bad move. Let's go out and look at the daily on this one real quick. I, I think I did already, but you know, I look at so much that I got to, it bears worth looking at guys. So $3, obviously a level that's uh, evidenced by this area over here at 284.3. We've taken that out now. So that's a nice continuation. Then we're also looking at this 345. So let's say 350 in the face. So that's going to be the next level here. I think if we break through that $3, we're at 297. Let's not count our chickens before they hatch yet. Uh, let's break through $3 first. I might take a, like a baby long into the, the only issue with this one was, I remember looking at it earlier and saying, well, why is it so spready? Let's find out over here. Um, let's go, yeah, let's take off Roku since we're done our trade on that, S-E-R-A, and that's a NASDAQ stock here. Let's see, okay, so 
one penny spread, two penny spread. Okay, now three. Uh, at the moment, it's not looking too bad in terms of a, uh, let's take a long here and test. Now, there's gonna have to be some ground rules. The ground rules are gonna be, if it breaks that two and three quarter area, I'm out. That's a clear top here. Look at the how many tests we have at that two and three quarter over here and multiple times over here. So that's gotta hold, that's gotta be a level of support. So if I'm gonna punch here, I gotta get out if it breaks a three quarter, I can always get back in. So let's go ahead and take like, you know, a couple of uh, shares here and uh, we're gonna punch. We get it at 288. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a couple of levels to add only 10% uh, of the normal amount at different levels here. Let's sit at 280, so let's sit at 281. If we can get a, a dip trade at 281. And then again, if it breaks at two and three quarters, I'll be out. And then I'll have to look as to how to get back in. But we have a bit of a topping tail candle on the three minute, which is kind of discouraging a little bit. Look at this over here. If we close like this, it doesn't look that good. Um, so we'll see, we have a big wicking candle here, bigger bodied candle, which is always better. You always wanna see bigger bodied candles unless you're looking for a reversal or something. Uh, but anyway, so 297 is a high, we're long 288. We're kind of build our way into this. If we can break through three, we wanna test three and a half, but we'll have to get there first, Ian. Uh, guys, this is why you take your profits. Uh, look, look at this, uh, I was just talking about literally Five minutes ago, I was like, oh, look at this sell candle coming through. Guys, look at this buy candle coming through. Uh, this buy candle is coming through right at the bottom of that range, 41.25. Uh, and, you know, testing back to the top end here, right? So went from being 50 cents in the money on Apple to being uh, back to 10 cents only in the money, uh, basically flat on the trade. Uh, Amazon is making a push back up here. There's a lot of buying actually coming through uh, here on this one. Uh, Amazon is making this push back up to uh, 100 as well, right? So... Uh, man, I hate to be like kind of over leveraged on the on the on the short side here, but uh, a couple of things here just kind of setting up, uh, you know, for potential uh, ads here. So actually, let me let me get on this one. I uh, let me let me start that hit. position. Why did I not hit there? I'm uh, an idiot. What just happened there? Uh, am I not? Oh, it's because I offered. Oh, it's okay. I, I missed the. I tried to cross and get it. I, I missed it. So there I am now, short on Amazon against this 100 area. Uh, let me set up that stop. Uh, I want to give it a little bit more space above 100 uh, in case it does, you know, kind of test that level again. It looks like it is going to, right? So uh, Apple looks like it's testing uh, back up to 155.50 as well. I think, you know, I've taken enough on that one. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know, add one more time here. Uh, on that one, Snapchat. it seems like you know the more and more this level continues to get tested, uh, I feel like it's just, it's just gonna eventually just break. Uh, so I'm not gonna add on that trade. Uh, I can show you guys that one. Uh, but uh, guys, this is why you take your profits. And I was like, I was seeing the buying coming in here uh, around 144 or 154.80. And I was Ooh. like, I better get a little bit more out here, uh, you know, because I've been so patient with this trade. So let me let me take most of it out here. Uh, on that one and that's exactly what I did and right here right back uh, all the way back up to 155.40 uh, basically flat uh, you know for me again and you know this time if I stop out I'll lose 10 cents on the remaining position that I have uh, I'm not gonna be sad about that at all uh, Brendo in the chat saying snap investor day underway snap user growth gained 25% in the past 10 months so big news headline we'll keep our eye on snap it, I believe, let me just double check real quick here. It is down 1.8%, 1.9% now on the day. So we'll keep our eye on that one as, you know, the, the call is on and, or the investor day is on and uh, the, the stock may react. So again, sorry about the wicks on the candles, guys. I know you guys keep mentioning that chat. I got to apologize about that. We're long the Sarah, S-E-R-A, we're long 88s. We're looking for a breakthrough now, 95. We've been topping out at 95, 97 over and over, looking for that three break. In fact, I've got a resting order. If we get that 302 break, if we get up to 302, I will um, I will be taking that long there. So 
the whole idea is to wait for confirmation here. Uh, getting an exploratory long initially. There we go. Now we're back up to 97s. There goes 302. I don't get the fill. Okay, no, I do get the fill. It flushes back down below three. So this one's always dangerous. Now I I'm going to have to really watch out here. We need to see continuation. If this one flushes to the south side, I'm going to be in trouble. But I'm long here. I'm in the money. I'm 96s. Now I've got I've got a 50% position on a on a small stock. So this is by no means dangerous. But got to execute properly here. Now I've got a resting dip trade sitting here at 80s. If this gets filled, I need to be really careful. Um, my out has to be, like I talked about earlier, but the break of 75. That's an area, the area of support, previous resistance that it has to hold if my theory is to work out. So, you know, it may wake me in and wake, may wake me out um, by a couple of pennies. That's the cost of doing business in trading. Even though your theory may be right, you may get shaken out as a result of, you know, a, a couple of pennies against you here and there. So that's just normal, but I have to live by that 75 area, and that's what I'm gonna do. We're, we're holding in the 90s here. I don't like this. Um, it, this has to continue. Look at how it looks on the three minute chart here. It looks very bad. Uh, this is a very ugly candle if you're a momentum uh, small cap crap trader. Uh, this is, uh, it's like, uh, you know, a candle, a reversal candle, basically yelling, get out, get out. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna see this one through. It's a small amount. There we, I don't get the fill yet. Uh, now we're back into 83s, 82s. I think I'm sitting, where am I sitting here? At 80s or 81s? I'm still not getting filled, but we're holding this level. I'm gonna see if we can get down into 75. If we don't, uh, I'll let it go long. If we do, it's, it's all over for this trade. It's up 25% on the day. Slowing a little bit, uh, slowing down a little bit now. Uh, but you know, this one could get going at any moment. Quickly here, I wanna find out what uh, the uh, specs are on this. It's a 25 million share float. So now we're hanging out at 80, so I could get filled any minute, so I just gotta be careful. 25 million share float, so that, you know, that could go. Uh, it's not micro by any means, but it could definitely go. Sarah Prognostics is, um, okay, I just got filled there at 80. Sorry, I keep interrupting myself. That's funny. Uh, we're holding 80s. It bears, it's probably not a bad idea to put a resting order here, but we kind of saw what it did to the other one. It just kind of like blew through it. So I kind of want to keep my eye on this one. So I won't talk about the, uh, the what's it called? The, the, the description of the company uh, in a second, just kind of keep my eye on it. So we get that dip trade. What's our average now on this? 294. So yeah, it's not too bad. If we can bounce from here, what does it look like? It look, doesn't look good. The three minute chart looks absolutely horrible. But uh, I'm gonna stick by my guns here and say 275, and then I'll be out again. Yeah, I, I like that. Uh, I, you know, have a plan and stick to it, uh, just like you said uh, on that one, Sharif. Um, I, I was reading earlier in the chat, someone said, uh, how do you kind of make a strategy around VWAP? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, huh. you know, bank on a strategy on VWAP. Just, you know, VWAP is a good tool to use. And, you know, you see it on all our charts. I'm sure everyone uh, at home is, is using VWAP as well. Um, you know, it's obviously a big wow, institutional thing, right? Uh, but essentially, you know, Luca oh. mentions this a lot as well as that, um, you know, people get, uh, get commissions based on how far away they buy uh, or, or short, uh, you, know, when, you know, when the price is far away from VWAP, right? So kind of keep that in mind. There's always going to be, uh, you know, buyers and sellers around that VWAP level. So I wouldn't necessarily like, you know, put stops at that level or, you know, make strategies, you know, specifically on that level. But uh, wait for moves like this, right? Uh, look at this move on Tesla. It went down to VWAP, kind of exhausted the level, exhausted some stops, uh, and then made the bounce up, right? So, you know, when something like this happens, uh, I want to think that something, you know, some, it's a little bit stronger on the day if it's holding above VWAP. So, you know, you can kind of gauge that if you're in a position and whatnot. Uh, I want to look at Amazon because I think Amazon made a similar position. And here I am, haha, in the short. Uh, you know, so I, I'll be honest, guys, I'm not liking this position uh, just because it's kind of hanging around this 100 area. And, you know, like I said, um, you know, it made this consolidation, broke down, tested VWAP and then bounced. And now we're right back here. So, you know, I'm, re I'm kind of regretting this position, but I just want to be patient, let it hit my stop. It, it's a smaller position, so I'm not going to be like mad or anything like that. If I take the L on it is what it is. Uh, you know, you always got to take responsibility for pressing buttons. But, um, you know, that being said, uh, this is not my favorite position right now. Uh, I was actually looking at uh, AMD because that one, uh, despite this, you know, big market move up, 
uh, and the bounce off the lows here, AMD uh, has actually kind of held this level. Uh, so if anything, I think AMD is probably the better short. Apple as well. Apple's really struggling with that 155.50. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you guys are in, you know, been following these trades, I think lean more towards uh, those trades for sure. Uh, guys, I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not like in the Amazon trade. PLTR, I'm still in that short as well. And it's funny because, um, you know, you look at the position board, I'm in these four shorts. Um, but uh, yeah, PLTR, I got some out there at 996. Uh, oh, I actually did get, okay, I actually didn't notice that uh, at all. I was just kind of busy managing some of my other positions, but uh, I actually got some out there at 996. So, you know, good on me for kind of placing those bids. Uh, you know, those resting orders because I got that out there. It's kind of struggling with 10 still. Uh, guys, this one's on autopilot. I have one more bid out for the rest of the position here in the 980s if it comes back down there. Let me actually just cancel uh, that offer. I think, you know, this trade has kind of come and gone. Um, if, you know, it gets back up there, I'll probably just stop it. Uh, what's eh? my price? 1016. Yeah, okay, let's move my stop up then. Um, you know, let's move it up to uh, that, uh, basically that lower high, uh, so that if it does get up there, I'm just gonna stop out and, you know, it's gonna, I'm gonna, you know, take a four cents win uh, on that position. If it does, so, you know, it's trailed my stop now up to this 10.10 area, 10.12 area. If it comes back out there, I'll stop out. That'll be the end of the day for me on, uh, on PLTR. But uh, yeah, this one has been a good trade so far uh, for me on that one. Apple testing again this 155.50. Let me show you that, guys. Uh, this level here, guys, there, there's like a couple hundred lots there. It's about to get chewed through. Uh, about to get chewed through. Uh, it's printing there on the offer, guys. All these green prints. Okay, so it gets stopped out there on Apple. Still up on the name nicely. Uh, let's see this now. Let's. I'll, I'm really interested to see what happens here. If the 155.50 level breaks back down again, I might hop back into the short. Uh, gonna be patient though, that was a lot of buying that just came through. Uh, some decent volume as well. Okay, yeah, so we are ripping uh, off of that 155.50 area. Uh, I might have to flip long on this, honestly, uh, because that was a lot of buying that just came through uh, there on Apple. And I'm hearing Sean to my right as well, saying yeah. here goes Google. Google. Uh, a lot of Pump things just it. ripping to the upside, guys. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just restarting here. Uh, I had to organize everything. Uh, and I'm not ready to go yet, but I will yeah, be yeah, sorry, shortly. Sorry. Yeah, I'll hold on. There we go. Okay, good. Uh, the the charts, you know, uh, they're, they're doing it again, but it's okay. At least like the, the previous history, it's uh, it's a little bit better there. So you can kind of see the ins and outs a little bit more. Um, all right. So I feel very foolish for not having taken this Tesla VWAP dip. I mean, it's the one we talked about. It's uh, the one I didn't take because I, you know, I didn't have the C word, but absolutely holds on to that. And you know what? In hindsight, look at that. VWAP was actually near yesterday's close. So you have those two areas kind of being in the same area, kind of gives it a bit more strength. That 24, I want to say 20, 214, 25, that was yesterday's close. VWAP was at that 214.30, right? So very close to each other. Should have definitely taken that, did it but now it is absolutely pumping uh, to the high side. 216, uh, I think we just touched 75s. 217.65 though, that's a high a day. So we'll be keeping our eye out for that as a possible level of um, resistance here on our friend Tesla. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm you know wanting to get in these longs, but ooh, ah, tough one. Uh, you saw Ian there taking the other side of that trade. Um, you know, I think I just might stay in my lane for now and not take any trades. I think that there, are, there's some good stuff to be had here, but I missed a little bit of the move here. But the one we were talking about was that break of that 41.35 uh, area on the ES March contract. We break that decisively here, get all the way up to 41.43. Now we're hanging around 41.41. We stay above here. That'll be the the most important part. We kind of reclaim the 200 period on the three minute chart. Not that that really matters much, but you know, these levels, it, it sh kind of shows you the direction. So a uh, good little move on the market here as we kind of saw that big flush earlier off PPI. That was none too good. Meta also retracing here as with some of these other stocks. It looks like all the big six are making a big move back up. You're getting Meta looking to test the door of 175. Microsoft now at 266 breaking. Uh, Google is knocking on the door of 97, again, holding VWAP nicely. We talked about Tesla knocking on the door of 217. And Apple breaks out 155.50 that Ian talked about. Actually test 
56, uh, in fact. Um, looks like, you know, Amazon also making a nice little move back up above 100, but uh, not quite at the high of days. Apple looks to be relatively strong as well as Tesla if looking for a long, maybe something specific with those two. So keeping my eye out there, what's, uh, what's the chat up to? DKNG, people are asking about that. Bullard, yeah, I think um, Bullard is talking today, I believe, to 105 or 205, something like that. I'll check for, in a, for you in a sec. Tesla pump, yeah, Tesla's been moving, geez, eh? Uh, fired, just hand to Lucas, not sure what that means. Uh, one or more has to be holding SQQ puts. Okay, I'm not sure what that... Et Etsy crashing. Okay, so let's have a look at Etsy. Haven't yeah, looked Brent, at that Brent, in a while. Brendan put it here in the chat. I have it up okay. already, so I cool. can just take a quick look yeah, at it. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, Brendan said Citron calls Etsy one of the largest platforms in the world for counterfeit goods. Um, yeah, I can totally, uh, I can totally see that. Yeah, uh, Etsy kind of got true. hurt there a little bit, uh, breaking down. <laughs> uh, you know, big sell candle coming through. I, I can imagine that uh, you know Alibaba's got to be up there as well for that. Um, you know, counterfeit goods and whatnot, but uh, yeah, t Etsy Holy not crap. reacting very, very nicely to that one. Um, guys, I did get stopped out of, uh, of Amazon. Um, I think I'm just going to leave this one alone. I I've tried a couple of shorts on it. It weird. hasn't worked for me, so I, I think I'm just going to leave this one alone for today. Uh, but I guess the over-under here on 100, uh, you know, still might be good. I'm being patient uh, with this one. Obviously, you know, I've been in, I've been in a handful of shorts here. Uh, and, you know, I was really working this Apple short, eventually got stopped out. Um, and, you know, I want to see if this 155.50 area turns into a support now. If this is going to continue to grind up today, maybe the market ends up flat. Maybe the market ends up flat today. Uh, who knows, right? So, you know, if this is going to continue to grind up, maybe you want to get back involved here on this 155.50 area for Apple. It's, it's essentially a breakout area here. And we're looking at this one. 155.50 was basically the weekly resistance here for Apple. If we zoom out a bit, um, you know, what's the next level? Uh, the next level is basically 163, right? So I'm not saying that Apple gets there today. Uh, obviously, you know, it's only done 30 mil volume. So I'm not saying it's definitely not going to get there today. But, uh, you know, maybe we grind up higher and, you know, maybe this is the start of, uh, you know, a trend upwards. Who knows, right? Uh, that's what I'm always kind of looking for with these key levels when they start breaking out. First things first, today I want to see this level actually hold as support. I want to wait for, uh, you know, be patient, wait for it to actually kind of give it a test. It is kind of holding up here in the 80s, uh, you know, but uh, I, I'm, I'm less inclined to start a position up here just because, you know, we have kind of made this move up on a lot of volume, a lot of buying. Uh, let me see if we can get a little bit of a serious? pullback, and I want to see buyers actually step up and defend that level, uh, and then I'll hop back in. Uh, oh, I'll hop into the long here on Apple. So I get a decent winner and then a bit of a loser here on Etsy. I don't take quick enough, I don't get in quick enough, and I don't take out enough. So I take out uh, a bit, about half, and then the other half goes against me, ends up being a bit of a loser, but not by much. So couldn't catch the move there on Etsy, a little bit too late to the party. The Probably the best move here was to get the retracement up, but I waited a little bit too long. Yeah, on, on those ones, you kind of have to mm -hmm. be careful, right? Like obviously yeah. you get the big down move, uh, but you got to imagine there's going to be dip buyers, right? Yeah. There's going to be buyers there. Uh, so you're kind of shorting into this level here. Uh, that's exactly where the dip kind of got bought up on uh, this 134 area, right? So again, like uh, like you said, maybe you know short up to uh, a level and kind of wait for the pullback and yeah. you know, wait for sellers to actually start selling that's off, what I was and thinking. then you know short off of this like 136.50 area, 137 area, exactly. uh, and then you know obviously you get the back down move, and then you're covering uh, at those lower days where those first buyers were, right? So it's got to be careful with that one. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know, when you get the news, uh, and I did on Apple too. You remember, if you remember on, um, yeah. on Apple yesterday, they had uh, uh, that news that came on that was that quick sell off. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, and, um, I was in that. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, right? So mm -hmm. same sort of thing, like the dips get bought up, right? Yeah. Especially on these like large cap stocks, uh, especially no, on yeah. something like Apple. So. Uh, be careful on just like shorting down uh, into those moves, guys. Absolutely. Uh, where are we at here with XE though? Uh, we're, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if this is kind of one of those ones where it trends down all day. You know, you have that initial move uh, where, you know, there's the buying and selling and like Ian went through that very well. And then you get the, the trend form. And does it continue to the downside or does it get bought up or who knows? So let's keep an eye on this one. It's down now 4%. Uh, the headline obviously is not good. 
right? So that's kind of why we're looking south. It looks like, you know, this might be an interesting one to kind of like hold on after all the noise is done. And that's kind of what I'm trying to say here. I think maybe we should, bears worth looking at the daily to see kind of what levels we should be looking at. Yesterday's low was 132.79. Uh, today's low is 133.62. So, you know, we're not even at day's lows. So you got to figure on a news item like this, do we make it back to day's lows? Um, or, you know, does it get bought up here? So that's something to think about. Thinking about how much it's going to cost me to find out to see if this is a trend. So one, let's say I get in around this area where I'm 135, 134 and three quarters. And where do I give it to? So I'll have to give it to basically the high of this consolidation area, this top here. I'll literally have to give it to 137, which means I'll need to give it a couple of bucks. How much am I going to make off it? So that's kind of the trick here to figure out. Mm, you know what? I think that this is kind of like one of those news items that sells. I'm going to try to hold this one. Oh, I don't even get the fill. Okay, so I'll have to see where the area of illiquidity is. So let's go ahead and try that again. There we go, get the fill there. So I'm gonna ride to quarter position. I'm gonna see if this one will trend. I probably won't add to it aggressively. And basically the idea of the trade here is to see if um, we do get a continual trend. Like a, basically a after, after all the noise is done, we get some sort of continual trend. Uh, and that's the idea. So looking there for that. Uh, not much else happening in my world, Ian. I don't know if you've got anything going on. I, I just there. covered this A&D position. Yeah. You guys saw me short at 83 there. Uh, it went against me 20 cents. And then uh, let me actually just make sure that my script is, uh, is done there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, guys, it went against me 20 cents. And you know, you're, we're seeing the move here live. There is a lot of buying coming out, uh, coming through here. And it there seems like go. the top end of these ranges are kind of breaking out. So. You know, it came back to basically flat for me. Uh, I think I punched out like 01 or 02, so I lost like three cents on the last uh, position. I still got this out there. Uh, let me actually cancel all my orders there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so I, I got this out there, so you know, still positive on the name for me. There's nothing wrong with this, man. Like, uh, you know, I saw the buying come through. I don't wanna be in this short position anymore. Uh, so I just covered it for flat. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, I'll, I'll move away from this one. Uh, I, I, you know, it was basically a, a trade that I kind of just tossed on anyways. Apple uh, is coming up to 156. There's about 800 lots there on Apple, uh, and it just got taken, right? It just got taken. Uh, man, I, maybe I should have taken that breakout there on Apple. Didn't really give me the pullback uh, that I was kind of talking about, uh, and then it held there uh, on the bid there, 156. Interesting. Um, it is it is holding up there. So let me hop in long here on Apple. It's not moving. Up. Um, it's basically holding up here, 156. Uh, let's see if we get a continued move uh, higher here for Apple, uh, and this buying continues. Uh, that was a, that was a decent amount of volume that kind of just popped off on that breakout. Uh, and like I said, guys, 155.50 was the level before, and we are kind of breaking out that now. Uh, so maybe this continues to grind higher. We are a little bit away from VWAP though, uh, and this is probably going to revert there at some point during the day. So. I'm not gonna give this one too much room, guys. I don't wanna give back like my winnings uh, you know, that I lost or that I made uh, on Apple a bit earlier. So let me just kind of put this stop in here. Uh, quick stop out uh, if it drops down like 10 cents below my price back into that 80 range. Uh, that being said, guys, if it comes back down to that 155, and I'm probably gonna get stopped out there, so that's fine. Uh, if it comes back down to that 155.50 area uh, and it starts to hold up there, yeah. So quick stop out on Apple, that's fine. Uh, if it comes back down to this 155.50 area and buyers step up again, uh, I'm going to try and try the long back down there and see if you know that uh, that resistance can turn to support yeah. uh, here on Apple and kind of be a little bit more patient with that one. Uh, I saw that breakout happen. I was like, uh, I kind of FOMO'd into that trade. Uh, it was smaller size, so uh, you know I'm not going to cry home about that. I'm still positive on it. Um, but uh, that being said, I think I got to just be a little more patient. And here we are back right up. Again, uh, 156, so it looks like it just came back down, stopped me out, and now we're right back uh, at my price. Yeah, we're pumping on Snap here. There was a nice couple of VWAP dips. Uh, Could have got that in case you're just joining us, Investor Day. Uh, so some good news items may be coming out here uh, that could get the stock to pump. We know we, we were kind of disappointed with earnings. I kind of led off uh, the digital advertising earners, like we will look for Google, Meta, Amazon was a digital ad one we looked at this year as well. 
Uh, they were disappointing, and then you know everyone said that was kind of isolated to them. That ended up being true as Meta did, you know, relatively better. And likewise with some of these other names. So it's pump in here, 11.39, the high. Uh, yesterday's close, which is an obvious resistance level, is at 11 and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and mark that area off, 11 and a quarter. And, you know, we'll see what we do in and around this area. I'll obviously, we've created a newer high. I don't really have a trade on it at the moment. I'll wait for something to set up. And if there's anything uh, to write home about, you know, we'll report about it. Uh, also, obviously, tag me in the chat should anything come up. We're in this FC short, trying to work our way down into that 134 area. And I'm, I'm going to sit also below 134. I think we can grind down on here, creating a series of uh, lower uh, highs, which, you know, is good for the downward trend. So we'll see if that continues. Uh, but the market is continuing to show its strength. Ian, we're retracing now. I want to say yesterday's close was at 41.58. We're now at 41.45. So we get back there, all of a sudden, we're flat in the day. And PPI didn't really count. Well, I'm kidding, of course, but obviously it counts. But we get back, give back everything that we made. So I mean, like, we've seen this before, right? Yeah, we've seen totally. the market, even on CPI day. Totally. CPI day, like, you, totally. you get the flush move, whatever, and then uh, we retrace, retrace the entire move and then end up being flat on the day, yeah. right? So, you know, the, these numbers are, I feel like they're starting to mean less and less uh, for bit, the market. Right. You do get, obviously, the algo moves. Uh, as soon as the number drops, and you know you saw that this morning, 8:30, uh, and then a little bit, uh, you know, at market open as well with the flush move. But you know, here we are, kind of retracing a lot of the move. I, like Sharif said, I, I would not be surprised at all if we end up flat, uh, you know, on the day here for the market. Uh, you, you want? Oh, okay, we're spinning the story. money. We get we revenge money, on Etsy. Money, money, Look, money. man, it's gonna grind down. I've seen it before. When that Zoom item came out. Uh, that they were cutting. I hate to say it this way, but when they cut, the market likes it. It grinded up the entire day. We had a couple of wicks up and wicks down that kind of, you know, just that's the natural reaction of the market to these. And then, you know, you get the eventual move in the direction of whether the good, the item is good news or bad news. And in this case, I think it's kind of bad news. 133.60, I print. I'm only holding a little bit left on this. I'm gonna let this one run. I'm short 134.80. We're now back into 134. We were a lot lower. We got it into that 133.60. I took out there 133 for a $1.20 winner. Let's see if this one can continue to grind. It's making a bit of a flat bottom. That, that turb that my boy Neil coined, uh, that 134 break, 134 break, if that continues below that, we can get that flat bottom breakdown and then even print some more. Uh, let's see, I looked at this already, but it looks, uh, it's worth mentioning. The low today is 133.60, and the low of yesterday is 132.79. So those are interesting areas to have uh, on your radar for, uh, for profit taking if you're looking for areas to get out. Now we get back below 134 again. We're back into the 133.80s. This one's looking like it wants to break. I'm not taking out the rest. I'm letting this ride. We just made a new low of day. We're heading more south now, Ian. We're in the 30s. We just made more lows. Let's pump to the downside, baby. Getting revenge on this name. Let's go. I'm waiting there for, to profit take. Yes, sir. Very, very nice trade. And you know, sometimes patience pays, man. Yeah. You know, you took the L earlier on yeah. Etsy, got back in it, uh, and then now you're printing on it, right? I'm seeing a couple of things here come through uh, the chat here on Tesla. Tesla recall some vehicles. Uh, and I was like oh, looking boy. at Tesla earlier because obviously, you know, the market was kind of making this up move. Uh, and, um, you know, I was checking on Tesla, our, our good yeah. boy Tesla here, and Tesla has not made the same move. It's been actually fading uh, back towards VWAP, right? So, you know, some weakness here in Tesla. Uh, I guess we can confirm uh, if, that, uh, if that news is true. And I was quickly looking. Uh, I couldn't really find anything uh, there on, on Tesla to see if that, you know, is actually true about Tesla recalling some vehicles there. But I wouldn't be surprised because this move here, uh, Tesla fading back towards VWAP. Uh, going to want to see... If yeah. those buyers, it's true. It's true. Okay, Three hundred sixty-two thousand yeah. U.S. vehicles over full self-driving software issue. Um, um, sorry, Ian. Yeah, yeah. So, uh -huh. so, so there you go. Right. So, some negative uh, news coming here for Tesla uh, as it's you know catching a bit, a little bit around this two fifteen area. But uh, 
yeah, you know, I'm not surprised at all now this, uh, this, uh, you know, this weakness here in the sell move. But like I said, I wanted to see if, uh, you know, there was buyers uh, going to step up once again at VWAP. And it looks like there has been a little bit, right? So, you know, the short trade might be done there. Uh, gonna have to be yeah. patient and wait for them. That it's one's another a pull back. bounce, possibly. Look another at that first one. bounce, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the, had the first bounce, uh, and uh, a little bit of uh, you know another bounce here. Uh, that being said, you know, a sixty cent bounce is not uh, not anything too exciting there. Uh, you know, for Tesla, obviously. Uh, you know, this one. Uh, you know, I was talking to Sharif about it earlier, but I've been trading Tesla uh, all week basically. Uh, and it's it's crazy Stressful. how yeah it's basically it's it's stressful man it's, it's for sure stressful like you can go from being a dollar in the money and uh, you know sitting pretty and you know being comfortable uh, quickly to being stopped out right uh, you know so sixty cents is nothing to be uh, you know be excited about uh, and here we are back right again right uh, back down to VWAP as I was just talking about it right so. Uh, some sellers uh, coming into into Tesla here for sure. Now breaking down below VWAP, a lot of sellers actually coming in. Let's see if this 214 area holds uh, here on Tesla, guys. I'm not recommending the front run levels. Uh, you know, I was talking about that a little bit earlier. It's going to hunt that liquidity. Uh, there's about 1,200 lots there. There was. Oh uh, yeah, there's about 1,200 lots there. Got chewed through immediately, Damn. right? So. Uh, don't front run levels on oh, this stock, guys. Oh wow, it's it is pumping selling now, off, man. Uh, quite, quite okay, hard. Okay, here. here we go. Oh yeah, no, sorry, I'm just excited, Ian. You can continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, uh, yeah. I'm just watching the selling come through here on Tesla. Um, you know, that would have been a maybe a decent breakdown to take, uh, but here we are right back. Uh, so yeah. this is a scalper's market, man. If you're in the money, uh, you know, you kind of have to scalp that out for sure. But uh, it actually held 214 there on the offer. Uh, I'm just watching the tape here. It is accelerating quite a, quite a lot here. A lot of volume here coming to the downside uh, for Tesla off of that negative news. Uh, you know, look recalling some vehicles. Uh, Bullard speaking at 1.30 today, guys, by the way. FOMC okay. Bullard, um, that's the St. Louis Fed president, wow. voting member. He is a voting member. Um, you know, he's been known kind of more for hawkish stances in the past where he's advocated, you know, stronger rate, uh, rate increases and, you know, for prolonged periods. Uh, let's see what he says today. You know, the market always listens to voting members, especially voting members who want higher rates, right? Definitely not one of the dovish. We heard about Lael Brainerd. Now she's gonna take a position to uh, replace Brian Deese as I think like White House Economic Council Chief, something like that. Um, and then, you know, people are saying that that may set her up for the Secretary of Treasury position if Janet Yellen doesn't come back and Biden wins a second term. So lots of uh, ifs, and uh, but wow, Tesla is absolutely flushing as I talk about non absolute nonsense. This is tanking to the downside, guys. Where are we? Where are we headed here? I mean, do we have do we have any resistance? Oh, sorry, support. Looks like we may have supported that 212 and a half. There's a little bit of a consolidation breakout area there. Let's see if that 212 area, 212 and a half area holds. Like, I'm not trying yeah. to buy this falling no. knife here. Like, no, uh, absolutely not. I think you got to definitely I'm wait till 210, it. like lower day. Guys, I said I wasn't going to trade Tesla oh earlier. My goodness. I, you know, I, I, I did not. I stayed away from this Stress one. Uh, you know, taking this breakdown at 214 might, uh, was obviously good. Uh, on that one because uh, look how clean that break was and now we're all the way at 212 so that was a quick two dollar winner oh. so um, a lot of selling oh here God. coming through here on Tesla interestingly enough now the market is also pulling back a bit so I want to see if that 4136 area uh, holds as support now right so, uh, similar to that kind of setup that I was talking about here on Apple uh, you know the 155 50 area if that holds as support you know broken resistance turns support same thing here for the market that 4136 area if that uh, turns to support and you know we continue to trend up higher uh, for the rest of the day but man tesla getting getting hurt uh, again beat down very very badly here uh off of that uh off of that recall news obviously you know you don't want to see that that's that's going to be very very negative it's accelerating down to uh the 211 uh, now very, very quickly. So that 210 might come into play very, very soon. Uh, gonna keep that one on watch for sure. I'm gonna try my hardest not to trade this name, uh, but uh, if a setup comes and it's uh, too juicy for me to take, then uh, you know I'll, I'll trade it. I actually once read that uh, in a trading book, guys. Like, uh, you know, obviously with trading, you gotta be patient and wait for your setups to come. Sometimes it's best, guys, to just pass up on, on so many opportunities until you see an opportunity that's so juicy that you cannot pass up on it. And then that's the opportunity that you take and you go on, you go in on and, you know, you take size on and, uh, you know, that's going to be your big winner, so to speak. 
Uh, you know, you don't want to get chopped up on you know subpar trades, subpar setups, and take all these paper cuts. Uh, you know, all throughout the day, and then you know by the end of the day, you're you're basically shut down. You're like, whoa, what even happened, right? Uh, wait for those really good trades to come around, guys, uh, and then you know focus on taking those ones. Uh, there was a bid there randomly that just got chewed through. Uh, on Tesla, there was like 184 lots there. That, that's obviously not going to be anything for Tesla. It's done 121 mil volume, right? So always got to keep that in mind as well, guys. Uh, you know, if something has done a lot of volume, obviously a few hundred lots, is, it's not going to be anything, uh, you know, to, to shy away from. It's just going to get chewed through like we just saw there. Uh, and there's more size just getting chewed through. So 210 uh, coming very, very close here. Uh, I want to see if this 210... Uh, what happens around this level? Uh, is it going to get uh, bought up and reclaimed quickly? I might try a, a trade there. We will see. Just be based on uh, that being the you know the previous low a day here, and it looks like there was buyers kind of stepping up around this 210 area. So, you know, we're going to get that test uh, very very soon. Uh, so, uh, you know, I might be uh, you know trading this one live with you uh, here on the show. It's coming down here. So basically, what I want to see, guys, is I want to see. Uh, you know, the level kind of get taken. Uh, I, you know, I talked about not front running names. I want to see the level kind of get taken uh, and then quickly reclaim. Kind of what you just saw there with 211, right? Uh, you know, if, if it doesn't get down to 210, it is what it is, right? I'll pass up on this opportunity at 211. I talked about wanting that 210 level. So I'm going to be patient and wait for that level to come into play uh, versus, you know, trying to take this one at 211. Uh, as it looks like there is still selling here, right? Uh, you know, so this could be... Uh, uh, this, this could be the bounce level. If it is, I'll let that one uh, kind of run away from me. Uh, Tesla, yeah, that's what we're talking about. So, guys, if you're kind of just tuning in or, or kind of missed it, um, Tesla has to recall now 362,000 uh, vehicles, right? So that's why it's kind of getting sold off here. Obviously, the market pulling back is not going to help that at all. Um, you know, the weaker names are going to fall back. Uh, you know, ex expect them to uh, accelerate a little bit faster to the downside when the market is pulling back, right? Uh, you know, look for strength uh, in other names as well. Uh, I want to check back on that AMD. We'll get away from Tesla a little bit. I want to check back on AMD. So it looks like it was a mistake covering that trade uh, down at uh, or up at 83 there. Uh, it's right back basically where my first cover was, uh, my first uh, take profit cover was there on AMD, back down to VWAP, right? Uh, guys, I, I told you I didn't really like that trade too much. Uh, there's nothing, like I'm not mad about this at all. Like there's nothing to uh, kind of be sad or mad about here. Uh, I, I didn't like the trade. It came back down flat to my price. So I was like, okay, let me just cover it. Uh, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, you know, here we are back down to, to, to VWAP there for, for AMD. Um, Let's take, so it looks like you actually got it to the TV. Because did you see where Tesla stopped at? Yeah, no, I was just kind of talking okay, about so it. Okay, so you basically um, got it. It, right it stopped to the at two ten fifty, and I was actually just telling the no, chat. No, even like, below that. I, I mean, wanted to. Yeah. Uh, I want to wait for two ten to actually come into play. Uh -huh. I want to see that level get exhausted. So I want to see it hunt that liquidity if yeah. there is going to be you know size there, and then if that level gets reclaimed, that's where I want to kind of I get see what long. You're saying. Right, okay. uh, it kind of did that action at 211, mm. but I talked about 210, and that's the level that I wanted. So I wasn't gonna try it at 211. I wanted to stick to my guns. I see. Uh, and you know, stick to that 210. Uh, like I said, I want to try my hardest not to trade Tesla today, right? So I'm gonna pass I up as you. many opportunities as possible until <laughs> I see one that's just too juicy for me to take. I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. Let's uh, continue to look to see what is pumping at the moment. Uh, CYH, interesting. So this one kind of, I complained about it not giving me an opportunity to get into it because it was too strong. Now it is starting to go here. Uh, 776, it looks like it's going without me here. It's pumping. I got to get onto this one quick if I can get over there. Where do I have it? I don't have it anywhere. No, CYH. Is it NASDAQ? No, it's not, of course. It's New York. There we go, yeah. So it's kind of going without me here. And uh, the idea is to kind of ride this one north. Well, yeah, it goes without saying, but the idea here is to look for a breakout. It's a continuation. I feel like I missed out the opportunity. The better, the better in here is that 755 break. I didn't take it. I wasn't, I wasn't looking at it. Yeah, we're continuing to move up north now, 770. We're, we're closing in on high days. This is probably going to be a continuation. I mean, how much is it going to cost me to find out? Let's go ahead and punch. Where are we here on the bid? Uh, so we get a partial fill there. 
Let's see if we get the full fill. Not, wow, there's no liquidity at this level. That's kind of weird. Uh, 765, where did I punch in at? Punch in at 72s. There we go, now I get the full fill. Bit of a retracement here. Where am I wrong? I think I'm wrong if we break through the half dollar. So it's technically not the bottom of the trough. The bottom of the trough is that 745 area, but you do wanna see uh, the half dollar defended here. At least I do. There we go. Some continuation. Where am I taking profits? Definitely through the high of daybreak. 776 is a high of daybreak. I'm taking profits into that. And then you're riding, obviously, for an approach into $8. That's my move here. Uh, it's a bit of a slow mover. It's had opportunities, you know, where, where like, moved 15 pennies at a time. But for the most part, when you look at the price action, they're all smaller increments of up or down. So you know, be ready for the grind. I'm in a 25% position, so nothing to concern me, but the point of the, the whole exercise here is to ex execute, execute the trade properly and using the right fundamentals. So that's what we're doing here. And uh, we'll let that one ride. Tass H, thank you for the $1.49 super chat and the hot dog. Uh, that kind of makes me hungry. And they, they had some good chicken and uh, potatoes back there. So that was our, I was like snacking a little bit when I was back oh, okay. there making my tea. I had to. <laughs> Um, uh, Stephanie, thank you for that comment. Stephanie, um, let's see what else is going on here. Mm, not much. Renata, what's she up to? Can you please check Neo? You always ask me about Neo, Renata. You love Neo. I don't know what's going on with you and Neo. It trades like a buyout, Renata. Uh, let's pull it up. Uh, let's bring in the trade ideas over here. Let's type in our friend Neo. And there you go. And there we go. And we'll pop this out. Duplicate. All right, so. What's Neo been up to today? I really haven't been looking at Chinese ADRs, if I'm telling the truth. There's been a lot more going on. So yeah, I see where you're going with this. You know, you get that big wick up, you get that breakdown of VWAP, retracement into VWAP, and then a, a rejection of VWAP and back down. So, you know, it's not something that I anticipate on this because I don't watch it enough. You know, this isn't enough for me, Renata. We have a 1060 high and we have a 1035 low. Like, that's just not going to cut it for me at, uh, you know, for, for this type of trading. But I, I, I get what you're doing. You know, you, if you're sizing in, you can t definitely take advantage of these moves. But for me, on an intraday trade, it's not what I'm looking for. But, yeah, and, and there was really no catalyst for it. We've been seeing lately, you know, some of these Chinese ADRs had a bit of a better run. But lately with Balloon Gate and the whole thing has kind of been hard uh, for, for that kind of thing to can find any continuity, excuse me, on some of these Chinese ADRs lately anyway. But we talked about it. I talked about this on uh, the morning show and last time as well on the midday show that we've been seeing the biggest influx of American money, big money going into Chinese ADRs since back in 2018. Uh, and that was for the period of like four weeks in January, the first four weeks. And so that's interesting. It's always good to note that. And uh, obviously look for the corresponding move on the charts. Uh, quickly here, back uh, to our CYH trade. We're long 71.71. We're at 7.70 right now, looking for continuation, but uh, nothing yet. Let's let's get some profit taking orders sitting here in case we do get continuation. So definitely looking for the break of 80. So I'll sit at 80. Let's say 83s. And there we go. So I'll sit here at 83s to see if we can make a move up there. Otherwise, am I looking to add on CYH? Well, I think I'm going to add probably. Uh, in the 755 area, and then really give it a tight stop into that 750 area. So that'll be my move on CYH. I'll probably add once, uh, but I'm looking for definitely for continuation here. Uh, right on. Uh, I was just kind of watching, and guys, real quick, uh, just an update. I am still short PLTR. That one's just kind of on autopilot. Uh, not really paying too much attention to that one. I told you how I trailed my stop. Uh, I was watching Tesla here. Tesla, and I'm watching the chat as well. Tesla's kind of waking up a little bit. I was thinking about a short. At 2.13, uh, I don't really like it anymore because we're back up to this oh. price, but it was, the same, it was a similar setup. Like, uh, 2.13 kind of got exhausted. The market pulled back a bit, so I was thinking, okay, you know, Tesla is weak. Uh, if I'm going to short any name, uh, it's going to be, you know, Tesla off of this negative catalyst, right? So it is kind of struggling with this 2.13 uh, area. So maybe a... Ah, 1.30 man. Bullard. Yeah, yeah, okay. So here we are, uh, back up to this 2.13 area. Let me actually just start... Uh, with a small position. So I am short Tesla here uh, off of this 213 level. Oh, I actually got a decent price there, 02. Uh, basically, I'm gonna give this one about 50 cents of risk. 
Uh, if the market pulls back, uh, you know, a bit further here, I'm going to expect that Tesla is going to continue to pull back uh, even more so, right? Uh, you know, off of that negative catalyst. I'm also liking that it's below VWAP now as well, right? Uh, and you know, obviously, there it is starting to get bought up above 213 now. So I'm going to step set my price uh, stop there uh, at 50 cents uh, hmm. if that uh, triggers, and it looks like it probably will. Um, again, man, had to be pa more patient with this one. Uh, on, uh, on on that trade uh, with Tesla, man, I said I was gonna not trade, and here I am in a trade. Uh, so you know what, guys? Let me actually just let me show some uh, l let me show some discipline there and get out of that one. Let me show some discipline. I didn't like that trade at all. Uh, you know, I said I wasn't gonna trade Tesla Big today, move. and then you know I, I hopped into a trade on Tesla. Uh, so quickly came back to my price. Let me get out of that one. I'm, I'm gonna show some discipline on that one. Um, so no trades here for me on Tesla. That short might still be good, but uh, maybe if it comes back up to view up that 214 area, we saw that break down very, very cleanly. Um, so if it tests back that one again, and you know maybe gives that exhaustion move that I was talking about, maybe try the short there again. Uh, if it continues to fade here off of 213, uh, so be it. It is what it is. Uh, but still looking at that 210 level as well, right? So uh, happy to walk away uh, on that one. Uh, you know, not uh, basically be out flat there uh, on, on that trade. Uh, I guess got to stick uh, stick to the plan. Yeah, some of you guys are saying too late to short Tesla. Yeah, for sure. I th that's why I didn't like it, man. Like uh, it came back up here, uh, and you know there was a mixture of buying and selling earlier. You know, you it just chewed through that level of 214, uh, and then it just flushed off that, right? So you know that was uh, that that was the trade there for the short side. Uh, so just got to be patient and wait for that level again, or maybe wait. Uh, for that 210 to come into play, yeah, don't deal in the middle, uh, yeah, good, good, that's definitely some good advice, guys. Um, Saucer, what's the negative catalyst on Tesla? Okay, yeah, they have to recall 362,000 vehicles. Uh, so, uh, you know, obviously got, got, got hit a little bit here, uh, and, you know, getting hit to the short side for sure. Uh, the market is testing back up um, to, uh, to, to the 41.45 area as well, right? So. You know, the market is uh, pushing up here, yeah, man. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of bouncing off of this area. Like I said, the 4136 area uh, is still kind of holding up, right? So, you know, is this going to turn into uh, support now? This uh, this broken resistance time will tell, obviously. Um, but um, you know, uh, it, it does look like it is kind of trying to make that bounce. Yeah. All right. So uh, basically, I'm got my eye here on uh, some of these. Uh, uh, futures as we're heading around 4140. Also looking for to see which one is more relatively strong at the moment. And I see Meta here now knocking on the door of 175. So um, one second here. I just uh, Ian, can you take over for one sec? I just yeah, need to yeah fix for sure, for real sure. Quick. Thanks. Um, uh, before uh, before we uh, kind of you know pass back to Shreve, let's do a quick like count, guys. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, we're only at 2.1k likes. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of sad, man. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, just because um, you know we were at 1.9, I believe, when uh, when it tossed us to the midday show, and we're only at we only got got 200 likes, guys. Okay, now we're getting a little bit more. I saw there was a poll earlier. There was like 4k people that participated in that poll, uh, so that means we should have at least 4k likes, right, guys? Um, but uh, you know, with that being said. Uh, if you haven't already, obviously, you know, we already appreciate your support so much. Um, smash the like button, guys. Take this opportunity uh, to like and, and you subscribe, know, subscribe to our YouTube button. channel. You won't uh, be disappointed. You know, There's I, lots I mean, of bangs. There we go. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, you look, know the, look at the, the midday chat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, the, the new videos coming through, guys. The show is, continues to expand and, and get better. So, you know, smash the like button. Uh, we obviously really appreciate all your support. No question about um, that. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, but uh, we're just, uh, that's all we ask for. Ian, is like. it time to take this meta long, man? I don't know what's going on here, but meta seems to be doing something weird. And uh, the weird thing is it's showing strength, and it hasn't shown that for a while. I'm not ready to make any pronouncements. Obviously, I think a, a really good indicator of whether there's relative strength here would be that 175.50 break. That kind of breaks a, a whole bunch of tops. Uh, I should probably load up the chart so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, 175.50 break here, that would be an interesting break, but we're definitely nearer to the tops. We're very close to high of day. 175.28 is high of day. We're flirting with that 175, so uh, not sure not sure what to do with this one, whether to take this one long or what this is telling me exactly. I had a couple of good shorts 
on Meta today, actually. Um, you know, it's paid for it's paid for some good shorts. Let's have a look here. Um, where are we with this one? Okay, is it on this one here? Yeah, so we can get rid of Tesla on here. We'll put Meta on. All right, we're about to get a special guest on two guys. Uh, hold on to your horses, uh, but listen to me now as we set up for this possible Meta long here that I really want to punch into. Now we're pumping into 175. 20 we're moving up now closer to high of days on meta there's a whole lot of relative strength i don't know what's going on i'm going to look quickly here on my blotter to find out do i see anything here meta related no conducting layoffs uh no that's not it instagram's roll, rolls out broadcast chat feature in channels i don't know if that's market moving uh meta launching broadcast chat okay maybe that's it i don't know uh well the market can be that's old okay so sean's saying that's old all right, so I mean, whatever the reason is, it's pumping high of day, guys. 175.39 now. This is moving, and the market is not having a corresponding move. None are the none are these other five: Microsoft, Google, Tesla, Apple, Amazon. They're not doing it. Meta's doing it on its own. So does the does it get shut off here, or do we continue? I mean, uh, your guess is as good as mine. We talked about that 175.50 being the the level. And you know we're knocking on the door of that 175.50 with a 175.43 high, so uh, this one is uh, is tricky. I wish you know I would just, I would have shut my mouth and just punched. I didn't, right? I didn't take that 175 north. Uh, it's moving. It looks good. And my my bank account or my my brokerage account is staking me a little bit right now. Move to the high side. I command you to move to the high side. Kidding, guys. Of course, all tongue and cheek stuff here. Uh, let's see what the chat is up to. A D loaf, Sharif, long term account in the money, money, money. Yeah, I'm up, I'm up. But you know, you never want to see any of your profits get erased. Such is the greed of humans, I guess, right? Um, so let me know when you're set up. Yeah. Uh, meta volume gap. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Uh, this one is very interesting. I just want to see if this one's going to continue to, to pump to the north side or we're going to get some sort of retracement. You know how I like to trade. I like. To trade off these retracement levels, 175 stands out as a possible retracement. There's also this breakout area of 174.80. There seems to be a lot of noise and uh, movement in and around that area. So maybe a buying zone or that 20 cent buying zone, 175 to 174.80. But this one doesn't really look like it's going to break much to the south side here as we're continuing to near day's highs, uh, 175.43. You know what? It's just time to punch in here. And we'll we'll move incrementally as it's hanging out at these levels and not really flushing. So let's go and be wise about this. Why is it not doing it? Okay. So then I go like this. Come on, computer. There we go. Okay. So now we, we get that. So now do we get a 125 fill here? There we go. So we get that. I believe we got that fill. Uh, let's see if we hold one. 75. We got 175.25. The idea here is we want to hold that 175-ish area. Do I add in and around this area here? Okay. Well, add in and around this area. We'll talk a little bit about that. But now, it bears stopping and introducing our special guest. Thanks for having. Uh, thanks for coming on, Mr. Nas, uh, the Nas boss. Uh, you guys will know him from the Friday morning segment every every Friday, giving us his picks for the week. So how are, how are things? It's uh, oh, it's been great. There's a lot going on here. I'm not gonna lie, as a, yeah. as a viewer coming to the other side of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and you're a regular watcher of the the show, right? I, yeah, regular I am. That's how uh, we actually yeah. started this relationship. As I started watching it, I used to trade prop, and yep. this show makes me feel like I'm back at a prop firm. Excellent. Um, I'm not alone in my uh, spare bedroom trading. <laughs> okay, so. yeah. And you've got a nice setup. We see the setup every Friday. Yep. I do. Um, I a good uh, uh, mit, mit, uh, maritime guy. Yeah. Uh, for our American, uh, for our American so counterparts. So the chat is rated right here. Yeah. Oh, cool. People asking what movie did you watch? Apparently, you tweeted. <laughs> oh yeah, I, mm. I slept instead. <laughs> um, I, I did a, a tweet on uh, on Twitter because I was flying. It was five in the morning. I'm like, I need a movie to keep me awake. People flooded in recommendations. I hit play on it. I think the first one. And I was out two seconds later. <laughs> so. That's the best. Um, that's the best kind of airplane ride. I'll <laughs> tell you that. I have no patience for these airplane rides. Um, all right, Mr. Noss, obviously you're from Trade Ideas, I and am. that is one heck of um, a, a company. We use their software constantly on the show. Uh, excellent for all sorts of things, charting, and Mr. Noss will take you through the, all of that, obviously. But what, you, what do you have uh, set up for us today, Mr. Noss? 
first, I'm just going to show off a little bit. I'm actually doing some day trading myself while meeting with you guys. I've got uh, one of my favorite setups here on the main screen. It's fairly straightforward, but it's something that you guys probably know all the time. It's just VWAP bounces. So uh, this particular scan is just looking for stocks that are down a couple candles in a row, making new five-minute lows, and bouncing into VWAPs. So right here on Next, this one's a little bit too, too slow for me. But you can see it's come down nicely from highs. It's doing three times relative volume because it actually had earnings in the post market yesterday and tagging right off VWAP. So these end up going into a watch list for me. If they remain strong, um, my actual area cool. for entry, and I was talking to Brendan about this earlier, is another VWAP. So we have the ability not only to anchor the VWAP from the beginning of the day, but any point on the chart that we want. So the idea being is if it breaks the VWAP from this uh, high right here, mm -hmm. maybe it's a purchase from there, you know, right where you're wrong, which is right. very important for trading, which is right under the lows here. Right. Um, and just a very simple setup. Again, this one's moving a little bit too slow for me. I want something with a little more volatility. But just for a sample of the setup, right, you want to keep it simple, right, something that has earnings, it has a catalyst to move. It's pulling into a key support zone. So far, there seems to be some buying going on around VWAP. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to watch to see if that continues. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's the setup right there. Uh, we have talked about that a couple of times today on Tesla. There were a couple of nice VWAP bounces on that. Obviously, a lot more volatile uh, is the setup. All right, guys, I quickly took, for just to update you guys, took profit a little bit here on the Meta Pop, getting some out there in uh, the, the 30s. We got 17 long. So scalping here, nothing really to write home about. But, um, yeah, so I just wanted to ask you a couple of things. So uh, basically... Uh, can you explain to us a little bit how we're using the biggest gainers from open uh, and how these um, races, how do we interpret them here? Because we use them a lot on the show and I think the viewers ask a lot about them. Yeah, so this is a, uh, an innovative new feature. This is something that you know, I've only ever seen at Trade Ideas and um, is kind of a trade after my own heart. So when I'm on the Friday shows, I talk a lot about swing trading. That's the, the time frame that I focus on mainly, and it just makes for the best content for, for talking to you guys, and I always talk about relative strength, right. right? This is something that's been studied. There's so many academic papers that I can bring up and, and a lot of study. You're taking your CMT, so you will hear yes. a lot about relative strength. <laughs> the idea is basically you want to go where the institutional money is flowing into, and that's always going to be into whatever is the strongest at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, doing that on a swing trading point of view, is great and we have scans for that, right. but relative strength, as you guys know, day trading all day, it changes all the time throughout the day. Right. You know, This thing may be relatively strong in the morning and then it starts to sell off as profit takers come in. So what this scan is doing is all day long, and you can just see it just resorted mm -hmm. there, it's just saying from the opening print, what is the stock that is showing me the most relative strength? So if I click here on T-N-O-N, all I need to know is that it's leading this race. And you can see it might be breaking out into new highs here, yeah. which is interesting. Um, the idea basically being that, you know, a uh, million shares, 11 times normal volume. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of volume going on in this one. Um, and that's, again, all I need to know is that there is relatively strength, strong in this market. So if I'm looking for something to buy, I am going to buy the strongest stuff out there. And if I'm looking for something to sell, I'm going to short the weakest stuff out right. there. Right. It's a way to go with the trend. So all day long, it's just spitting out over and over and over again the strongest stuff. And actually, if we go to your screen Yeah, for and a I would want to ask you quickly yeah. here, and this is customizable, right? Yes. Because I can say to it, um, minimum volume amounts because say you know I'm looking at TNON here and I gotta be honest with you from an intraday perspective it doesn't look like one uh, that I, I would get myself into it's just too sparsely traded yep. right so um, I could filter T the likes of TNON by having a minimum uh, minimum share or minimum volume on the day right and minimum price as well to weed out those sub one dollar stocks yeah not only yeah. minimum volume minimum price i'm just scrolling casually through every wow. single one of these filters could be applied to your oh, there's scan the advanced to make here. sure it's you know if you want it above vwap if you want it above a, a 10 day moving average oh, this a 20 is day, really cool if you want the rsi wow. reading something you can customize these to your heart content and i'm actually going to if anyone is watching from Trade Ideas, ping me in our Slack channel, some really cool ones to show off. Um, but yeah, you can customize these to your heart content. These are just the ones that are open for now. Right. Uh, but just because I want to go over to your screen for a second. Yeah, sure. Just Come to my screen, guys. Is, uh, 
just because you've yeah. had it open for a while. If you mm -hmm. close that window, sure. And then if you look on the far right, that this list right here. Yeah. Basically, those are the winners of the race throughout the day. I see. So okay. what it's doing is it, it's dynamically creating a watch list for you. So Lunar huh. or Lu -N -U L U N R. Yeah, I don't we know what that, on is. that one. Yeah. I don't need to know anything about it. But it's won three of those races, and it's won the last one, too. Right here, so, right here, and right here. There yeah. you go. So okay. sometime throughout the day, uh -huh. this was showing amazing relative strength and right. amazing momentum. So it's building a watch list for me. So if you look at this stock right now, you may not have wanted to chase it uh -huh. as it was rallying. It looks like it went from, what, $15 to $40 yeah. today. Yeah. But the fact that it's on your watch list, now that it's pulled back and it's holding VWAP, that setup that I actually just talked about yep. may be in play on Absolutely. this Absolutely. So you're and it's slowed down a little bit today, I exactly. mean, from the, 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 the crazy aggression. So absolutely. So this is a, an, a way I could filter that too to look for VWAP as well, just as you showed. Yep. So not only can I do volume, I can look for these particular setups that have big moves and retrace into VWAP. Yeah, because it's dynamically yeah. making this watch list for Fantastic. you all day long without you having to do anything. So what I do a lot of is I'm just reviewing that list. Now I switched computers, so it cleared a bunch of that out. So this setup that I actually just talked about, when you're anchoring the VWAP from this high here on this LUNR, right. this is interesting to me. So I'm actually going to look over to my laptop that I have my trading platform on, and this would be a setup that I'd be interested in. So we have on our charts, we have all of your... Generic indicators, we have some, like this demarker scan. We actually built custom for uh, Brendo. Um, but yeah, so if I put on just a normal VWAP, you can see, so far, it seems to be holding that VWAP pretty well. So if we can get kind of get up into the $32 area, I'm going to want to know to trade this. Absolutely. So I don't need to, A, that it's building that list for you on yeah. the races at all time. But if I want to know when it actually breaks this price, I can just right click on our charts and I can create a price alert. And now the Easy system peasy. will light up and it'll say, hey, Mike, take a look. This one's here. I've got my trade right. set up completely planned out. I don't need to think about it anymore. If we get above kind of 33.30, I'm probably going to buy some. My stop's going to go under this kind of 29.30 and just see if we get one of these crazy runs into the end of the day. Awesome, awesome. And uh, John, I want to look there on your side screen there. Uh, no, if you can go back to Mike, uh, Michael's screen. Yeah, so the side screen uh, right over here, these yep. are all different. Um, you know, included features that you can customize. There you go, guys, to, to the very left of the screen there. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So I, I, I want to make the point too, Michael, because um, I have a brokerage account. I can set up very minute amount of like, uh, of, I, I want to say features. Like, so for example, you're able to filter by like thousands of features. So anybody mm -hmm. wanting a more complicated system, something more than the what, what's just being offered by the regular platforms, this is for you right here if you want to be a serious day trader because this allows you to absolutely isolate the setup that you're looking for. Where in these brokerage platforms are much more generic, much more, you know, like just like general ranging yeah. and you're going to have to do a lot of the legwork and you may or may, you may, or may not find them. Right? So it's called trade ideas, guys. Someone's asking what's it called. Trade ideas, uh, bears versus bulls. Uh, if you could just put that in the chat, show people how to be able to find that. Uh, there you go, um, Bears versus Great Bulls ideas. lighting that up. And I just always want to say, always, just for Trader TV viewers, Trader TV 20 at checkout saves you 20% off, and that actually helps out the channel as well. So that's Amazing. The, that's a deal that we have awesome. with you guys and just your viewers. Save you 20% off your first year if you want to buy yearly or your first month, and then, again, that ends up going and helping yeah. out the channel as Amazing. well. Amazing, thank you. Um, talking about this channel bar, like this just shows the breadth of the different things that we can do with trade ideas. So uh, the one I have loaded here is for uh, you swing traders and it, again awesome. to relative strength is a relative strength algorithm that I created where it gives you entry prices and stop losses for swing trading ideas. This rotates every week. Um, annotated charts, I do this on the, on the weekend for you guys. That's it's awesome. also showing live in real time all relatively strong stocks. So these are all from a swing trading point of view. So if you're a day trader, we got something for you. If you're a scalper, we've got something for you. If you're a swing trader, we have stuff for you here. Another so great swing trading channel. This one is actually, so we call it the trader's eye. And this is actually curated by a handful of traders. I'm not the only trader that works at Trade Ideas. We have way more experienced traders than I do. 
um, that actually go in every day, live in real time, and they're customizing this watch list based off things that they think are good swing trading ideas, based off what's happening in the market right now, so this will change live in real time. It's partly algorithmically done, and then it's partly done by our traders. So we have, um, you know, shout out to Chris and Steve and Andy and Jamie, people who have been trading forever. So trade ideas started in 2003, a lot of these guys have been using it since 2003 and then just came into the fold at some point. So they're all the time they're just scanning and they're like, ah, TS to me looks like a good potential swing trade. Let's put it on the list here. So this is a way that you get kind of access to the trade ideas hive mind of Love different that. traders just pinging you ideas uh, all day long. And then everything from that to uh, pre-market. So if you're here in the pre-market. Oh, we always are. You open up this yeah. channel. It's going to show you the things that are gapping the most up and down each day. It's awesome. To after hours, especially when it's earnings season, you see a lot of stuff moving around after so hours. Yeah. Um, all of these layouts, again, these are custom built for you. You don't have to do anything. But like we were talking about earlier. You can customize, you, you can, know what out of them. You can go in and tweak. If you're yeah. like, hey, the, this one's not doing enough volume. Yeah. Or, um, you know, we know Sean likes to trade the big the NASDAQ tech. names, yeah. Mega cap names. Yeah. You can customize all that. And again, you can um, email info at trade-ideas.com or you can hit me up on Twitter. And if you're like, I want a scan that does this, we'll build it for you. I, I can't believe that, guys. I mean, when Brendo told me that they made a scanner for him, I thought the, he was making it up. That's uh, something I don't see often from a service that they'll make up for a scanner for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there well, you go. Shaw's say people take out a loan and get some trade idea products. Guys, uh, yeah, what else you got for us, though, Michael? I, I want to see some more because I'm learning on the on the fly here. Oh, what do you got uh, loaded up we here? Can go, we can go as, as deep as you like. We can go as shallow as you like. But let me actually just link this so we, here. So we got some uh, intraday trading. We got some swing trading. What else we got here? How about some algorithmic trading? Okay. Where it All takes right. care think, of it for you. So our, uh, we talked that, about that a lot. Luca talks about that a lot. So our, uh, our audience will be very interested to hear about this. Yeah, we have the ability to, and I'll show you in a second, to back test any trading idea you have. If you want to buy stocks that are breaking the 200 day moving average and you want to just have the system back test for you, you can do that. Also, you can place your trades directly on the chart. You can route those to your Interactive Brokers account. Wow. Which I know you use Interactive Brokers or E-Trade as well. Uh, other brokers coming soon. Or if you're new to trading, we have a built-in simulator and we always say, hey, please use the sim, you know, till you get mm -hmm. profitable, till you get everything sorted out. Yes. Um, but yeah, this is just some SIM trades I opened up just to show on here, and this is a module we call Brokerage Plus. So this will look the exact same, whether you are linking it to E-Trade, Interactive Brokers, whatever it is that you want. Can we talk about the back testing just quickly here? Yeah. So when you're, I mean, as a, a, a like a, a young trader, as <laughs> a starting out trader sort of thing, uh, you're always trying to, you know, use one or two, maybe three setups. And you don't really know the validity of these setups until you know, you've tried them in real time. But what can back testing do to kind of help you with that? I look at back testing as it's, it's your reps, right? It's, you know, you obviously go to the gym. Um, you know that basically the more reps you do on something, the more skilled you'll get at that thing, yeah. right? The, um, and the problem with day trading is the market's only open a certain amount of time. It's really only active for a certain amount of time. And uh, you don't want to just be forcing trades all the time just because right. you feel the need to force trades. So the way to be able to go through and make sure that you're testing in real time, and we allow that with the sim, but if you want to go in back test and you just want to ask the system some basic questions. So this mm -hmm. is a, a simple setup, obviously not something you'd want to trade. I'll drag this in here, but something that may be interesting. Um, I just basically asked the system, and I just did it really quickly with this window, uh, what happened if every time a stock rallied to VWAP and it did a whole bunch of volume or earnings that day, right. if I shorted every single one of them with some just basic uh, risk management kind of parameters, right. and I just held them till the end of the day, what would happen? Now, obviously, that's not something you want to do. No. <laughs> You've determined that pretty quickly. Um, but you can get really granular with That's this. That's what I mean. You where can you, get very specific, right? Yeah, you okay. can open up. So I can see these are all the trades that were done yesterday. The entry, the exit price, the profit, the loss. I can click on it, and it will actually populate on the chart where the trade would have been. Very cool. So this is where I would have shorted ADI. 
that obviously wouldn't have worked because it rallied into the end of the day. Right. Um, the fact that I can just go through and I'm able to know what would work, what wouldn't, um, doesn't mean you have to completely algorithmically trade them, but it means I can get a feel of whether my trading idea actually has any merit. Well, that's not. the thing. And so as a CMT, you see this probably better than a lot. Because yeah. what I'm seeing right now in the material is especially when we're talking about breakouts and patterns is that this Bul Bulkowski, Bulkowski, yes. he did yep. the he did the most thorough review apparently to date, and he gave patterns, data yeah. about patterns and breakout and their likelihood of this happening and that happening. This helps you isolate that, right? Yes, that, because you're able to know if I'm to use this pattern based on historical data. Here's what happens, but that's a good chance of history repeating, uh, rhyming, not repeating, right? Exactly, so, and uh, again, and then you can dive into the data. So here on the screen, I actually have. Uh, the optimization tab we have. So we already determined, okay, we, you just don't want to short everything that's doing a lot of volume that's hitting VWAP. Just not what you want to do, right? We tested More specific. it, found that it's bad. But what the system will do is it will actually break down based off time of day, when what would have worked and what wouldn't. You can actually see that in the first hour of the day, this strategy is profitable, huh. right? After that, it completely falls apart. So interesting. So I can then go into the system, and we can uh, we can rerun that. I can just go into the system. I can say, okay, well, what if I only do the first hour of the day, and then I can back test that. Then we can go into again this list of all of these different filters yeah, that I showed wow. you before, and I can say, okay, well, what would happen if the you know what about the change in one minute? How mm -hmm. does this affect it? Uh, let's do percentage. And again, I'm just doing all this on the fly, but you can see the bigger the, is there. the bigger move that it's made into VWAP, the higher the likelihood that it's gonna bounce off. Okay. And right, so just us sitting here for five Knowing minutes, that. the amount that we've learned and we've tweaked this strategy, if this is a strategy I wanna start playing with, I can go through and I can say, okay, now here's where I wanna refine it. I wanna, right. I don't wanna trade after the first hour because the whole strategy falls apart then. And I wanna make sure that it has a big pop into VWAP. It doesn't just meander up right, slowly. Right, exactly. So now when I come in to trade the next day, again, hopefully on the sim if you're new, you already know, okay, now I'm looking for stocks that are rallying to VWAP. I'm looking for stocks that are doing it in the morning, and I'm looking for them to make, make that big move into VWAP. So I already have three things added to my trading plan that I didn't have there yesterday, right. just because I started to run these tests. Absolutely, that's awesome. Very cool, very, very cool. Now the, the coup de gras here, is if you end up getting something that you like, if at the end of the day you, you build something that you're like, this is a, a strategy, this is a system in which I want to optimize and I want to just start running this forever, um, you can do that. So that same back test, that same alert window, when I was talking about in this Brokerage Plus module, I can just feed that into this and say, now trade it. So say I've got the profit wow. target sorted, I know what time of day it should enter, I have all my parameters sorted. So human emotions completely removed. Completely out. So if you've got a, if you've got a job, if you've got, so there's the full automation, which is great and will appeal mm -hmm. to someone, and then there's also partial automation, which I do a lot of. Okay. Where it's like, what will happen is, maybe I'm going to let the system get me into the trades, and then I'll manage them myself. Okay, So I'll sit, I see. I'll okay. optimize, I'll say this is the trades I want you to take, away you go, and then as they start to come into my blotter, I can just click on the symbols, I can bring up the screen, I can say, yeah, this is the one I'm in, maybe this is where I think it's gonna go, so I'll put a profit target there, or a stop loss here. Right. A again, the, the, we always find, and this is the testing we've done internally talking to our clients, the merging of man and machine is where things do best, right? Very bad. You know, it, yeah. it's kind of like, uh, Self-driving. Maybe you don't want let, to let the car yeah. take you, but you need to take that break on the highway when we, it becomes mundane. Exactly. Maybe yeah. you're you're, yeah. you're napping a bit. Maybe you're like <laughs> me this morning. You got up at 2 a.m. to be here. Yeah. You're a little bit tired. You want the car to break when things are going bad, right? Yeah. All right. Let's have a look at these markets, Michael. Let's see let's what's uh, what's going on live here. Uh, so we were in a couple of trades. You know, thankfully they were very small in size. So let's see where uh, we are. CHY, I'm in the money on this. Okay, so I'm long 71. I'm long 71s. We're printing 86s here. We're, we've been knocking on the door of $8 for a while. It retraced against me for a bit. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looks like I'm good, to be honest. I'm even good on Apple. Okay. Uh, 175.17. Somehow I'm good on Apple. How is that even possible? I should be out of money on that. 
Uh, not sure what's going on here, but anyway, let me just fix this real quick. So let's have a look here quickly at where we are on the futures. Fed Bullard is speaking. Uh, usually we get some good market move off that. Looks like that 7130 has been holding as an area of support. We've seen that as a very important area that Arun's been talking about for the last little while. We get a consolidation range through it today. We break above it. And now for the moment, is it is acting as an area of support. So we'll continue to watch and see what we get a, as a breakout. But are, have you been, uh, you said you were trading something earlier. Uh, so what, what are you into today? I'm an, an addict like you guys, so I've been trading <laughs> some all day. So let's have a look. Uh, the only trade I've opened now, let me take a look here, is actually Upwork. And this is again, the same setup that I talked about before. So Upwork had earnings this morning. It's done four times normal volume. So it has that uh, interest in the market. Our ball. I yeah. ran off all day. So it's been rallying up yep. and you can see it was struggling here at VWAP. So just like we talked about before, I anchored a VWAP at the low and just used that as my entry point. Said if we can get below that area, that's where I'm gonna take a short. So I'm short a little bit Indeed. from uh, uh, 68, 2012.68. So somewhere in this area gotcha. as it broke okay. through yep. and just trailing the stop right now. So I'm ah. keeping this above VWAP, seeing if maybe we get a flush to the low of the day. We look here at the daily chart, uh, I really like, and I think I've done a segment about this a few times before where okay. they call it pro gaps. So if uh -huh. the stock is moving in one direction I, and then it gaps completely in the other direction, uh -huh. you got a lot of people off guard, uh -huh. right? If the stock is moving up and then it gaps up, it's, it's kind of what everyone expected and no one's really scared. Yeah. But yeah, you have a, a stock that's moving up a bit and then it gaps down, yep. then you've got some people that are worried. So, you know, I'm going to be wrong if it kind of breaks and, and goes above VWAP here. I'll lose my 10 cents or so. Hoping we get a flush to maybe test the lows and maybe at the low of the day. Um, and so how do you trade? Do you scalp on the way out or do you have profit targets based on levels? Or how do you look at things? So I do uh, trailing stops. Okay. Um, and the main reason is I'm a retail trader, right? So right. the benefit you guys have, and, and you should join a prop firm if you can, I um, actually just entered that lunar. Um, we'll talk about that in a second too, yep. but um, because I'm a retail trader and I'm doing other things and my, my bread and butter is always swing trading, I just want to get in and then I want to set the trailing stop and, and kind of let it go. Got it. Now I would say if you're more dedicated swing trader or a dedicated day trader, yeah. then it probably makes sense to do the scale in and the scale right. out. Okay. If you're trading prop like you guys are, that adding liquidity in and adding liquidity right. out to collect the those rebates. fees, that makes yeah. that makes perfect sense. Okay, but, so based on your trailing stops, follow-up question, yep. you use trailing stops, so you know, uh, how do you do it? Do you use uh, eight, uh, average true range for your trading stop? How do you uh, gauge them? Do you base them off levels? Always off of the chart. Always I, off of the chart. I think okay. everything, again, now I'm you know, a technical analyst and a purist in that way. Yeah, that's why so I'm asking. For me, <laughs> yeah. I always, I know, I'm sure you saw on CNBC, that guy was, I think it was Upwork or it was one of those companies. He was talking about how much he liked it and the guy asked what he did and he froze up. No, yeah, I if didn't you see that. I'll show oh, you that clip. Yeah, you gotta you send me seen. that, okay. Um, if I was in that clip, <laughs> I would have just said, I don't know what they do. I don't know what Upwork does, but it's, it's for me, it doesn't matter. All Everything I need to see, about the buyers and the sellers or is in the, the price action. Is, is in the price action. I so gotcha. I initially yeah. just put my stop on overview app. So mm -hmm. I was risking that, call it 15, 20 cents. Okay. And then it just puts a trailing stop. So as it's ticking down, I think my stop's just somewhere, you know, a little bit above break even okay. now. And it will just tick down. So if we make that new low of the day, I'll have a pretty good profit. If not, I won't lose very much. Good but stuff. While we were chatting, okay. that lunar trade actually triggered oh, that we were talking about. So I did get that VWAP bounce. Yeah, so it's, again, so this actually, I found this not from my scans. I found uh -huh. it from your scan and your race. Um, okay. So it was showing this big relative strength. Again, again I don't know, no idea what they do, but it's gone from... Yeah, it's not very impressive. Don't it, worry. It opened <laughs> at 15 and went to 40. Yeah. So obviously on a lot of people's radar, yeah. we actually noted in real time, we were chatting that this thing was hanging around VWAP and that if it could get this anchored VWAP from this high, that I would buy some. So I'm long some here. Okay. Right? My stop goes under VWAP and I'm just going to set it as a trailing stop. I like it. Okay. There you guys heard it. The, the chart looks good. Uh, here's what I see on this one. I see a VWAP hold. Uh, I'll get your opinion about this, Michael, because I talk about it a lot. Um, it's, I, I've kind of, I haven't coined it, but like, I mean, I've heard it somewhere probably and it's stuck in my head. I just don't know who to credit to it, but I don't think I've coined it. It's kind of the VWAP hold high of daybreak. And it's essentially like, you know, you get that big move up. It's, a, it's usually a news catalyst of some sort. 
uh, then you know you have a period of consolidation, but it stays above VWAP, tests VWAP a few times, and then continues onward, usually breaking the high of day around that 2.30 to 4 o'clock, anywhere in that hour and a half. Well, have you ever seen this one before? Yeah, and do you, yeah. Know, um, do you know why VWAP works? I'm, I'm kind of no, no, I would love to ask actually... you for your CMT. No, no, I don't. I haven't gotten there um, quite yet on VWAP. So essentially, the, the reason that VWAP is so interesting is that it's used as a metric to, um, to pay execution traders and to pay brokers. So okay. say, for example... Oh, yeah, Lucas mentioned that before. Yeah, actually. say I'm Warren Buffett, and I want you to buy 100 million shares of Apple for me. Okay. How will I know whether or not you got me a good price or not? Right? The only way I'll know is it That's will say, yeah. here's your VWAP for the day, which mm -hmm. just represents the average price of every trade that has taken place this day. Um, say that's 100 bucks. Right. Right? If you say, hey, I got you 90 bucks, then I'm really happy. Yeah, you, of course. You, you got me less than the average person paid that Absolutely. day. If you, give, if, if you got me $150, then you're probably fired. <laughs> so what happens a lot is you have these back yeah. in the day. And I, I guess you can see the gray in my beard from here, so you know that I'm that old. But um, back in the day, that was done by hand, right? right? People would trade in and out of these positions. Now it's algorithmically done. Right. So what will happen is they'll say, okay, I need to buy Warren Buffett 100 million shares. So every time it gets to or slightly under VWAP, a system will turn on to start buying little bits of, of shares at the time. Right? Okay. Um, until that order is filled, and then it will stop working. So that's okay. often why you can see these pullbacks to VWAP. And then this kind of chop around because as the market's pushing it down, these buy programs turn on to push wow. it back up and vice versa. And that's the yeah, same yeah, with yeah. this anchored view app, which I'll do on the daily charts. We're building in some scans and all that for that now, um, where it will do the same thing. If I have a month to buy Apple instead of a day, right. then I will be judged based off what I get versus the monthly view app. For sure. So okay. as it goes under that monthly view app, I want to be buying. Huh. As it goes too far above that monthly view up, maybe I'm going to sell some to try to bring the price back down to that area. And so the monthly view up is just the uh, the uh, the average of all the, the monthly trading days, simple average? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So what it does, it yeah. takes basically, think of it as if you dollar cost average. If you're putting $100 into Apple every day for a month, right. your VWAP will be whatever the average price is that month. Because as it goes For lower, sure. okay. you'll be buying more. And as it goes higher, because you're putting $100 in. And as it goes higher, you'll be buying less. Okay. So you're kind of, that's your VWAP. So you know people who put in a little bit of their salary every week into the SPY or yeah. something, that's their VWAP. Okay. Um, so yeah, these things work a lot around institutional algorithms. Very now, interesting. Doesn't mean it's magic, right? No, I always no. want to say, you know, there's, it, things break VWAP and keep going all the time. But that's why when I see that basing around VWAP, I want to say, okay, where's my entry? Because my stop is low on this one. I'm already up okay on this okay. LUNR. Um, but I, it, for me, it's, I want to know where my risk is, right? And for me on Lunar, my risk is just under the VWAP for the day here. So, you know, obviously this is a small trade for me because it's, you know, uh, $3 away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm involved in a little bit, just a little bit lower here, and then my stop's right under here. So if it gets one of these crazy moves where this thing's going to rally to the high of the day, then um, beers are on me after we leave here. <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> so go Lunar. Yes, I like that. Um, all right. Maybe we'll get your, uh, your predictions as well, or not predictions, but assessments of where you see some of these... Uh, these um, indexes at the moment, like we can talk about the NDX, uh, maybe uh, the SPX. How? Because we talked about before, you you take uh, you take great pride in being able to differentiate between the weighted and the equal weighted uh, indexes, and being able to kind of look for leading indicators there. So, what can you tell us uh, a little bit about that? Yeah. So, if we're talking longer yeah. term, and again, swing yeah. trading is one thing that I'm I'm super interested in. Yeah. Uh, this chart that I actually have, especially this one on the bottom. This is what we just call a comparison chart. Okay. So this chart on the bottom, the pink line, uh, represents the RSP, or that equal weighted. Okay. Um, which basically just means that every single stock in the S&P 500 is equal weighted. It doesn't give more credit to Apple and Google and, and things in the way that um, the S&P 500 does. Right. Apple in the S&P 500 is like 8% of the index. If you take Apple, Amazon, right. And Meta, I think it's over 10% of the index. Um, so when this pink line's moving higher, it means it's a, to me, it's a stock picker's market. Okay. Right? Uh, oh. it, the little guys are moving higher, 
but the right. SPY is not moving higher because some of the big guys are, right. are holding it down. Okay. However, again, just our, our continuous chat about VWAP, this purple line right here yeah. is a VWAP from all-time highs. So it means that if you started buying the SPY... Hold on, you can set it up that way? I can anchor it to any candle I want. So you started want. the VWAP from the all-time highs? From all-time highs. That is fantastic, okay? So it means awesome. if you started buying the market at the worst time, say you decided on the absolute high of the day, you're like, I'm going to start getting into the stock market now. Uh -huh. I'm going to start dollar cost averaging. As of a couple days ago, you actually turned green in this really bad kind of bear market. So. I use this as a sentiment indicator. If we are under this line, it means these people who have bought near the highs, they're losing money. Right. Right. If it were above it, now those people are making money. So okay. they're, they're looking it. They're and you can take sentiment as a leading indicator, right? Right. Like the right. Michigan Consumer Sentiment comes out tomorrow, a leading indicator. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So, you know, if uh -huh. you're looking to swing trade the SPY, I think the setup's pretty clear here. Very this is where, how I'm looking at it. As okay. long as we are above this anchored view app, right. call it. 408.70, okay. I'm interested long. I want it to break this downtrending line right here. Right. Um, if, as long as we're in this range, I'm not gonna really do anything from a swing trade yeah. point of view. But okay. if we break out here, I wanna get involved. If we get back under this uh -huh. anchor view app, it's time to get out. It's time to get out, okay. So my risk is super tiny right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to see if we can rally up, make a, a new little high here. Yeah, you're definitely not looking for lower lows. Lower lows is you're out there, eh? Right. Okay. Right. Then this is just, you could also look at this just a bull flag. Had yeah. A big strong push up and now right. we're consolidating. Exactly. So that could be bullish for stocks. So then yeah. we want to just zoom in and say, okay, if we're going to buy, what uh -huh. are we going to buy? Right. Um, and then we've got, so th this is the scan that I actually talked about, I think last week, that's looking for strong stocks after earnings. So Yum Brands, looking pretty good. Um, it's holding up here uh, after this earnings. So if Yum Brands can keep going, we may have a, an earnings continuation play here. Uh, relatively strong, which is why I have this comparison chart. Again, right. the dark blue line uh -huh. is Yum Brands, and this line is the market, the pink line. But that's so, the S&P or, or the uh, RSP? RSP. RSP. And it's equal you know, weighted, can, okay. And we can change cool. that to whatever yeah, we want. Yeah, no, it's but good to know. It's just so it's even performing the equal weighted, which is even better. Right, so we're right. Be yeah. it's beating the market, it's very strong, it's hitting new highs. Yeah. I don't think I would day trade Yum Brands, because mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a bigger slow stock, but from a swing trading point of view, yeah. This is something I definitely have on watch. Very cool, man. There's a lot of stuff here. You can almost get lost into like the detail, but if you really yeah, want to yeah. be a serious trader, you're going to have to get into the detail. That's just, you know, the nature of the beast, so to speak. Uh, so let's check some of these positions real quick. I think I'm like break even. Oh, I'm printing on Meta. Meta is pumping to the high side, guys, and then it just retraces. One, <laughs> 175.43, and it literally dropped like 20 pennies just as I raised my voice. That's so funny. That made me look really silly. 17, uh, 175, uh, 27 is where we're at on that. Let's load up the Meta chart here. Yeah, pardon, uh, pardon the entry. So where am I long on Meta? I'm 175.17. So, you know, 10 pennies in the money on this one really kind of just nursing a very small trade and you know having an excellent discussion with Mr. Noss, enlightening us as always. Let's take a quick look at the futures to see where we're at. We're, we, you know, we talked about this uh, range. Earlier we had a range of 41.25 to 41.35. We kind of broke out be beyond that range getting up to 45 and now we're using former resistance, now current support, that 41.35 as our kind of our base here. Let's see if we can continue to move up. Let's see what uh, these big cappers are looking like. Meta continuing to be, in my opinion, the stronger of the names at the moment as it kind of retraces to the high side. Uh, Tesla curled a little bit. Uh, Amazon curled a little bit as well. Let's bring in some of these charts. Um, but yeah, uh, to be honest with you, from a, like an intraday perspective here, it looks like we are getting to an interesting top on Meta. We're nearing highs at 175.43. Apple also strong as well nearing day's highs at 156.19, kind of creating a bit of a consolidation area here. If we break through some of these tops on the futures, you've got to assume Apple will probably break this top as well. So should be interesting here going. And lastly, someone asked me to look at Roku before we send it back to Mr. Noss. Let's have a quick look at Roku. What's Roku been up to? I had that one on the side chart. Okay. So yeah, VWAP bounce here, uh, not great. You know, I already had my move on Roku, caught out at day's highs, and now we had that nice VWAP retracement here. You, this is kind of what you were talking about here. It's my setup. Yeah, that's your setup. Yeah. Mr. Nas, looking for that. That would have been a great little setup. 73 and a half looks like, and now we're pumping 
through that 74 and three quarters, looking to test 75, 76, 62 is the high of day on that. So yeah, this Roku is actually nearing that view app from the, the high right here. Now this for me is a little bit too much of a gap. I don't know if I would take this unless it consolidates a bit for, further. But if you're long this from the view app bounce, these can often act as resistance, which is why I like to buy the break through them. So I would be a little bit careful here, maybe take a little bit of profit, see if it comes in and, and this moves lower. Um, I did wanna just kind of point out uh, two things. So one, this sure. is, a, is a really complicated layout, that looking layout that we have. But what it's doing is it's basically showing, if you look at these bottom bars, these are the different S&P 500 sectors, and it's showing you oh, which sectors are cool. doing the best and the worst. So very actually, cool. let's shrink this down I love here. To, you can see that so intuitively because you see the color immediately. Exactly, just color yeah. code everything because yeah. you know we're, we're moving fast as traders. Yeah, we are. Um, but I want to see what sectors are doing the best because that's where I want to focus. And right now it's retail and healthcare. Huh, well, uh, we got that is, good retail number yesterday. And I think that's kind yeah. of what's going on. But we also have relative weakness in utilities. And I think that's important because utilities are usually a flight to safety. That's the thing, and healthcare, right? Those two seem to be like... Uh, exactly. Yeah. So if, if, if they're not buying, um, if you're buying retail... I love that. That's, and you're buying nice. consumer discretionary, and you're selling utilities, that may be a risk on risk environment. On. Absolutely, right? Because yeah. you're, I want to get involved in, in, in what's going on here. The other thing is, and I'm kind of on the fly doing this, so we don't have the graphics yet, we'll have them tomorrow. I actually just got word from our marketing team that we have a President's Day sale, we are saving for tomorrow, but since I'm hanging out with you guys today, we're gonna turn it on live. So, Trader TV 30 on checkout at tradeideas.com will save you now 30% off your first month and year. Woo, okay, well, did you, are you already, you hit the awesome already. Awesome and bang. Uh, well, I'm gonna so, hit the uh, bang again. There we go. I wanna hit So that. yeah, yeah. Trader TV 30 gets you 30% off. Again, that helps out the channel as well. It's part of the, the relationship that we have and we've been building and we really love oh, here. Oh, definitely. We appreciate all the kind things that you guys have in chat. Um, so, so many nice compliments in the chat. I know uh, it's kind of you were I, focusing on what you were doing I, here. I know you got the chat up, but you can't. Yeah, people are really interested in that. I got a lot of uh, questions going here. Well, hopefully we can get to some of them. But uh, yeah, a lot of people very, very happy with the customization, as am I. It's a, it's a real, like if you want to be a serious trader, this is kind of like one of the things that really gives you an edge on environment. Obviously you still have to go through the motions and nothing is gonna be a substitute for experience, but you need to have the right tools. Uh, and this definitely puts you in that field. I wanna, I wanna shout out, and the, the level of uh, like customer service, I mean, guys, they made a, a whole indicator for Brendo. If you reach out to them, They'll incorporate that into the software for you. How I mean, how, imagine communicating with your software company like that. It's like you'd have to pay for that privately. But in this case, it's just the level of service you guys provide. Well, and we appreciate that. Again, we, we know that trading's hard. And again, we're not, we're not the people out there that are saying you buy us and everything will go great. But just as yeah. you mentioned, you need the right tools. Uh, we included the simulator for a reason. Yep. To, to help people get started. Um, if you're interested in scan building or anything like that, again, you can reach out to me on Twitter, just Michael Noss, CMT, or awesome. trade info at trade-ideas.com. Um, and again, we have great customer service agents that will that will help you out. We'll get you started. You can share the, the scans that I have going. Um, we have the, the scans that you guys have as well. You can just copy and paste the link and you can be off to the races with them. So, That's awesome. Um, no, and we, uh, we yeah. gotta sit down off camera too because I, I gotta set it up. Uh, you and I, we have, to, we have to get something good set up here, something super customizable. I know Michael, yep. Mr. Noss is here today and tomorrow, guys. That's it. So we will be able yep. to take advantage of his knowledge going forward. All right, uh, anything else that you want to cover? We have a few minutes left. Any nice like little tidbits in the software that we can kind of go over? Some niceties or? Uh, We've done everything and we haven't done. even talked about our AI yet, which. Oh. Um, you, you're, you're using the trigger word. You're absolutely <laughs> using the trigger word right now. AI, that's what everybody wants to hear. That's how we get these small cappers up. If we were publicly traded, I'd mention AI and our stock <laughs> would triple, right? That's just, that's how it's working right now. It's like the Long Island blockchain all over again. But there you go. I have here on our screen, this is something, this is kind of a nice pet project, something that I'm playing with as well, where live in real time, it recommends trade ideas based off of, uh, I don't want to get too deep into like the neural network and all that kind of crazy stuff. But what it's doing is we feed trading setups to it. And trading okay. setup may be just um, a gap up 
and then a go, right? I got a gap up and a pull back to view app. And what right. it's doing is all of that testing that I showed you earlier in the back testing yeah. module, it's doing that every night and it's including what's working and what's not. Machine learning. So we're teaching yeah. it as it goes. My so the hope goodness. is that over time, this is gonna to continue to learn and get better and get better and then maybe take over the world or something, who knows. But um, <laughs> what it does for you in real time is it just suggests trades as it goes. So like uh, Ring Central here was a short this morning. Right? It had earnings last night. You can see it took a short right here. It meandered around the short for a while and now it's below it. So it tracks. A stop loss, a entry, a profit target, all that kind of stuff as well, right? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's doing a whole lot of math, and it's going to do a whole lot more math. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's something super interesting. So if you're a new trader and you have no idea where to get started, this is something that I'd recommend. Again, no magic. Nothing's going to hit a couple buttons and um, make you and a millionaire. And so, quick question. But, so yep. this one is. Um, suggesting to you certain trades or are you asking this one to look at certain types of trades no it's we are asking it to okay. look at setups okay got and it and then yeah. from there it's trying to figure out what setups are working best in the market because we I all gotcha. know you know you have it's some looking. period of time that your gaps really work and then they right. don't work right um so it's trying to adjust to the changing market and saying okay gaps worked really well right now let's let's show a lot of gaps and now gaps aren't working well maybe revision to the means working better um, but then what it does, it scans the market all day long, and when something meets that setup, then it will recommend the trade, the um, trigger, the stop loss, the profit target. Uh, you can put in your position size, like I have it set for 100 shares here. But you could say, hey, if you want to risk uh, 100 bucks on each trade, it will calculate the amount of size that you want to take, and it will do all of that math for you, so you're keeping your risk constant. Um, so this is something really cool and something we, we really plan to do a lot of work on That's in the future. That's super interesting, and I think obviously, uh, you know, you guys are on the right path with that. That's all the rave right now. I think it's gonna be great. Guys, uh, come to my screen. This is the President's Day Sale. You get 30% off trade ideas using the code TRADERTV30. That's for this Monday for our American friends. Happy President, happy early President's Day. In Canada, we celebrate Family Day, but here it is, 30% off, Mr. Noss, uh, thank you very much. Trader TV 30 is the code for that. Uh, yeah, so we got one more minute here. And uh, yeah, maybe just uh, take us quickly through uh, what it's like living in the Maritimes real quick. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't know I'd be on camera today. Yeah. But I guess I'm just going to wear plaid all the time I'm here because I, uh, it's A, it's a lot colder here. Yeah, um, is it, eh? Yeah, well, okay. well there's, there's your Canadian There's the A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the A is going to come out uh, no matter what. Yeah. yeah, we're a peninsula, so we're surrounded mm -hmm. by ocean, so it's a little bit warmer. Okay. Um, it's, uh, the time change is, is a bit interesting. The market opens at 10.30 for me, so I get to sleep right. a little bit later than That's everyone nice. else, which I like. And I live in the middle of the woods, so what else What else can you want? That's right? fantastic. You're, you're in the middle of the woods, day trading uh, with AI. Nothing can't be done anymore. Uh, that's just the way it is. Exactly. Everything is everything's super portable and remote. Guys, yeah. it's been great having you on, Michael. <laughs> there we go. I like that. Hit that, Neil. Uh, it's been great, guys. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, don't go anywhere. We've got the closing show coming up, and Mr. Noss is going to be with us tomorrow. Stay tuned for that, and see you tomorrow. Yeah, we're going into the final couple hours of a pretty interesting day here. We start off very, very negative. Right across the board for the overall market, we get a bit of a bounce back to the upside. We've uh, ground into a bit of a halt at this point, though, as far as the market's not halted, but it's uh, not exactly doing a heck of a lot at this point. Still down about half a percent currently here for both the S&P and the NASDAQ. 0.42 for the Dow, TSX here in Toronto, 0.3 in negative territory as well. Bitcoin, 3%. Uh, that's just today. Uh, same story for Ethereum.